seven or eight years old, my brother got me my first Xbox. I do love Fable. I've played the franchise. I even had the Connect one. But I would say my main one that I loved the most was Fable. The it was just something. Hey guys. That, um, I really enjoyed, and I always go back to when. How's everyone I doing? Years of war. It's what made me start making videos online in the first place. Microsoft. Listen. Can you please make a new banjo game? I need that. You know what I mean? I would be remiss without shouting out Psychonauts. It was like mind blowing. What are they doing? Just, just <laughs> is this just like an interview with a bunch of like famous game people? Oh my God! Wow. Look at people are excited for E3. Why do they do stuff like this? I'm like, what am I gonna find this time? The Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind, which I played in college. It was unlike any other game I'd ever played before at the time. And then I probably also would have to say Minecraft. Minecraft. I don't know like half of the people that they've shown here. Literally, don't know half of them. Favorite game to play? I really love Halo. Halo. Halo is my favorite. That's all right. Have a Master Chief helmet. This is much different than my uh, normal stream time. That's something I'll never forget because that. Hey, what's up, Fox BCL, Kyler? Twelve hours. How you guys doing? Halo Three was the first game that I got into like really competitively. It was just. Oh, Jesus. I opened up the stream and I forgot my phone was still attached to my speaker. When infinite drops, yes, I could play that and try to get somewhat competitive. I love the series, man. I love it. And I, I want to. All right, what am I hoping to see at this presentation? I don't know, to be honest. I expect a lot of new IP from Microsoft, considering. Uh, also, how's the audio? Can you guys hear this okay? Uh, but considering Microsoft spent all these like millions of uh, billion or actual billions of dollars on all these new game studios and stuff, like I imagine Microsoft's got to be dropping a whole bunch of new stuff here, right? Like, why they? What did they spend all that money for? Got to be for something. For a new Fortnite announcement. Oh, never mind. You want Rare to make a new game? Aren't they making the new Phantom? Not Phantom. Perfect Dark? Uh. Hey Lara, hey guy. Hoping for a Flight Sim drop? Isn't Flight Sim already out? Are you. Oh, you mean on Xbox. Hey Absane, what's up, man? We're going live a little bit early. I think this is mostly just like ads and stuff. No one responded about the audio. <laughs> hey, what's up, Gypsy? Oh my god, it's a PS5. Is that what they're dropping at the uh, Microsoft E3? The power of the PS5 presented by Microsoft? I'm surprised some people are uh, making it this pretty early. Ooh, Mass Effect. I can't read any of this. Hey, CPU. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, buddy. Hope you're doing well, too. I hope it's a fun stream. I think it will be. Hope you have a good day at work. What's up, Mass? Hey, gamer. As a part of Play For All, GameSpot will be bringing you the latest gaming news and announcements. Isn't it? With developers, isn't the, like, Xbox what's its fuck the, uh. Play For All is our yearly online event that combines uh, the excitement of. Narca Blade Point thing supposed to be starting now? The following week, Here's the schedule. Special guests who are gonna help us raise isn't this supposed to. Gamers. So join hey, Spoon! Isn't it? Play for all like, right now, Sunday, isn't it YouTube supposed to be... Naraka... Hey, Lancelot. What's up, man? Sleep well, CEO. It, start the Blade Point thing. Royale games like Fortnite, Apex Legends, and even Call of Duty Warzone have dominated the free-for-all landscape over the recent years. Ooh, the... Okay. I was like, Jesus, is that gonna be the stream? They hope. Hey August. What's up, man? Take over the industry. Here, right, here we go. 24 Entertainment with an exclusive look at Naraka Blade Point. Greg Miller's still relevant? My god, he's got longer staying power than I do. I didn't know Greg Miller was still able to do the uh 
these conferences and everything. What's up, Bletch? E3 exclusive. Did the stream freeze again? All right, what is this game? Why does it have like an exclusive half hour preview before like the Microsoft thing? The most popular game on Steam? Is that true? They're blurring out the game for like, all this weird ad stuff. Stop. How many world premieres there will be at Xbox? Oh, awesome. There will be thousands of them. Peak concurrent players, less than Fortnite and Overwatch. I assume this is like some Chinese mobile game that they're bringing to PC. Alright, I'm gonna just refresh this and hope maybe it's like a connection thing. I don't know why it's lagging so hard. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus Christ. Nope. Ramen? Burgers, is this no Samurai food. Warriors Fiend 3? No, this is uh, Naruka Blade Point. Get more from your neighborhood. Hey, yo, Grover. DoorDash. I have a convenience oh, no, I wouldn't doubt it. Grover? Gamer, I bet you there's some, uh, um, fable news at Microsoft's conference. Why wouldn't there be? Timing. Get more from your neighborhood. <sighs> so soft. DoorDash. All right, sorry guys. I know you were really, you really wanted to see the Naruka Blade Point gameplay. I do apologize for refreshing and causing there to be an ad. What's the point of uh, Amazon Prime or having Twitch Prime if um, it's going to still give you ads? All right, what is this? Is there a YouTube link? His Twitch runs like shit. E3 live stream. Let's just watch this shit on YouTube. All right, we're gonna. Here we go. Got it up on YouTube. Yeah, Twitch is shit. I already... Uh, I already got it up on YouTube. You need to subscribe to remove ads? Oh, well, I'm just, we're just watching this shit on YouTube now. <laughs> Quick mid-transition. This is why I stream on YouTube. Another reason why I stream on YouTube. Twitch's quality is just garbage. Look at this. This looks better and it's not dropping frames. Thank God. Alright, so maybe it's still dropping a couple frames, but it's a live stream, whatever. Not the first, not the last. So what is this exactly? Oh. It just looks like there's so much going on on this. Is this really one of the most played games on Steam? I think these are some- are these like all character created models? You're not technically late, Cook. I started the stream early. Just so we could like talk about the uh, conferences. I wasn't particularly interested in this game, so I figured we could just chat over it. Hey CGZ. Just kinda wanted to see what people were interested in. I'm expecting a lot of announcements from Microsoft, though Microsoft has been known to disappoint at every single one of these fucking conferences. Um, Can't do that yet. It seems like it should be, uh, I mean, they just, oh, in the last year, they've spent so much money on all these different, different game developers, they should have something to show for it. <laughs> Is this Overwatch, but everybody's Genji and Hanzo? Yeah. When does Microsoft start? At 10 o'clock uh, Pacific, so in 20 minutes. This lasts for, you can see the counter up here. Microsoft starts after this counter ends. The Ubisoft one was boring. That's because Ubisoft is a boring company. 
meme generator. They make boring games with boring uh, stuff. Microsoft will announce some generic FPS. I wonder why no one likes it. What do you mean? Halo Infinite got announced years ago. They're gonna just show more of it. It's not gonna be an announcement, Juice. Come on now. Get your facts straight! They're not announcing generic FPSs, they're just gonna show generic FPSs. God. Mario and rabbits. What? What is Mario and Ra Did they make a sequel to that, like, Mario uh, Raving Rabbids game? Is that what you're telling me? Of all the Mario games to get a goddamn sequel, that one got it? It w global launch? What do you mean? You just said it was one of the most played games on Steam. How is it one of the most played games on Steam if it's not out yet? What? Most played game among the games that are not released yet. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Raycon. The lead producer of It's Raycon Man! First, I'm honored to announce that more than 1 million players have wish listed our game. We're really thankful for your love and support. Uh, let's open up Steam. Point is a battle royale game with strong action elements. This game provides mighty heroes, diverse weapons, and unlimited arco system. Yeah, dude, I called it. It was originally a Chinese mobile game. Ooh, might get it for this uh, Matarai exclusive outfit. I'm, uh, I'm feeling it. Maybe I'll play this game. So how do they keep, like, teleporting through the sky? It looks like they do, like, some flips and then just keep going forward. I feel really bad <laughs> they're giving this guy subtitles even though he speaks, like, perfect English. Wow, that's an in-depth character creator. She's cute. Oh, I knew those were character created models because they some of them looked like shit. Is it kind of racist that they're giving this guy subtitles even though he speaks English better than most people? <laughs> like, I feel so bad. And you can pre-order the game right now on Metro PC platforms. Hey, what's up, Lucy? Yeah, I'm gonna get it for this exclusive outfit, baby. After the August launch, we will continue to release new contents. I'm gonna get Ultimate Edition. Ultimate Matarai exclusive outfit, baby. June 16th, you will start one week on PC. Right now, you can wish Lisa's... Chibai-sen, you know it! And enjoy Point. Do I have closed captions on? Oh, maybe I do. Does the game seem cool? Uh, no. You just get uh, to play as a cute girl if you spend $50 on this game, so I might do it. There's a demo? No, it's in beta. It's a multiplayer game. There's, it, there would be a demo. It's just a... Uh, it's a beta.
Chat is so aggressive, and like, whenever you come to these like massive live streams, people are just like brutal in the chat. I've already seen at least ten minutes or ten messages about telling that guy to kill himself. Uh, does anyone ever listen to, or like yeah. want to listen to these like like does anyone want to listen to these people uh, i feel like one thing that the battle royale space was missing was like an awesome melee battle royale uh because you know it's just, like, who like, even are these people i don't want to listen to the council of weird uh people something like this is something we really haven't seen before uh i actually got to give a huge shout out to my buddy uh genghis khan who i saw on steam he was playing it and i was like dude what the hell is this he said download it super fun usually just mute the stream all right and i spent we'll mute that I don't know. These people are here to stall uh, time, but they're so boring. I don't want to just completely mute it. Yeah, the thing about battle royale is like all of them are, or the biggest ones are shooters. So you could like take pot shots. Vote using the hashtag. When will the demo start? Shut the fuck up. Who cares? What a kind of poll is this? You need to pull up. You like, you 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 come through and let them know who it is. Yeah, you square up and you gotta you gotta fight. And from all the gameplay that this guy is generic, say popular things, man. Come through, you pull up, you square up. What are the other popular uh, hip terms for saying fighting instead of just saying fighting? I don't like that guy. Fast and loose because I also play For Honor, which is very heavy and yeah, very deliberate. But this one's like, nah, just go all out. Yeah, it looks wild. Absolutely, and just want to draw some attention to the pull-up right now. When will Naraka Blade Point the demo start? And yeah, I think we all know. Everyone June 16th. Like we that. were all taking notes. We were like, this is more like a did you pay attention? Oh my God! When will it start? What channel are you watching? I'm watching E3, like the official E3 stream. I mean, there's Fortnite, Call of Duty, Warzone, Apex, like that list goes on and on and on. Do we think that Naraka can compete with those titles? I think absolutely. Hey, that guy, or she she named three uh, popular Battle Royale games. She did it. In this game, you can Thank you. scope someone with a brand new spear weapon and then have this like Wuja anime esque style fight up in the sky, just raining down holy hell. It's going to be awesome. Like, I think it's something that the space needs. You have to keep it fresh. You can't just. You'd rather watch E3 recaps instead of watching live. Yeah, but it's a big event. Mode. It needs to feel fundamentally different. And that's what Naraka looks like from this gameplay demo. Oh my gosh, look, yeah. I have. No. I forgot to get back. Yeah. Several other examples of non shooter battle royales that have been successful, right? There's Fall Guys, there's Tetris 99, oh, yeah. there was Mario 35. My glass of water. All these people. People are, are tired of BRs. Yeah, I think everyone is. That's why I got canceled from uh, Fallout 76, right? He said the the fighting mechanics in Naraka are legit. So I oh, think, I love think to hear that. Be the real deal. Um, I definitely noticed the grapple hook, um, the verticality. Talk to me about the mobility mechanics. Yeah, Do you yeah. think people are going to adapt to that well? So I think one of the big things for a lot of Battle Royale games is like, when can you disengage from a fight, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Fortnite's really good because you have the building mechanic and you can build up, gain height, try and take your opponent uh, who's on the low ground, right? They yeah, I know Fallout 76 like, just uh, removed their... Um, really um, different things like grapple hooks into the game. Well, the grapple hook mechanic... Uh, actually, uh, is what we were watching. Battle Royale mode, mode, so I think that... Uh, yeah. I know. You know I mean? yes. I'm in there because I, I love. Um, I, I just love the the, the freedom. Of I think the that trend's finally uh, starting to die down. Obviously, besides the uh, juggernauts that exist, I think other game uh, studios are kind of realizing you're just not going to dethrone like Fortnite and Apex at this point. Feel cool, and I know that this sounds like a hardcore shill for the game, but I'm telling you right now. Fortnite's good for the building mechanics. That's why I play Fortnite is so I can build the houses. Who needs Minecraft? That's my background. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. The first thing that I was thinking of when I saw the trailer for the first time, I'm like, okay, cool. So we got the Battle Royale Fortnite L. This is good sleep like material. The, that looks like a faster blade and soul. And then all the characters that we see. Oh, uh, just start the Xbox conference. Option. I'm like, okay, it has the Why did, did I just know her glasses are hexagonal? Like, what? Hold on a second. 
What? Why? What? Is that a new bad? But no, it just looks so incredible. Is this picture there? No, I'm kidding. It should be. It should be. It's for me, everybody. It's in the new dictionary copy. But I'm so excited for it. And as you're also, she can't still sit still, and it's really bugging me. I'm tired of kids being able to outbuild me, right? Like they're they're so much faster at building the dang stairs up and down, and I just you know they shoot me faster. So yeah, I got you. Some sort of thinking involved in here where I get to parry something and then run away. There you go. That's what I'm excited for. I mean, there's so much I'm excited for. Uh, I absolutely love the game design. I love the landscapes. Yeah. And that might seem like a softball question, but skins make money, people. Yeah, and people talk it. about that <laughs> all the time. So. This game's got style. They yeah. can sell so this is the only yeah, chat that matters, Cook. They are going to be probably said she wanted sparkle skins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sparkle skins. But I mean, think about it. Like, uh, all of the different crossovers we've seen. No, there are very, inappropriate, there are very inappropriate things on the, uh, like type of anime uh, um crossover the stream chat mm -hmm. oh my god don't even i'm broke i'm broke so little actual attempts everything in fallout 76 has just been a money grab from uh i know your crowd control right uh bethesda i'm a very aggressive player rehearsal no 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 that's classic misdirection so i can get up in there with the spear yes the spear oh my god the spear you guys i'm going to use the spear i'm going to be the best spear in the game big sword for me oh yeah big sword big sword okay hey that's awesome august hope you're feeling better man I'll I'll do the uh, archery just to, to be something different. Uh, like your friend is wrong, okay. BCL. Well, we your friend is wrong. Point. But real fast, we gotta take a quick break. No, I've seen e I've watched E3 every year since like early 2000s. I always watch E3. Up as E3 2021 continues. There's videos that I can specifically remember that I. Can't yes, please like give me my generic popular Twitch personalities. That's what I want to see. That's what I came here for. Four hours for anybody who hasn't seen it. It's you let your your sim live how it would in a game, and then you have to replicate it. But because sim time is so quick, you end up standing around and doing something for an hour that should take you like ten minutes. Now, I did it all day. <laughs> you can slowly see me just deteriorating as it goes. So, Wasn't that for I Burnout Paradise Juice? That, that there was like the car hanging. Oh, my favorite gamer, Post Malone. Yes. Oh, I love it when they bring celebrity personalities into E3. Oh, so that way I know I can like gaming and it's cool. Yes. Thank you, Post Malone. Now I know it is cool to like video games. Oh, he dabbed. Oh, did you guys see the dab? Welcome back to E3 Live. Show it again, please. Angeles, California. And hey, do you feel like some sweet merch? Why don't you check out our limited edition gear at e3expo.com slash shop. It's right here. Oh, right here. I did a presentation yesterday. The midnight stage really liked, right? Yeah. So let's go back. If you remember, I was saying, doesn't that there? You're wow. cringing. Why? Why? It was so cool. Yeah, doesn't there Tom Cruise have a new movie coming out where he wears a bomber jacket? Yeah. You could wear this at the theater. Yeah. And then you'd get up to leave and you'd go like this, and they go, wait, wait, wait. Are, are you are you one of those pilots like we saw in the movie? And I go, can't no, believe there's no. E3 merchandise. <laughs> I'm an E3, and they'd say, what that? And you'd be like, oh, Electronic Entertainment Expo. And they'd be like, oh, you went there? And you'd be like, well, no, it was a pandemic year, but I bought it on E3Expo.com slash uh, shop. High quality. High yep. qu I'm no Zippers. kidding. It actually is quite nice. It is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to steal one. I'm going to rip that E3 the, gear the, for that one conference I watch over a weekend. Kids. Aren't you a dad? You're going to have to do some yard work Wait. at some point, get underneath the house. Hey, kids, aren't you a dad? All right, we'll move on. That's what you just said. All right, I'll tighten it up. I'll tighten it up, Greg. Square Enix presents is later today, and we'll Greg Miller, he's kind of eccentric. I used to watch a lot of his content for years when uh, Kind of Funny launched. I thought him and Colin Moriarty were really cool, but when him and Colin had that falling out and he Colin left uh, Kind of Funny, I stopped. Uh, I stopped watching. I'm glad you asked, Greg. Ladies and gentlemen. In September 2020, a game called Marvel's Avengers came out, and y'all enjoyed it for like a week, but this guy enjoys it to this day. <laughs> you see? This is the day where I He's actually kind of funny sometimes. War for Wakanda. Mar How excited are you, huh? 
See you, out there. you guys enjoyed it for like a week. And Black Panther related. I'm totally uh, <laughs> I've always been a fan of the character way back in the day. So I'm cool with that. Okay, Greg. good. I'm good. 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 Yeah. I just want to know what else they're bringing to the table. Sure, of course. All right, that's an maybe the uh, a year later, you maybe know, Marvel's you Avengers you will be good. Video, uh, maybe it's, oh yeah, that's right. Marvel's uh, Avengers was by Square yeah. Enix. Hey. Avengers isn't in a good place. I enjoy the gameplay. Yeah, I want yeah. more out of it. What can they do? And hopefully, War for Wakanda is going to be that, right? We need maybe he's right. Content. It we could be. It might take a. Uh, we need raids. We need 100 um, power level stuff. Yeah. I need a reason to turn a full year, but some games have a big turnaround. You know, No Man's Sky always now. proves that at they some point a game could suddenly do. become yeah, good. And another game that I'm uh, very much looking forward to hearing more about. Yeah, kind of funny. Got bought out by Rooster Teeth. Personally, is a Babylon's Fall. Michael's been going nuts about that oh game. My God. I kind of going into this one super cold. Yeah. So I, I want to be dazzled. Platinum's an incredible dev. I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to bring the heat. And I think it's going to be really exciting. I think Square Enix is going to have a, I, a pretty decent show. I don't think Square Enix is well, going to be yeah, pretty decent. I honestly I think Square Enix is like a very overrated developer. Am I the only one? Life is strange. Huge fan. They put out games like... The brand new one that's coming out But then to kick it back into Rover Patrol, right? Like... Idos Montreal, all right. Marvel's yeah, Avengers, yeah, like, what cool. You're, working on. you're the Deus Ex team. There's been rumors you're working on something new. Rooster yeah, Teeth got bought out a long time ago, Lucy. Yeah, I mean, we see something They're actually, they've been owned by a, conversation you've continued to have, a like, very large media conglomerate for a while now. Obviously, there's rumors of what's coming, right? Maybe a Marvel property. But it is also a great time where Deus Ex could thrive in this day and age. This is true. Wow. You know, I, what I'm actually like surprised at is that a lot of people, one that's kind of flown under the, radar, uh, the Marvel's Avengers thing is winning. The poll. I mean, I guess no one really cares about this other stuff. What's Eidos Montreal? Hey, what's up, Vasquez? Uh, Life is Strange, that's a remake, so I guess people wouldn't be super excited about that. But yeah, I'm surprised this poll's close. But I guess that's just, it's just a whole bunch of boring shit. Anyone keeping a cringe counter? Yeah. Yeah, boy. It's a great time to do something like that, right? Like that... Eidos is the Deus Ex devs. Really Haven't the last two I, Deus Ex games been like today? pretty uh, generic? Okay. That's perfectly fine. Well, Just don't let me down next year. Okay, it's what guys? I've talked about before, especially as a comic book dork. You know what I mean? What yeah. I'm excited for is seeing something. I can. I take this like Insomniac, where I think Insomniac is a, an amazing studio. Obviously, everybody knows it now, but Spider-Man really put them on another level in terms of video True. game pop culture. And I think as we look at uh, uh, Square Enix Montreal, or uh, Day, uh, I don't when's Montreal, PC Gaming the Show? I th it's at the end of the day. The Deus Ex games were great, and the people who loved them loved them. Yes. But now, if they work on a bigger property, a Marvel title, let's see what happens. That's true. That's I true. That's be helpful. It that's what I hope it is. Uh, remember, ladies. And I would love to see an Avengers title from. Insomniac. Insomniac, man, that would be sick. Insomniac is like on fire lately. It feels like they can't make a bad game right now. I can't believe Sony bought Insomniac for like not even a billion dollars. I don't need to. Following Square is WB Games back for blood. Oh my god, Golden Boy, we can't wait. I played that alpha and I was like, I. Done. Yep. The people who made Left 4 Dead are back with a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. Yep. I am actually really excited to see Back 4 Blood stuff later too. Different campaigns. Let's go. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity. Who's Yoko Taro again? That name sounds familiar. Uh, BCL. WB Games crew, and they were all amazing, all wonderful people, <laughs> and I got there immediately, and I was just like, "This is everything that I want." It, yeah. it is genuine excitement for a game that's ridiculous that you knows exactly what and play sunset is, overdrive right i didn't either it. but Even from the name a lot of insomniac games lately have been are, he's the near guy doing. Uh, boring uh, and, and yeah that alpha was fantastic right you know i i remember talking to the wb games crew miles like, morales was, was a great friends, dlc like, expansion to spider-man like this was they like yelling at each other and, of course you know is sony showing anything yeah i'm pretty sure that's sony has a conference tomorrow right they said this is literally that it's 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 oh exactly what you want out of a I was wrong they there's really not that much going on set pieces uh, different elements of the game new I kinds of monsters new right kinds yeah, yeah. of monsters yeah so i there's they're bringing some I heard that the take 2 is not going to have any video game announcements the same that it just feels right yeah and there's going they have an hour long panel to not have any video game announcements you know yesterday there was comparisons drawn when we were talking about rainbow six for uh, extraction not quarantine anymore rainbow six extraction right and i was watching that and it was the conversation that capcom yeah capcom's got something 
thing. There's going to be those two types of people who want the tactical. Tomorrow. Let's plan how we're taking out this hive, right? And then for me, it was definitely like, I want the back for blood. Cool, I have an Uzi, now I have a shotgun. It doesn't matter, I'm having a great time. Exactly. Everything else. Exactly, and that's the reason why I'm so excited for it. We're gonna see that later on today. But also another thing we're getting is a PC gaming show, because it's coming to town, baby. We know one All right, Microsoft to get in should be starting look. soon. Microsoft should be starting soon. Also, there's your answer, PC. Uh, 12 hours, 2.30. 39. 39! 39. 39 game trailers, Greg. I just saw that pop up. On, on oh, 39 I copyright strikes on my channel. Let's go! They love to see things that they might be playing. Yeah, yeah so that's yeah. incredibly exciting, right? Yeah, and, and, and us. And our embrace. And us. That's right. He could do that because I'm short, too. you know. You but I'm, I'm looking forward to PC game. <laughs> See, I'll do it for you, too. Come we on. did it, guys. Get, get your screenshots right now. Let's this is see. freaking friendship right here. Hashtag E3 okay. 2021. Yeah, there Our it people is. People don't like this bit. They no, do not, not like this bit. I don't no, know, I don't, I don't like the bit. Please just start the Microsoft show now. I am a notoriously not a PC gamer, right? I am. I am. I am a simple person. I like my console to plug in and go. But what I love about the PC gaming show every year is the diversity of games you get. Very true. Right? And of course, Sean Plott always shows up to host it and does a great job. He's funny as well. DevBot's always being goofy. But we get to go in I and love Sean. And see That's all true. Of different stuff, stuff that He's will great. I am a big Sean fanboy. fan boy. will be the game that inspires me to turn on my PC. Very true. And, and that is the beauty of PC gaming. He always hosts the so PC gamer show. That's another reason why I really love it. Uh, you know, you <laughs> he is not wrong. Platforms. You can do whatever you want to do. And and by the way, oh I just God. got it. Oh! Show me more generic Halo Infinite combat! It's okay because Microsoft One minute, support 10 seconds. Seconds. Oh, I can't wait. Look at it. It's the only thing they have to show, and it's gonna be bad. Please bury my favorite franchise. Take me. I need a 12 minutes release date, Phil. All right? I need that. I need Starfield. Take me, Phil. We need to see Halo. Don't do this to him again. Tim Schafer, make Psychonauts come out today. It's a simple request. Greg, right? the lighting can't get there, Greg. It doesn't matter. The lighting can't Most get there. people are listening to this as a podcast. Look at He's not seconds. wrong. Seconds. Philip Elizabeth uh, Spencer, if you're happening. watching this right now, just know, man, just bring the thunder, brother. That's all I want. Just bring the thunder, dude. Bring, give me the chief. I don't think Phil's watching this right now. He's probably, probably uh, I wonder if, uh, if they've actually made like a good graphical update to Halo Infinite. It, the delay was only like a year. Okay, fine, everybody. Now is the moment Master Chief and Golden Boy have been waiting for. Here's the Xbox and Bethesda game showcase. Please. Just give me like something decent for Halo Infinite. I just, I just want it to be an okay game. That's all I ask. I under, I now sympathize with Star Wars fans as they watch their favorite franchise crumble underneath them. That's how I've felt with Halo over the last couple of years. I just need Infinite to be okay. Just be okay. Just show me a game that doesn't look like an Xbox 360 game, alright? Isn't it Infinite supposed to be a live service? Yeah, but it does at least have like a single player campaign that's separate from the multiplayer, unlike Destiny. Alright guys, I'm actually not expecting that much on Halo Infinite. I expect most of Microsoft Conference will be showing off new IPs from all the game studios they bought. But who knows, Microsoft is known to drop the ball at every single conference they do. So... Let's go. 20 years. Here we go. It's the boy. Xbox has been with us. And like you, Todd Howard is a moment I always look forward to. Announcing Fallout 77. Fingers for my favorites to return, hoping for a few surprises. Most of all, though, I love seeing everyone around the world come together and celebrate what games mean to all of us. Oh my god. Last year, they've meant even more. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for the support you give They us. always do this crap at every E3. I don't know why. And I wouldn't be here Games bring us together. We're all a collective society of gamers. We do one thing better than anything else. They transport us. Through art and technology, there's real magic when you step into a new world and can make it your own. We've traveled the worlds of Elder Scrolls, of Fallout, and now, for the first time, in over 25 years, 
we're creating a new universe with Starfield. Set hundreds of years in our future. This is the game that a lot of people were hype about. I don't know what Starfield is. Humanity and answering our is it like Space Elder Scrolls? It's a game we've dreamt of playing. And it wasn't until now that we have the hardware, the technology, and the team who's hard at work at home to make that dream a reality. Is it the team that made Fallout 76? I hope not. Our first in-game teaser and something to look forward to. Coming out in six years. Alpha footage? Oh, this game is still two years away from release. That's incredible. <laughs> they didn't mention Fallout 76. <laughs> they still said Fallout 4. Uh, from the makers of your favorite Fallout game. Uh, 4. They say, the wonder is, not that the field of stars... Oh my god, look at the detail on that sandwich. That we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now. Part of our family. What you've found, it's the key to unlocking everything. Oh my god. They found Mass Effect. I, I mean, the Starfield. working towards... We've come to the beginning of humanity's final journey. Loop check. Wow, what a cool reference. It was the mech from Mech Assault 5. That's why we're here. To discover what's out there. It's space. Bad things are out there. Didn't he say this was a gameplay teaser? This is a pre-rendered animation. That's a cinematic trailer. Where's the gameplay, Todd? Why do you always lie to me, Todd? Gameplay my ass, what? And it's not coming out till November 22. Thank you for showing me that. It is awesome to share with you for the very first time one of the most anticipated games in the world from Todd Howard and the team at Bethesda Who is Game this? Studios. A groundbreaking Todd Line, I have a bingo. It's exclusive. <laughs> Welcome to the Xbox and Bethesda It is an Game Xbox Game exclusive, Game. which also I'm means so it'll be on PC though, so. Here today celebrating because all Xbox game comes out on PC. Tough year. I am grateful that games have been such an important source of joy and connection. Oh my god, are they going to do this at the beginning of every discussion? The next era of gaming. Gaming is so important. Gaming is so great. And delivering the power of games games everyone. And for everyone. We get to share that quest with Bethesda. Video Not games partners, but as one for team, us all. United in bringing the very best Video games unite us. Everywhere. Every time. I could Today, recite this speech like from my sleep. More of what's to come. We have an amazing show. 30 titles. 27 and Homegirl's trying to take flight out here with course, like sticking her arms out to the side. The console title you'll see today is optimized for Xbox Series Got the big ass X eyes X looking right at the uh X like her script because she didn't memorize her lines for the show. We get to work with the best studios on earth. Next is something <laughs> truly riveting. The latest entry in the haunting and evocative franchise created by GSC Game World. Stalker 2, coming first to Xbox Series consoles and PC. This will be a true next-gen experience, targeting 4K resolution. Yeah, but if you see, if you just watch the recaps, Juice, you miss out on a lot of the cringe. Play when it launches next year. Oh, another game not coming out until next year. Cool. I do remember the Stalker franchise. Isn't this like? An older franchise? They're bringing this back? 
<laughs> Music stops. Готово. The cringe is the best part, Juice. What do you mean? How will you know every year that gaming unites us as a people, Juiced? Nothing brings people together like gaming. What is the Stalker franchise? Crobat makes like one video a year, and he had he didn't make an E3 video for the last couple ones. Can you believe Stalker got gameplay and Starfield still hasn't? Why did he just make a... I can't, don't know why I can't do it. A pot noise of his mouth. Wow, they have head crabs in Stalker? That's cool. See you, BCL. The basement. Oh, copyright music. No, it burns. <laughs> That's the man of culture. Hey, what's up, Diz? Welcome. That looks cooler than the, like, shooting at people. That's right. Жаль, что ты так с ним поступил. Мне тоже. Считаешь, я не думал, как обойтись без его смерти? Она не могла быть свободна, пока он жил. Зато теперь посмотри на нее. This guy is very passionate. Я не отдам ее никому. Зона дала мне жизнь, новую жизнь. He looks like he's green screened in here, like on the edges where it's blurred. He looks like his character is green screened in. Looks okay. I don't know if I'll play it, but it certainly looks okay.
Oh, they're showing Back for Blood stuff already during the Microsoft conference? We're surviving here. Rebuilding. Surviving is not enough. We've got to fight. No, we don't need to do anything. All right, when was the last time you saw written in any numbers? Hmm? Ooh, more copyright music. Why do they do this in trailers? Just play the music from the game, please. I don't need to hear the hip hop. Well, at least nobody played Left 4 Dead for the writing, am I right? Interesting that they're even showing a trailer for this during the Microsoft conference, considering this, I think, has like its own uh, half-hour time slot later. Right? Yeah. 2 p.m. Warner Bros. Back for Blood. They're really trying to push this game. Buckle up, Buttercups. We've got one shot. Let's make it count. Over here. Ooh, comes out in time for Halloween when I do another Spooktober and I actually officially retire my YouTube channel from the amount of negative views I get. I would like to play that game with people on stream, so if you guys get it, let me know. I think it'd be fun to do that with some, uh, stream chat. I like it with all of us in Discord voice, I think that'd be fun to play. More copyright music, baby. What's their fascination with the number four? Uh, the fact that there's four players. And it's supposed to be a co-op experience. Uh, I'm gonna play... Uh, this is gonna be Dead Rising 2. Or Dead Island 2. That's the vibe I'm getting from this, I think, right? Or is this, uh... Another dead game. Contraband? Is that the name of the game? What's that? Play a day one with Game Pass, though. Whenever that comes out, whatever that game is. Play a day one Game Pass. <laughs> wow, they're still doing stuff for Sea of Thieves? Seriously? This game's not dead? That's incredible. Yeah, nice trailer. Can't wait to play that contraband a game. Looks great. News from beyond the horizon. A new danger is coming on the tides. And the one who might stop this ruin, trapped for all forever in the sea of the damned. Now to save the pirate life. You must start by saving the life of one. There's probably a lot of stuff you gotta do to save the pirate life. Oh. Didn't realize we had company. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. But I suspect you already knew that. That's hilarious. That's a cool crossover. Because of the trick. Sounds like they actually got Johnny Depp for this too. Followed him here. <laughs> it not stopped. This world will sink into shadow. I thought that chick sounded familiar that was doing the narration. I was like, wow, that's a... All I can do is show you... It's Sea of Thieves, Kyler. I hear so-called Sea of Thieves is nothing but curse crews. 
Bloodthirsty mermaids. A legion of dead, angry pirates. Oh, yes. And now, one Davy Jones. Hello? Well, I believe that now is the perfect time to use these cannons. They're trying to get a little bit too much of his quirky humor from the movies. A world that refuses to face the truth. Yeah. Tyler, that's actually pretty cool. I might play this. It seems a little late to finally do a big crossover for this Sea of Thieves game, but you know what? Whatever. I don't suppose, by chance, there's a second one of those? <laughs> The Sea of Thieves, eh? Bring me that horizon. Hmm. When does that come out? June? Oh, wow, it's a free update. That's crazy. Hey, it's Yakuza. Hey, how's it going? Uh, let's do this. I'm just assuming this announcement is uh Oh, they're all on Game Pass. Time to call a friend. What the? Happy birthday! <laughs> this is a very serious Yakuza drama. Free? How did Disney allow that? Microsoft has enough money to make things free if they want it to be. <laughs> Uh, no, you don't need to play the others to play Yakuza like a dragon fox. It's, you could, because you play as a new character. There's a couple, like, minor references you won't get, but you can play it without playing the others. I think this is Battlefield 2042. Uh, but I also thought it was Call of Duty Warzone. Who knows, you can barely tell those games apart. Generic modern shooter, baby. Nah, it's definitely a uh, battlefield because you, they can. You, they're trying to show off more like aerial views of the skybox and stuff, and Dice loves to do that shit in all of their trailers. See how he keeps looking up, even though there's like all of the combat and action like going on in the ground. He's like the camera's up. They're like, look at that beautiful skybox. Quick, look up into the tornado again. <laughs> look at the scenic view. Even though you should be looking at the fucking- that's all people are gonna actually look at, is the building they're going to. No one's actually looking at the fucking sky- uh, the skybox in these games, so I guess that's why the trailer's gotta show it, but still.
No way that's exclusive, right? Hmm. I mean, either way, I'm not really gonna play that. I heard people really didn't like the last battlefield. So, how was your day? Oh, you know. I have something to share. What is this, my birthday? We're having a baby. Oh, wow, they have big actors in this. William Defoe, Daisy Ridley. Shut up! You know what this is. This time, I should never have told you. I'm out of patience. Uh, uh. What? I know I say this a lot, but I love you. I say this a lot too, but back at you. So, what's the thing with the hype for 12 minutes? Looks like it's day one game pass, though. I knew this would just be a lot of Microsoft just showing off games constantly. Good for them. I'll check out that 12 minutes thing if it's only a 12 minute game. The mind is the final frontier of humanity. I'm ready for anything. Is Psychonauts 2 really still not out? Colorful game. I'm afraid that means the dead letter offers for you. The mission is falling apart. A psychonaut must always remember how to roll with it. Find some bacon. I'm going to ignore that last part. August 25th. Pretty soon. Looks like the delay was worth it, you think? This is usually the moment when I say hello and welcome to the Bethesda E3. What show. IP is this? I can just, so we got, that's probably Rage, Doom, uh, I don't know, Elder Scrolls, Starfield, Wolfenstein, Fallout. We started this showcase with my good friend Todd Howard, who gave you a first I don't know what that is. Along with Bethesda Game Studios, all oh, of our Prey. continue to work on the I bet you a new Prey game gets announced. Since well before we joined the Xbox family. So rest assured, the games you've been expecting and hoping for are still in the works. And today, we're bringing 10 more titles to Game Pass for a total of 30 Bethesda games. Wow. That includes several id Software games, like the award-winning Doom Eternal. If you're looking for another reason to play it, Doom Eternal will be optimized for Xbox Series X and S on June 29th. What a dumb Our name for the console. Xbox, Xbox Series X and Series S. Owns Doom Eternal. And on Series X, it will offer improved visuals at 60 FPS with ray tracing, a 4K mode, and an optional performance mode up to 120 FPS. Or all the things you can have if you just play it on PC. Which marks its 10th anniversary this November. Skyrim again! Let's go! Share your favorite Skyrim memories, stories, artwork, and more on Skyrim10.com. Or explore an ever-changing post-apocalyptic wasteland in Fallout 76. Everything you love about Fallout games. Except broken and destroyed. Storylines, warring factions, unique characters, places to discover, you'll find it all here. In fact, Fallout 76 is now one of the most popular games on Game Pass. Oh, I'm sure that happened, Is That happened with the Wii U all the time. Here's a look at what's coming next in Fallout 76. Wow. I can't wait for more stuff to be added to Fallout 76. Brotherhood of Steel are the guardians of human civilization. They're still doing Brotherhood of Steel stuff? Good lord. Fort Atlas is safe. It came at a great cost. The Brotherhood must stand united. The super mutant threat takes priority. This proves more than anything the need for our justice. 
You are splitting our forces, Shin. The most important thing is finding everyone that has gone missing and returning them home. Oh, I like the America armor. So it comes to this. I thought you understood what that insignia meant. You are no paladin of the Brotherhood. I set this plan in motion, and I am the only one who can stop it. But the Brotherhood of Steel must protect the future of Appalachia and of the world. Your righteous crusade has gone too far. While it may seem that we are fractured, I believe that we are now stronger than ever. This is a choice that can never be undone. Hmm. Actually, kind of looks cool. Fortunately, I don't feel like getting invested in Fallout 76, but that did look pretty cool. Expedition Squad Delta, report. Over. Squad Delta, what's going on out there? This is a fallout thing. What is this? <sighs> the pit was really cool in Fallout 3. The Wasteland isn't the only open world playground with an amazing community. The Elder Scrolls Online from Zinemax That's pretty Online cool. Studios has now surpassed I really liked the pit. Players and shows no signs of slowing down. Right now, our players are enjoying the new Blackwood chapter, part of the Gates of Oblivion year-long adventure. We've got a lot more... Damn it, do I have to get Fallout 76? That Steel Rain thing looked pretty cool, and I really did like the pit. And <sighs> I was kind of hoping that it'd be Fallout 5 or something. And it was going to be in the pit. Damn it. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do Fallout 76. I'm not going to. I don't care. We'll pass. Wow, they're bringing back Scalebound. Fallout 5 isn't happening for a while. Yeah, but a man can dream that they're done with Fallout 76. It's only been 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, you had to know. Microsoft Microsoft in the last, like, two years, I think, has spent, like, $8 billion on game studios. And that's not an exaggeration. I think it is $8 billion that they spent. They spent at least $4 billion on Bethesda. So you had to know Microsoft was going to be coming in hot here with just a bunch of games. There's just no way. Like, because Microsoft dropped the ball so hard lately on exclusives, like, they had to come to this conference with a bunch of exclusive titles. Or there's just no reason to ever buy an Xbox. Halo's going to be last juiced. Is this a Gang Beast sequel? This is a fun party game. Is that the Honest Trailer guy? Yeah, it was. Isn't Gang Beasts still early access? Oh, then maybe this will be the release of Gang Beasts. <laughs> this was super popular on YouTube for a while, like every streamer was playing this.
Oh wow, it's a... <laughs> it's a... It's a totally different game that just looks exactly like Gang Beasts. Is it the same game? That's called Party Animals. Eighty stuff. Guys, we'll play uh, Party Animals on stream then, because that's a totally different game. Maybe we'll catch the next YouTube fad. This will probably be like a Hades Game of the Year edition, I assume. Stupid boy! I told you nobody gets out of here. Try and stop me. I'm glad that they're showing the first uh, floor of Hades over and over again because that's the only one anyone ever sees. Oh, Hades on Game Pass. That's probably a good call, this. Yeah. Game Pass and getting ported to the new, the next Xbox. I thought that was going to be like a sequel or something, instead it's just a, a port. Hmm. Strange sequel? The uh, live stream chat for this is just a bunch of people saying this is the worst E3 ever. And people are talking about how bad this E3 is. I feel like it's no different than any other E3. I don't know. This is one of those like artsy games, like The Journey or whatever, right? Are we not done with those games yet? Somerville, or like Boringville. This holiday marks the twentieth. I hate this woman. And the twentieth anniversary of Halo. To our you ruined my favorite franchise. Thank you. We wouldn't be here without all of you. Our goal. Oh, I hate you. To bring players together. Oh, she's so bad. To offer our entire multiplayer experience to all players across Xbox and PC with no barriers. Halo Infinite multiplayer will be free to play and invite more of you than ever before to become a Spartan hero. Anytime she talks, I'm excited to be here I get, with Joseph Stanton, I get so angry. The director of Halo Infinite. From helping craft the original Halo Combat Evolve. To leading the fan they had to bring him out because he's like one of the last, uh, Halo like good Halo so vision, uh, ha good Halo like Halo. members left. Thank you, Bonnie. He's the only one left on the crew. For us, no, you don't need gold you. juiced. Halo has always been about heroism and wonder, about fighting to keep humanity safe against impossible odds in a beautiful. And he being him being on Halo Infinite is the only reason I still have even the smallest amount of hope for this game being good. The largest, most wide open environment we've ever built, and we can't wait for you to explore it. He's like really talented. Think Sarah Palmer is going to be in this game? Yeah, because Microsoft wants to just fucking assault my senses. The heart of Halo is Spartan 117. The Master Chief. In the next chapter of the Chief's story, you'll face his greatest challenge yet. But you're not alone in the fight. Oh, the main batteries are shut down. We're stuck out here. No, the entire thing is uh, free to play. It's not just maps. There's uh, microtransactions, and the cosmetics are like paid. I told you. It's an 
enough. So I see. This is cool. What happened to the rest of Blue Team? I mean, yeah, Halo 5 story sucked, but there was no reason to just fucking cut Blue Team from it. Cortana. The rogue AI known as Cortana is gone. She's been deleted. How? By you? Of course not. Did you hit your head or something? Don't you remember? My instructions were to enter this installation, imitate Cortana, and lock her down for retrieval. Yours were to take her back to the Infinity for deletion. So if it wasn't you... Okay then. There's something else. On successful deployment, my deletion routine was supposed to complete. Still here. <laughs> Good. Good? Something stopped your deletion. We need to find out why. But this wasn't the mission. The missions change. They always do. Are you sure? Of course, you can't have a Halo game without multiplayer. And on Xbox Series X, you'll be able to hmm. enjoy Infinite's multiplayer action at up to 120 right. frames per second. Finally, I'm very happy to announce that Halo Infinite's first free-to-play multiplayer season and Infinite's story-driven campaign will launch together this holiday. A new day wow, still not a confirmed release, huh? A new generation built to fight. Together, we are unstoppable! Are you ready? Oof, they brought Sprint to multiplayer still. Big oof. Oh, the announcer's back though, that's really cool. That weapon looks like it has no textures. Those shield effects are really bad, too. Ugh. Hey, the BR sounds like the BR again, at least. Hello. Let's do some damage. Oh, you can grapple the weapons to pick them up? That's actually pretty sick. Why'd they bring back the storm rifle? The flag is ours. Is this a remake of Valhalla? That map? No one in chat's gonna know that. I think it is. That's pretty cool. State, just holiday 21. Uh, Alright, I'll fucking forget Halo Infinite. The story so far seems to be all over the place. There, there's like this new AI character that they're figuring out what happened to Cortana. And then there's the banished faction from Halo Wars 2. Like, what are they doing with the story for Halo Infinite? I, God, I'm nervous that's gonna be a fucking mess. But I do trust Joseph. He's a really good writer. 
All the books he wrote for Halo are really good, so. Fuck it. I'll, uh. I'll get it. Is this Diablo 4? Oh, Diablo 2 remaster. I want to believe this will be good. I think it'd be really fun to play this, but my problem is with how Warcraft 3 Reforged turned out, I just don't trust that uh, Blizzard won't fuck up this remaster. Because of how fucking bad Warcraft 3 Reforged is. I want to play this too, but I just, I'm waiting for the ball to drop on how Blizzard's gonna fuck this up. Well, I hope they don't fuck it up. I would really like to play that. From all of us. She's my brother. Okay, it's not just me. Everyone in chat saying that this trailer is fucking up. I was like, is my internet connection? But no, it's just the trailer. Because all the chat's the same, like, rip to stream and buffering and stuff. Alright, so it's not just me. We're good. That's on E3. It's not me. Yeah, it's them. All of chat's also saying it's lagging. A Plague Tale Requiem. Wow, it looks great. <laughs> ah, it looks great. Wow, it was just that trailer, because it immediately, now that we're on Far Cry 6, immediately uh, looks fine. So just whoever submitted that trailer, probably, like, to the presentation, probably didn't send, like, the final copy. Hey, Yara is burning? What exactly is your plan? Hold hands. Someone just probably didn't render the actual copy of that trailer or some shit. Time you learn about resolver, Danny. To take down Castillo, a guerrilla needs the right tool for the right job. This is how it goes. Keep talking. It's a stealth operation. She's cute. You cover. I feel like I recognize how she looks though. Is the uh, face model based off like some actress? Like I feel like she looks like someone I recognize. Or maybe I just know somebody that looks like that character. I have just what you need. You wanna blow shit up? Juan Cortez at your service. Can Far Cry 6 manage to be above average? No. Ubisoft perfectly aims for average every time. To not upset anyone. Everyone in Yara saw that shit. What? Wait a second. Who brought the rooster? 
Hey, whatever you need to get the job done, Danny. <laughs> Next time I see you, I want to play with that crazy backpack, deal. It's driving me nuts now. The player character for Far Cry 6, who is she? She's some- she's an actual person. <laughs> I just don't know who. So do I. I miss Far Cry, uh, Blood Dragon. That was a really fun game. I get solely for the chicken. Fair enough. I've played this before. It looks very pretty. Not sure if I'd want to play it, but... Looks cool. Is Slime Rancher a good cook? You like it? Climb Ranger 2. Okay. I just realized Halo Infinite wasn't even at the end of this conference. Welcome back to Shredageddon. Here's a new trick. They dropped Halo Infinite in the middle. Jesus, they must really not be confident in it. Is usually they save the best, they open with the biggest thing, and then they end with the, uh, or they open with the second biggest thing, end with the biggest thing. And Halo Infinite was in the middle. So, what does Microsoft have that's gonna be bigger than Halo? It's this snowboarding game! Is this, what is this, SSX or something? Microsoft buys Sony at the end. <laughs> And then they just unveil all of the PlayStation exclusives are now on PC. For riders, by riders. We have a good feeling about December. <laughs> That's a clever way to announce the release date if you're not 100% sure. <laughs> what the fuck? It's the Detroit Become Human sequel. It's the Reaper from Mass Effect. Is this song? I don't know. Dude, is this the Fear sequel that I called at the beginning of the stream? Oh, well, no. Yeah, sure. I'll play that. That looks cool.
Why not? I mean, it looked fun. Yeah, dude, Microsoft coming in hot. There's been, like, non-stop game after game after game revealed. They've only talked about, like, two different games so far. Hmm. I've been like, boom, new game, new game, new game, new game. I knew this Microsoft's probably going to have the strongest conference of E3. I mean, they've spent enough money to. What is this? I'm never a huge fan of these, like, pixelated games. But this kind of looks like post-apocalypse Castlevania. Ooh, the music pretty hype, though. Replaced. Sorry, Diz. Looks like it's not coming out for another year. Welcome back, BCL. Year of grounded. Oh yeah, this is like that one. <laughs> They're still talking about this game. This looked so dumb. With crafting, fighting, the bomb, zip lining, flying things. Now, to celebrate, we present the Shroom and Doom update. Oh, this game is out, but it's just getting an update. Yeah, I don't care about this. I'm gonna use this time to go get a coffee. Be back in like before this trailer ends, because I don't want to miss the next thing. But I don't care about this. And of course, mushrooms. But not those kinds. We also got something that literally no one was asking for: the Brood Mother. She's so terrifying. You should probably turn on arachnophobia mode. Oh, even her blob scares the sh out of us. Go big. Or never go. Home. Does anybody care about this game? Imagine he misses the biggest trailer. Nah, I'd be back. I knew I was gonna be back in time. No big deal. Oh! Amoongus. Imagine I missed the Among Us update. Hey, what's up, uh, Raidu? Oh, generic anime. Their ideals, their trust, their friendship, their greed. This is anime. We will reshape history with the power of our friendship. Oh my god, is this Octopath Traveler? Wow!
Who plays this game enough for it to get or who like to get this game a sequel? What? You didn't chronicle hundred heroes. All those games look the same, man. Ooh, wow! A Yudin Chronicle Rising. Coming- they're announcing a game that's coming out in 2023? Are you fucking kidding me? Save it for next E3! For applying lethal solutions to conflicted situations, we wish to test your abilities. <laughs> Another sick trailer. Rise up. <laughs> Play our game. <laughs> Alright. Looks good. Alright, you get 30 seconds of the Microsoft conference, don't fuck it up. <laughs> History is all around us. Assassin's Creed. We have finally decided the Assassin's Creed games are so generic. They're all going to be auto-generated. Huge. What would you build? How would you fight? Where would you go? What will you be remembered for? This looks like a mobile game. Who's gonna spend $60 on this for Xbox? Was this Age of Empires or Myth? There it is. Age of Empires, baby, called that, don't care. It's like the worst of all of the popular RTS games. Neat. When is this ending? I, uh, I think it's a while. By hearing an old, wise sounding voice. Oh, please be Fable. Quiet, peaceful setting. Oh, are they gonna end the conference with Fable? This isn't Fable, but... Something must break the serenity. Will this or is it? Be in the game? No, say goodbye to it forever. Suddenly, and for no reason, people running. What These is this? Pointless slow motion shots make everything seem cool. Oh, it's a parody trailer. Pre-sale numbers. That war sound can mean only one thing. <laughs> we must gaze over an epic shot of a world. And there should be lens flares. Now we see our hero. But only their silhouette, because the developers haven't finished the design. <laughs> or finished the story. Or finished any gameplay that's actually ready to show. In <laughs> fact, the only thing they have finished is the title. All right. That could have also applied uh, to the Starfield trailer. <laughs> <laughs> they could have played they could have showed Starfield as the title instead of Outer Worlds 2 and I would have been like, yeah, that's Starfield. I still have to play the Outer Worlds 1. I've been telling myself I'm gonna play it every weekend. I really wanna play that game. 
Maybe now that they've actually announced the sequel, I'll play the first one. I just keep telling myself, yeah, I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna play it, and then I don't. And then I just keep playing Genshin Impact. Oh, Fox, is this your flight simulator? Is this for you, buddy? Is he here? Imagine Fox misses the flight sim trailer, even though this is the thing he said he wanted at the very beginning. Oh, there he is. Ready for Shadow Drop? You might get lucky enough for this to be a Shadow Drop, actually. Usually every E3 conference, they drop, they Shadow Drop at least one game, and I mean, if it's just a port. And I don't think Flight Simulator is a game that'll sustain long-term hype. The game looks downright real. Yeah, Flight Sim, if on a good PC, Flight Sim, like, almost looks like real life, dude. It's really scary. I hope it's a shadow job for you, Fox. Oh, it doesn't give a release date. Oh, July 27th. I mean, it's not a shadow drop, but that's not far. Like a month away. Oh, are they adding fucking uh, actual military uh, airplanes to flight sim? Yo, that's actually kind of cool. If they are. Free expansion in the fall. Top Gun. Hmm. That'd be dude. Imagine playing flight sim with like one of those a fucking airplane that's breaking the sound barrier. That'd be actually kind of sick to experience. Oh, and VR. Oh, I wonder if, is there VR for flight simulator? That would be cool. I would have guessed this is Far Cry, if, uh... No, oh, it's a generic racing game. Who cares? Forza 87. Now featuring copyright music. Great. I've driven most of these cars. Fun fact. They handle much better in the games than they do in real life, by the way. For as much as these games play, uh, Claim to be realistic. I <laughs> like how they show off the engine as soon as the cars come out, there's a noticeable dip in quality, yeah. Forza! Hello. I'm Mike Brown, creative director at Playground Games, and I can't wait to show you- You're not a video game trailer, shut the hell up! Horizon is known for fun- Oh my god, they're actually gonna- t of all the games they were gonna stop and talk about, Horizon. instead of talking about Atomic Heart, you're gonna talk about Forza? This is the largest and most- Oh, I don't care, it's the same time- every time they talk about one of the fucking racing games, this is the largest, most realistic racing game we've ever created. Rendered in unparalleled detail and with ray tracing in Forza Vista thanks to the power of the Xbox Series consoles. I don't care. 
I've invited along some of the team to help give you a taste of some of the amazing content that's waiting for you in Forza Horizon 5. Please welcome Bill, Maddie, no. Sarah, and Don from the Forza team. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, everyone. Hey, what's up, Mike? And we also have Abraham with us as well. He's one of the- Abraham? Oh, that changes everything. Bienvenidos a Mexico. I can't wait to show you what we've been working on. We begin in the rainforest. <laughs> we can generate actually 3.5 realisms with this game using the power of the teraflops. Oh my god! Forza is so far behind, they're still doing the cringy realistic gameplay trailers. Nobody actually talks like this while playing games! That's a peek at our adventurous campaign. But Forza Horizon has always been a game that's best enjoyed with others. Let's go and see what When Ubisoft did those for Ghost Recon back in like 2016 and everyone was like, wow, this is stupid. Let's never do that again. And then Forza was like, 2021, cringy realistic conversations during multiplayer. This is in game. Maddie is behind the wheel of the AMG Project One Forza Edition in Mexico's lush living desert. The perfect place to meet up with friends and head out for a drive. Thanks to the next generation of our Horizon Live servers. The problem with trying to portray how like realistic and how good these games look over a live stream is like look at just how like pixelated and shit this looks. Let's leave Maddie for a moment and head out to the coast and meet Don. Don is already on the move, exploring this idyllic seaside. Alright, I got bad news for you, by the way. If you tried to drive a Lamborghini on a dirt road like this, you would go nowhere. Speaking of, hold up, Don. Oh, hey, what's up? This is a mural by Mexican artist Farid Rueda. Just one of the many beautiful, faithful pieces of Mexico you'll find all over Forza Horizon 5. Are you kidding me? They're actually just showcasing the art on a single building that in a racing game you would see for two seconds. Actually two seconds. Check out this geology detail implemented with precision accuracy using photogrammetry. They're showing off the dirt atop an active Mexican volcano. The entire that's that's where we're at. This level of detail. Look at the dirt. Uh, can you show the paint drying next, please? Friends are exploring is the highest point ever in a Horizon game. And thanks to the power of the Xbox Series consoles, from up here we can see for miles in every direction. In the distance, we can just about make out Guanajuato. You can, in the distance, you can just make out interesting Guanajuato gameplay from the next trailer. Cities anywhere in the world. Yes. Colorful, Way out in the distance. Ten minutes later, you'll see the next interesting game. Sprawling network of tunnels. And these twisting, turning, overlapping streets mean that as well as looking good, it plays great too. As we see here, as Don is challenged in Horizon's open world battle royale, the Eliminator. Oh, it's a battle royale! <laughs> in that race, the rest of our players are still out exploring this diverse open world. Let's head north. Doesn't PlayStation have Gran Torino, which sells a lot better than Forza, Kyler? And using our unique HDR camera rig, we captured 24-hour shoots of real Mexican skies at 12K resolution. And thanks to the Xbox Series consoles, these photorealistic skies result in lifelike lighting that dynamically... What of all the games you're going to spend and talk about? Feel like you're really there. Why is this what you're talking about? She's joined by Abraham and some other members of the team. Our players are using Forza Link, the new AI assistant that intelligently tracks the status of you and the people you meet online and then helps you link up and play together. We'll now head deep into the rainforest and rejoin Bill and the rest of our players. Here we see our new volumetric lighting system filling the scene with god rays as the sunlight dapples through the dense rainforest. I don't care. It's about to start. Forza Link knows that Bill loves mini games. So it intelligently prompts Sierra to invite Bill. Bill accepts the chat. That they're seamlessly linked together with their GPS route set. With that Horizon Arcade mini game starting soon, all of our players are coming together. 
This mini game is called Pinata Pop, signaled by the Horizon cargo plane dropping a payload of pinatas. That's <laughs> that's what you guys are missing. Gotta catch up to you guys. Our players now have is them just saying the same word over and over again? As many as they can. Okay, go up here to the left. There's loads along the main road. Here I go. I'll take a look through the bushes here. There's some between the houses. <laughs> There's a couple more over here. Sweet. While the team grab those last few pinatas, we're going over to the stadium because I have one more thing to show you. Is it something cool? All right. <laughs> this is Event Lab, the incredible new tool set that allows you to create your own races, game modes, and gameplay experiences. You customize everything. Right All right. To the fundamental rules of the game. That's kind of cool. Okay, I'll give him that. Credit where it's due. I made fun of the trailer the whole time. The game labs thing looks kind of cool. And it will truly be an astounding showcase for the Xbox Series consoles when it comes to Xbox games. I am nothing if not fair. Thank you so much. I'll see you all in That is uh that looked cool. Why did they show that for the least amount of time? That was the coolest thing. To bring the joint community of gaming to everyone on the planet. Oh, here we go. You, the gamer, are at the center of everything we do. You, the gamer. We unify gamers. Twenty-seven of them will be available on Xbox Game Pass. Now, through the end of the year, gamers. Back to back monthly releases landing day one on Game Pass led by five new titles from Xbox Game Studios, as well as highly you, anticipated games the gamer. like Back for Blood, 12 Minutes, and The Ascent. And as we look ahead to next year, I'm inspired by the creativity of Bethesda and Xbox Game Studios. We showed you the highly anticipated RPG Starfield. You didn't show any fucking gameplay, Phil. Don't lie to my face. I like you, Phil, but you didn't show shit from Starfield. You showed a cinematic trailer. Fable, the Elder Scrolls Where is Fable? How is Fable not here? And Elder Scrolls 6. There wasn't even a Fable trailer. Is that game in development hell? World's most beloved shooter in Halo Infinite. Adding to the roster of iconic Xbox shooters alongside Wolfenstein, Gears of War, Perfect Dark. I knew there wasn't gonna Oh yeah, they also didn't show any Perfect Dark stuff. Epic open world racing game. The Xbox conference has been about an hour and a half. You a vibrant and authentic depiction of Mexico in a game built from the ground up for next gen. Hey Juice, uh where was Forza taking place again? Hard at work on the next Forza Motorsport. Our growing family of 23 studios is devoted After Phil talks, they better show a Fable trailer, man. Thank you, Juiced. Xbox has been here for 20 years. I kind of forgot. And that's because of you. Our team You, the gamer. A place where you'll find the greatest games, the most dedicated developers. Show the, the Fable game. trailer. Together, you coward, Phil. We all make Xbox the best place to play. Before I go, there's one more thing. Take a look at this brand new original game from the Arcane team at Bethesda, the studio that created Prey and Dishonored. Arcane created something new for them, an open world immersive shooter that you can play alone or with your friends. And like Anthem 2. This game will be an Xbox exclusive. How did they not show Fable? Bruh. I thought for sure they were gonna have some Fable stuff, man. Fable uh, 1 is one of my favorite games of all time, and my favorite RPG of all time, and they just... They bombed the franchise, and then <laughs> they're not even reviving it properly. Come on, make yourself useful. Oh my god, it's the sniper from Borderlands 1. So, uh, that was fun, right? No. 
That's your cue, mate. Sleep tight. You know what this reminds me of? My time in the Himalayas. Ready is later, Dad. Ready, watch out! You think they can't kill you anytime they want? By the way, any ability in multiplayer shooters that shoots you straight up and then you hover in the air is really bad. Because all it does is make you a giant target, so she's going to suck. Actually, me during the apocalypse live streaming. Hey! Really hope the video was worth it. Everybody, fall back! People need to know what happened. Layla, with me. Get me on the roof now. So this is just like another generic. Her her power is a spectral elevator. <laughs> It's left for dead, but with vampires. Get over here. Yep. Don't miss. Don't touch me. She has a Mary Poppins umbrella. I don't understand how things that can fly get knocked to the ground. Couldn't they just fly? I'm also not a huge fan of the designs. Sun's coming up. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Sure thing, Edgar Allan bro. <laughs> That's a good one. Do you think things will ever go back to normal? Would you want to go back to normal? Not if I still have to pay my student loans. Student loan joke. That's not something I would have ended the conference on, man. That seemed very okay. That would have been something I gave like a 10 minute trailer, or a minute trailer in like the middle of the, in the middle of a conference. I mean, that was okay. I want to. I want that Atomic Heart game. I also expected something at least like that, Diz. Um, I want to play that Atomic Heart. I'll try the, uh, the Sea of Thieves. Yeah, same juice. I'll try the Sea of Thieves, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean crossover, because that's just kind of cool. Um, what else was good? That's about it. Oh, I do kind of want Back for Blood. Um, 
Diablo 2 Remaster, I'll get maybe a week after it releases and people report that Blizzard didn't fuck it up. Uh, maybe Psychonauts 2. I can't believe there was no Fable. I'm semi-bought into Halo Infinite, but I still don't think it's going to be great. Gang beasts, I mean, party animals. They keep showing the, the same 10 seconds of the Starfield trailer. They're like, sweet Starfield gameplay. Meanwhile, cinematic trailer plays. Is Psychonauts exclusive? I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. All right, what do we got? The back for blood thing, right? Oh no, Square Enix is next. Right? I also can't wait for Starfield to flop. It's the Xbox fridge. Oh, are they actually releasing an Xbox mini fridge? <laughs> this is their big end of the stream announcement. Is that real? Xbox and chill. Bro. I'll buy that. Okay. <laughs> I'll get that, that was pretty cool. How can I pre-order the Xbox mini fridge? How can I also pre-order these people shutting the fuck up? Knee, sir. <laughs> okay, yes. Down on one knee. Yes. Spartan. Yes. Stand. Oh, wow. Woo! I just got knighted. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm all about that. I was like, if we're going to talk about Halo, we got to, like, bring it. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm down. That was amazing. Uh, yeah. Top to bottom. 10 out of 10. Put it in my veins. Do it again. <laughs> Run it back. I don't know, but that was awesome. I think that's, like, what... what that was like the perfect mix of like just a few informative little bits, but what gamers love is just trailer after trailer, hit after hit. I mean, really, there were a lot of great games that they had. That's hilarious. It's, it's insane. I love your enthusiasm right now. I don't yeah. even know where I was just reading the release date for the Xbox fridge. You can't pre-order it yet, AI. but it's kind of cool. Uh, I loved her personality. I thought that she was absolutely adorable. Yeah, yeah, for Halo Infinite. It was, I mean, I think like Halo Infinite, we, we you know, we, we knew that it was going to come, right? Yeah. Uh, it was a game that was supposed to release last Did they year. do this for every E3 uh, conference? Uh, you know, like, uh, the girl that's way taller than the guy host so they can make the tall girl joke? Hits it out of the park. You know, they, they I feel like that happens almost every E3. Like, I have a vivid memory of that joke playing every E3. I love big team battle. Oh. So I'm all about that. And yeah, it was it was really, really well done. When we got to multi They haven't announced the fridge yet. Like head over heels. Or the Here fridge price. Um here for this. All the nostalgia feels. I also thought the environment looked Nostalgia? Like was, like, I, there were a lot of conversations. What nostalgia? There was sprint in it. Everything that I saw animation wise Disgusting. I was impressed. By the way, uh yeah. so normally for our E three polls, we're only able to fit six games. Oh. But our our so crew much great stuff. was like there's just too many games. So there's seven games in the poll seven right games. now. So get out there and vote. I mean wow. actually a lot of hype. Uh, centered around, well, you know, what we just saw. For that sure. Redfall looked really, really cool. Uh, uh, Stalker 2 looked incredible. We got a Psychonauts Redfall did not look cool. Uh, 
Uh, so it's just, there's so much to talk about. Where do you want to start? I know we talked about Halo. Where do you want to go from here? To be honest, Redfall, um, I'm yeah. all about a sexy, violent vampire. When he yeah. showed up, I was just like, okay, I'm here for it. Uh, and all the villains, I, I was totally blown away. Um, the flame hair, the wraith-like character. Yeah, yeah. And I like the protagonist as well. Uh, the hooded man with like the bird and it just like went off in the distance. So um, I don't like her. I really don't like, like her. Okay, yeah. Into this Story. Jesus. I want to see more. It yeah. was funny because we were hooting and hollering the entire presentation when Redfall came on in the end. We were all dead silent, and I think just oh, really dead silent. Yeah, we were dead silent because uh, nobody cares about Redfall. A phenomenal game if you haven't played it. Which, by the way, on Game Pass, so check that out. Uh, I think like it, there's just so much. Yeah, <laughs> Horizon winning, winning the poll. You're right. Uh, well, I guess it's now it's not. Both both worlds here, and it also goes to show too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Halo Infinite wins with 25%, and while ties with Stalker, 25%, Horizon is 24%. So, people like her Forza, man. I don't, I don't know, dude. And they opened and closed with Bethesda Games, which goes to show the faith that they have in that team to churn out. Yeah, they spent four billion dollars on Bethesda, dude. I'm sure they have. They they not only have faith, but they want to fucking market it. Opening with Starfield, that just made me smile. Beautiful. And then 25 Why? years in the making, the yeah. release date reveal, we yeah. all went wild. We're like, 11, yeah. 11, 11 there, there really is. This is literally video. all she's done. She's like, oh my god, that thing, we went wild with that. Wow. Wow, we were so crazy. God, she drives me nuts. Space adventure. Yeah, that's fine. You just wrap me up in a little ball. I'll wait till 2022 and I'll How tall is she? Like well, realistically, she's the yeah, same height as this dude, but she has the like six inch heel because like I said, they always try to do the joke at every E3. Oh my God, girl taller than man. Very funny. Talk about Psychonauts. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, we've been waiting so long since 2005. That makes me feel very old. Yeah, By it's been she has the same reaction to everything. Jesus. Um, but it's interesting actually because Michael was talking to us about how he actually played it. I'm sure he'll laugh. actually bring out Greg, bring Greg Miller back out. Waiting. Yeah, That's where I'm at. Saw it at a showcase. He didn't get yeah. to play it, but he saw no, it at a showcase. There is no audience, Daniel. It's just okay. Okay. it's uh just a live stream a thing. Bit, so he's like, we've been waiting. This game yeah. looked finished, and we thought it was going to come out in 2019, and we yeah. thought it was going to come out in 2020. Then obviously we you know got blipped, and 2020 didn't happen. So now we're going <laughs> to get it here in 2021, yeah. and and, it, and it's so short. It's so close. Yeah. August was it 23rd or something like that? It really oh yeah. God. I'm I'm really pumped for that. See, he's thinking about it a freudian slip he said it's so short and he was talking about himself compared to her what that team is able to make over there and the quality that they turn out it um, is outstanding i think what stood out to me was just that uh, really square enix is at 215 so we it's yeah. 2 hours so after the microsoft one started my little i mean we're seeing we're seeing so there's a half hour till square enix i think amazing but forza Horizon 5. Yes. There were moments, people, when we were watching. I know oh my you guys God. at home felt the same way, okay? Where it looked like a picture. It looked like it existed. It does exist in the real world. <laughs> but it looked like that it wasn't the video game. And it Please was tell me what it looked like. How do they, like, Playground manages to pull off magic every single time. I mean, the visuals are wild. And then on top of that, they add these fun game modes. They're trying to play on audience reactions that aren't there. Yeah, they really are. I think a subtle way of saying we're never going to get Viva Pinata again. So there's just a lot of... Launch Hades while we wait? I was kind of going to do... I wanted to play Genshin while we waited. And that also build your own track creator, like the challenges you could make. Oh my goodness, Jack. There's so much to discuss. So this is my thing with... Post Malone dabbed. I am an awful driver in real life, but I feel yeah. like I can play racing games decently. And then Oh my god, girls can't drive. That is also funny. Please clap with our mainstream okay. humor. Haha. Haha. Drive safe, kids. Yes, please drive, drive safe. safe. We fully encourage that, but I'm just a really awful driver, so when we see a game like Forza, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can never chill. get in a car with Jackie. I everyone. can have fun. That is a fact. Never get that a car is with definitely a fact. Um I did want to talk about replace a little bit. I I might have gotten lost in yeah. Oh, Diz, it's your game. Of, like, all these great uh, have I unlocked the barber skin yet? No, I actually haven't even started playing the event yet. I was really busy this week. So I, I planned on playing uh, all of the Genshin stuff this weekend. Yeah, it's that HD HD two 
2D thing that we're starting to see yeah. more. We got a little taste of that. With I feel like that's like what every Dragon indie Dragon game Dragon does. A while ago. So oh, or I could play Metroid Switch. Samus Returns um, a little bit to see in between more of that happening. conferences. And I love that art style. Gorgeous. There were just so many games, and I just want to say real fast, Outer what Worlds do you want to say? Oh, freaking oh, two. Yes. 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 That was yes. a pleasant surprise. I am actually in my second playthrough. Of I always, right I've told myself I've I always, like, someday, I really wanted to so do, much. like, host one of these conferences. Amazing. Like, I think it'd be really cool to be, like, a host for one of these. But I realize now, I just don't have it in me to, like, fake it like this. For the, um, uh, for these trailers. It's like, I mean, look, dude. Space is choice, baby. Space is choice. Sure, Outer Worlds 2 might be cool or or whatever, but like I couldn't have that reaction like what he's got. Oh my god! Outer Worlds 2! I like that's just I don't have an enemy. Thank you, Jackie and Golden Boy, for trying to talk about every Xbox game so we would have nothing to talk about in this panel. But luckily, with more than 30 games being talked about, we still have plenty of ground. These are kind of cool chairs. Are they based on... Oh, they're based on the Tetris blocks. Get it? Because they're gamers. What was the game? What was the game? What can't you stop thinking about right now? A Yudin Chronicle, a spiritual successor to Sui Code, and one of the greatest JRPGs of all time. Over 100 recruitable characters. I'm very proud to have... Why would you want to play a game with over 100 uh, recruitable characters. It's a phenomenal looking game, and I can't wait to get my hot little hands on it in 2023. And 2022. I was going to say, how do you feel about there being the 2022 one? I mean, that was a surprise version. to me, so I'm stoked. I can't wait. Okay, okay. They look uncomfortable? Yeah, but that doesn't matter. It's about the aesthetic, yo. Because we're gamers. And gamers are always uncomfortable with their uh, bad back and horrible posture. I definitely was not expecting that. I was sitting here going like, that's Fable, though, right? Hey, what's up, Silver? That's Fable, though, right? That's Fable, though, right? We didn't get any of that. We got, like, a small little mention. Olive no May. Sure. Like Jackie was saying. Preach, got, like, girl. Daddy and mommy vampires coming out of nowhere. I was also like, wondering where the fuck no Fable story. was. I know. She's the only girl I like on this conf or on this panel now. Where incredible. All the different weapons was you Fable? The woman who was, like, levitating people with the special purple powers that she had going on. We had, what they call him, Edgar Allen. God, she calls herself a gamer. She doesn't even recognize that the the power was a spectral Wait, elevator. It's not a real gamer. Before, so that is just, just incredible to me. 100%. Never thought of dealing with vampires before. I never thought about stabbing a vampire in the state of the heart with a stake before. Never thought about that. Ah, that's crazy. Or shooting them with bullets. That hasn't happened before. I did not hear about EA getting hacked. Groundhog Day, how can we get out of this one situation in this one room? But my yes, geez. I'm yeah, bringing my hot little hands. Genuine surprise. Yeah. 12 Obsidian minutes. Obsidian is one of my favorite developers. When they come out with RPGs, they, they go wild on them. And Outer Worlds was like one of my favorite games of the past couple years. Sure. So This I mean, guy's generic Obsidian say the trending things. About, which was uh, Man. Which was revealed a little while back. I'm thinking New Vegas, all right? But if well, no, no, talking no, about no, like, no, no. I'm maybe about, I'm thinking of Grounded, which I've also played and enjoyed. No, I'm talking about like what you expect next. Sure. Yeah, but like, you know, Fallout New Vegas. If y'all ain't played Fallout New Vegas, it's on Game Pass. Y'all should check that out. Oh my God! Yeah, have Have you played Fallout New Vegas, Vegas guys? So yeah. obviously, Outer Worlds was fire. Maybe you should check out The Witcher Three while you're at it, huh? I think that 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 element of surprise is sometimes what we miss during gaming conventions. And sure. That's what they brought with Outer Worlds too. Well, especially with what we're talking about coming. Is that a surprise? Was, yes. right? we're Games that sell well get sequels. Leaks. Like, yeah, E3 is, about is that a big shock? Was anyone like, super surprised by it? Up there, right? Just show you yeah. the trailer and be like, <laughs> there's no the gameplay. There's and, no gameplay. It's, it's all good. And real quick, good. while we're on this trailer, was everybody else's vibe? Were you ready for it to turn into Fable at any second? I know yeah. it's not, it's it's not traditional <laughs> Fable, obviously, yeah. from the gameplay, but the inherent humor they were doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, see, I'm I thought for sure that was Fable. We kind of got last year, it was like a little fairy going through the forest. And yeah. I'm like, Fable oh, always like, did that kind of shit. Of so we're going in, and then it's like, uh, 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 and Assault then you got rifles. here. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, we weren't sure where we are going to end up with that one. Uh, I was also disappointed, <laughs> Olivia, or however you say your name, <laughs> Olivia. Yeah, yeah. What about I was also though? disappointed yeah. that it wasn't Wait, Fable. What about Perfect Dark? No, no, about, no, about the Xbox E3. Oh, oh I'd probably, can you guess what I would pick? I'm it sure it's replaced. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For a Damie game, awesome. I, uh, amazing pixel art. Yeah, where was the good, Perfect Dark trailer stuff? I was shot. Platformer or brawler, whatever it ends up 
It isn't yeah. Perfect Dark like a big franchise yeah, for Rare? Right they had no, no topics of... Night, what are we talk, like, where are we at? What game is this? And then have it come out and be something new. That was great. Like, they really so, had nothing for Perfect Dark at E3? The no, isn't they're not going to try and push this game, like Rare's Return, to Perfect Dark? So Limbo oh, yeah, that's that, yeah. Okay, yeah, that. that yeah. I, I, I missed that like jump ship. Okay. Excited, but then at the same time, the dog <laughs> kept disappearing. So yeah. I'm going. Can my heart take it if oh, the know. dog disappears? But when you got like weird purple javelins coming down from alien, that dog ain't making it. In at least one playthrough, I'm sure there's, I mean, there's, there's a happy ending. I'm sure <laughs> the whole family makes yeah. it through. But I don't think you have to worry about that overall. So now the Fox so know, used to chatting in the Discord this during the streams instead of actually chatting in the stream chat that he's still oh, yeah. chatting in the Discord even though he's watching the stream actually. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I think Xbox really came out and delivered on this. Yeah, part, and right? like Bethesda did too because you start with Starfield, yep. which yo we actually saw something from Starfield and a release date and all that, and it's also gonna be like a full next gen game. Yo, there's so much to talk about. But then they also bookend it with Redfall, so it's like Bethesda are yeah. the they are the the highlights. Of us, and so it's like, yes, we have Halo, we have the expected Xbox franchises like Forza, but to start and to end with Bethesda, like, yeah, we spent that money. Yeah. It's, about to, it's about to pay <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? So again, we we're talking about Jackie and Golden Boy eating up so much oxygen. One of the things I want to talk about, <laughs> right? You know, they just yak, yak, yak. Let's talk about all the big games. But there are so many things we haven't even touched on. Again, with more than 30 titles, something that stood out for me that I wasn't expecting was the Sea of Thieves crossover. With oh, yeah. Right? Right. So I, how many people are playing Sea of Thieves still? It's fantastic. It was like a real lifeline for me. During is it on the Steam? I was able to connect with my friends in a way that we couldn't do in person because we couldn't hang out, so we could take the high seas and just wreak endless havoc. It's like a it is. sandbox for chaos. Anything you want to do, you can make it happen there. And to see a massive license like Pirates of the Caribbean come into this, it fits so well narratively and diegetically, but also... Man, wow, the yeah, yeah, they just posted the, the uh, updates and stuff. It's really still 40 bucks. That story driven in that game. That's kind of crazy. Random things that happen when you're out and about in the world. So I'm super excited for it. And so All right, I'll wish list this because I bet you it goes on sale when that pirates thing comes out. Is there in Sea of Thieves right now in terms of storyline and stuff? Because one of the, if I can interject, mm -hmm. I, one of the things that started off was in the beginning it was content light. Okay, and I know they've added stuff to it. But Thank you. Grounded, what a review. Kermit is a gamer. And I had put in a lot of time, or not a lot of time, but like a few nights into grinding when that launched, and it was the same thing of like, cool. Now every week, we're going to give you a little bit of a reason. I'm like, oh, okay, like, there's not enough here. Is Sea of Thieves right now already before this stuff content complete in the way that, like... I would say, yes, I think that there is enough content to satisfy you at this point. It really depends on what you want to do. If you're the kind of person that likes to really grind out reputation and unlock achievements and things like that, you can do that. You can grind it out with all these different sort of daily quests. I'm not big on content. grinding and exploration. And Thanks, though. You, get that narrative in there. you can probably so buy a key cheaper. Really I don't really like to do, like, buy keys and shit. i rather just buy the games on Steam because it's so much easier. I Like, Steam has got me on convenience. I'm willing to spend a bit more money just for it to be in, like, my Steam library and just with my all my other games in one program. Like, that's so, it, that feels so much better to me. Like, I was crazy, but Slime Rancher, too. Slime Rancher, too. Like, I know that not too many people had picked it up or they just saw, like, the key. What's even going to be at the Square Enix yeah, conference? It's, it's a game where you go around and collect slimes that are shaped like animals, and then you breed them. And it's, you just kind of oh. get to keep collecting them. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, you can make bigger slimes, different slimes. You can combine the slimes. You can feed the slimes. It's a cute game just to appreciate the cuteness. Oh, yeah. You sit I mean, down gorgeous. and you relax. It looks it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Are Steam it's, keys, it's though? Oh, like, I think one of the things I saw in the Kind of Funny Games chat over and over again was Viva Pinata. Uh, does this give you that same kind of vibe of, like, it's chill, we're doing something? Oh, yeah, there's going to be the big update to Marvel Avengers that's going to be at the Square Enix thing. <laughs> I thought it was funny when someone had said, like, oh, looking at the Forza, we're not getting Viva Pinata back after running all of them over. But it does have, like, a very similar feel. Like, you could see you're uh, picking up all the slimes right here. There's a this game slime, gives me the Splatoon slime, vibe. And you basically kind of create these own little pens and environments for them. And then sure. you feed them and stuff. So it is a very chill game, similar to Viva Pinata. You're not going in trying to you can min max things uh but it's, it's just chill and then those are <laughs> when's the next conference i think in like 15 minutes mm -mm, yeah, no, uh based on the schedule it was 10 a.m driving for release dates and things when microsoft started so noon no, so yeah noon was when it started for me and now it's almost two o'clock which is when the square enix one begins so yeah about 15 minutes ish before the square enix conference or starts when you go to e3expo.com shop all right
<laughs> but yeah, like the fact that this is actually Avengers is one of the biggest flops of the past gen. Yeah. Do that on the console again. I'm so stoked for that. Let alone, yeah, the idea of being Maverick now and up there. We watched the Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Yeah, right. I will be watching the Nintendo Direct BCL if you check out my stream schedule. Give me a call. Come on over. For what I posted. I think overall the comments uh, I enjoyed it. It was good, maybe great. I'm still of what I'm streaming, I, I will show you guys now that, that we have some downtime. I think it's interesting that we get that start. Uh, today we're streaming no release date for Halo the Microsoft conference and then Square Enix. It was supposed to be there at launch. And then I was thinking about taking a break until the I Warner Bros. show at two. Right now, they're confident they can hit by the end of the but, but just not on a date. They can't. Do um, they can't. They don't want to be a punchline yet. Maybe I'll just play some games with you guys or something until 2 o'clock for the Warner Bros. show. <laughs> and then we're going to watch through to the PC gaming show. So that's my schedule for today. Tomorrow, starting with the Take 2 thing and going through to Capcom. And then Tuesday, I'll watch the uh, Nintendo Direct. And then I'll watch Namco's show later in the day. There's also your dose of wholesome Keanu. But they still have that independent spirit where they could do wild things. And yeah, Psychonauts has always been like that cult classic back in 2005. When are we going to see it again? When are we going to be Raz again? Like, I think they're very you Well, you played, of course, the genre-defining PSVR title they did. Oh, Psychonauts and the Rhombus of Ruin. Yeah, of Oh, damn, my bad. I forgot about that. Damn, Tim Shape is going to come out. So did the world. Hey, don't worry about it. Psychonauts 2 is coming out. I'm just messing with you, BCL. It. It's mad, mad whimsical, and I think that's uh, that's very important to balance out a lot of the violent shooter. The Tomb Raider reboot franchise is over. Was that even good? I didn't really like the first one. Anything? Oh, I also was impressed with uh, Aiden Chronicles. I've never played Suikoden, but I know that I would love yeah. Suikoden. So now I get to experience like a modern day take on you just, Jared Petty's heart just broke somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully they can give us a Halo <laughs> Battle Royale experience, <laughs> lol. Alright, fine. They already announced they weren't going to do the Battle Royale thing, but maybe they will. We got three former Xbox leaders to sit down to talk the past, present, and future of the console. They all helped launch. Oh cool, we're going to talk to some Microsoft people. Hello E3, this is Dean Takahashi. I'm the lead writer for Games Beat at VentureBeat. I've been covering games for about uh, 24 years and... Uh, I, I always think it's really funny when people in the tech years. industry have like some and of the lowest quality setups. The original Xbox uh, launched and uh, uh, had the opportunity to write a couple of books on the Xbox business. Uh, the first one was opening the Xbox. And I'm very pleased to have this uh, panel of... Uh, sort of a reunion of uh, Xbox uh, leaders here. And Yo, this guy has a cool ass setup though. Look at that like arcade thing he's got in the back there. I uh, spent uh, 20 years at uh, Microsoft and most of that uh, time thankfully was spent in the Xbox business. In fact, I joined the games business. With Is this man even a real gamer? He has football stuff on the wall from sports. Xbox Ugh. and the Xbox 360, um, where we really uh, competed pretty fiercely with Sony and had some great times, including the launch of Halo 3 in 2007. So really great to be here. Literally everyone that like references, uh, it, that like works at Microsoft, always references the Halo 3 launch as like the best moment of their life. I'm so jealous. Halo 3 was such a big part of my life. And joined Ed and Shane. I would have on, loved to be at like that big launch. Business. And then when Xbox got started, Dean Takahashi is the guy who couldn't beat the Cuphead tutorial. Legendary. <laughs> chief Xbox officer. Um, That's so hilarious. Then I left Microsoft, um, but it's great to be back uh, with my pals at A3. Great. And Ed Freeze. Yeah, I'm Ed Freeze. Uh, like these guys, I was a, at the company about 20 years, starting in the mid 80s. And uh, Took over the games business mid '90s with Shane, and we grew it as much as we could on the PC side. And then, uh, and then this crazy Xbox project came along that we all uh, <laughs> <laughs> did our best to make happen. And uh, still betting on the games business, I guess. absolutely <laughs> love the game business. <clears throat> Let's start with Robbie. Uh, um, so, Robbie, what, what do you remember as the most important lesson of creating the Xbox? 
Well, Doom Eternal you know, second level. Hey, the platforming in Doom Eternal sucked. I'll give him credit for that. Gaming person, so my lessons are going to be a little bit more. Doom Eternal was cool, but man, did the platforming segments of that game suck. Away from this time period, R1 uh, strategy is really important because the first version of Xbox didn't have a lot of it. It was just about sort of getting things done. And the second version, we really focused on strategy. Um, and then the second thing I'd say is it took us a, quite a while to build sort of a culture as a team. Nah, the, the platform is sucked, dude. Uh, cook. Miles it's okay. Really quickly. And so we hired a lot of people. First person platforming is were, really bad. A lot of incredible individual talent and not a lot of good team uh, work at the beginning. And when we got the team working better together, things really started to, started to move. And, you know, strategy and teamwork are super obvious lessons, I know. Content is king, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> I think that that's, we learned that, uh, uh, that, uh, and I think this I wonder is, who's uh, doing the live switching between the camera views really or if this is like an well edited video after the fact. We figured out that exclusive content was going to matter in the, in the battle, especially versus Sony. I, I agree with these guys completely. I mean, you know, the first Xbox was about us running as fast as we could to... It must be edited because he like weirdly cut off the other dude. And after that, we could breathe and reflect on all the things. It's so funny that they're talking about like the power of Xbox exclusives because after these guys left, Xbox had no exclusives. That's really funny. Do better. These guys must have been the ones like driving the fact that Xbox should have like exclusive games. What are some contributions that your colleagues here made, I guess, to the uh, the whole effort? Like what? What do you give them credit for? This is actually kind of a... That's a hard question. <laughs> an interesting conversation to listen to. Dangerous. <laughs> no, I think... I, well, look, I, I'm not going to say this just because he's on the uh, on the call, but I, I think Ed deserves a ton of credit. I mean, I, I owe a lot to Ed personally and professionally. I mean, Ed brought me into the games group in the 90s. I'm not... Like Robbie, I'm not a technical guy. I'm not a gamer. I think that's really well known. And Ed gave me a chance, um, first starting on the business side and then on the content side, um, which led, I think, to a lot of fun and success for me personally. Not a Ed gamer. Was one of those guys who- Head of Microsoft first, Game uh, Studios. You know, Self-proclaimed not gamer. Bigger player games. Uh, first of all, that was on the PC side. And then when the Xbox project came along, you know, he really drove that. And I don't think without Ed's credibility, um, with Bill and Steve, that that project really would is E3 happen. today. You know, yeah, E3 is today, tomorrow, and uh, he, you know, Tuesday. Of course, found there was also some E3 stuff, stuff yesterday too. Brought that into the market, but I didn't stream E3 that, yesterday. You know, that clear is beating Last of Us too. Success factor for us. And the other guy I would credit um, Game of the Year, um, FYI, I think deserves a lot of credit is Jay Allard. Um, and uh, while I wasn't as privy to everything that Jay did, I think, you know, when he was running the platform team, you know, he had the vision um, to, uh, you know, drive Xbox Live. Uh, I believe he Watching this makes me feel like I'm at work. Telephone jack. <laughs> it does make you feel like that a little bit, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I kind of get you. I remember Robbie really? making that decision. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 you know, and then Robbie, of course, deserves kudos because, you know, just getting the project off the ground uh, in the first place is what I remember the most. Everything else that happened after that, you know, we were committed to it. So we All right, I'm a getting a little bored of this. I will admit. Obviously, we <sighs> learned a lot as we went along the way, but uh, just getting it done, uh, these two guys deserve a ton of credit. Well, God, I that mean. Hurt. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this project to be successful needed so many different uh, expertise, <laughs> you know, and so, yeah, I came with kind of a, a product, you know, making something. Uh, I can't do Dead by Daylight because kind of Dead passion. by Daylight won't let you play windowed. Um, but I had never run a business before and, and uh, you know, without Shane, there's no way that we would have grown the game business, uh, you know, from the mid nineties, like we did. I mean, so many different things had to come together in a short amount of time to make uh -huh. this happen. So it was really a, a team effort. You know, Dean, there, there's a, I, w I was talking with Phil Spencer in email the other day and we, he said sometimes he get asked who was the, the father of Xbox. And the answer you just heard is the right answer. There was just a really interesting collection of people as a team. And they weren't actually particularly alike. Figuring out how we worked to the thing I said before as a team 
was was super important and everybody got to play key roles at key times. I know it sounds sort of cliche, but it, it's it's actually how it played out. And Shane and Ed uh, absolutely played those key roles as they described. So now now we've pissed off everybody whose name we haven't mentioned, right? <laughs> I have to. But one one person that comes to mind, I'm, I'm going to use the size of this real quick. This answer, but um, the one person who comes to mind is having the vision for this and to actually get it off the ground. Uh, I have this admiration now for Bill Gates, uh, being the boy Bill Gates. Recently single, by the way. You know, who else has that kind of will these days? I mean, uh, look at you know some of the other companies. Like, I, I might yeah. flip it around a little and say that you know, once the company gets big enough. Um, it really needs to go after big projects. And that was actually a problem at Microsoft at that time was that they couldn't find projects big enough to matter relative to the office business and the Windows business. And so this was a project that was big enough to matter. I, I, Robbie could probably talk to this better than I could, but. No, you, you're, you're, you're spot on, Ed. And I, I actually think both Bill and Steve, look, there were other people in the first two or three years of Xbox, senior leaders inside the company who wanted to kill it. <laughs> uh, that's not that's not new news, right? We were losing this a lot is true of money. On every project at Microsoft, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, there, there were there, we were losing a lot of money. Wall Street wasn't happy about it. People thought Microsoft was crazy being hardware. Um, but Bill and Steve, once they got on board at the beginning, uh, were incredibly steadfast about it. Um, and to Ed's point, I think it was the fact that it was so big. It was a chance to break through. I'd also add, and I think it's different today when you look at the company of you know, Microsoft in mm -hmm. 2021 versus 2000, but it's important to remember back then, uh, you know, I've always thought that Microsoft was a platform company, particularly then, and we, you know, we fought very hard to establish platforms like Windows and like Office, and we looked at the Xbox uh, business opportunity as another one of those platform wars, you know, that Sony, if you remember, had incredible success uh, with the PlayStation 2. Um, and we, I think a large part of the company strategy was we just could not cede the home territory to Sony unfettered without competing in that space. And that's why another reason why I believe, you know, Bill, Steve and the company we're willing right. to make that. Um, there we go. How's this? Because uh, we just needed to go compete with Sony. Good. I think you're. This is gonna take me forever to set up for no real value. <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> so, did, did Ed? Uh, did you? Did you see particular we'll play. challenges that were like? Yeah, he's totally in the meantime, I guess. To you, or like uh, challenges that maybe were just under underestimated. You said turn on God mode. It's not real God mode. Yeah, I mean, I think we were all super naive, which is. Uh, yeah. Kind of a good thing, I think, when you're going into a project. If you knew all the troubles you were going to have, how difficult it would be, you probably would never do anything. But uh, yeah, I think the you know the biggest thing was that. Is it we, easier to play with controller? Made a a console game, right? And I last we played in April. And a whole lineup of console games in less than two years. I mean, it was it was super super ambitious, and uh, you know, fortunately, we had a, a near infinite amount of resources. So you'd think that that would make it possible to do the impossible but it, it just made it somewhat possible i guess <laughs> what are the controls with the controller actually uh, you know we made a bunch of bets and uh you know one in particular really came through with with halo um uh you know the hardware barely came together in time as i remember it and yeah, <laughs> there were there were there, you know there were all i remember there was a lot of like technical difficulties behind had to come together um, I think. The exactly. Xbox's release. Uh, as is tradition, I opened up Hades and six people left. <laughs> there were challenges Hades is always a burn on the viewership. A supply chain. That's all right, though. A, a real retail sales force. We didn't have an operations team. We Our best hardware at that point was a Microsoft mouse. We had some PC games, but no console games. Xbox Live didn't exist. Broadband was just getting started. I mean, I, other than that, though, it was smooth sailing. Other than all of the massive difficulties we had. I think was particularly impressive and really changed the industry in a huge way is the bet on Halo wasn't just the bet on Halo, a game from a company called Bungie. It was a category bet, too. First-person shooters were, like, unheard of in the console space. I mean, there had been, like, one that had been successful at that point. And now you look at the console space and it's completely... How long are they going to talk until the Square Enix console, uh, the Square Enix conference? transformative change.
and kudos to Ed Shane and the Good luck, the Mr. Money. Streamer. What good luck on Hades not burning away all my viewership? I didn't understand that when we bought Bungie. Uh, I had no idea that we were not only betting on a content company, but betting on the ability to, to create an entire new category on a console. That was, to me, just uh, uh, new territory. I think most people doubted uh, whether or not yeah. Halo could be successful on Xbox precisely right. because of that, because they hadn't been done. And, and then Halo's impact also, like you say, can't just be measured in terms of I forgot how to play this game. It's Fuck. success as a game franchise, but Halo in terms been of like two months since I played on Xbox Live when Xbox Live launched. The Square Enix conference, conference is only going to be like is less than an hour, really. And so when when we when we joke that content drive, you know, is do I dash hey, okay. platforms? It, it's not really a joke. It, it had an incredible effect on Xbox and Xbox Live. Now, Robbie, was, was there a pivotal moment where you thought, hey, this might actually work out? So, yeah. Probably when yeah, Halo sold an insane a amount of copies, they were like, yeah, hey, we can probably ride this franchise for our entire com uh, console life. Uh, you know, some game did well, or we sold a bunch of units or something like that. But it was the E3... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna get the year wrong, but I think it's 2003, might have been 2004. Uh, Electronic Arts agreed to join Xbox Live. Everybody forgets that at the beginning, Electronic Arts wasn't on Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. And so I'm standing on stage what does that even mean? Um, with Don Matrick and all these sports athletes from EA Sports, and then Muhammad Ali comes These sports stage. athletes. And I know that's My favorite kind of athletes are the sports. But somehow people walked away from that, in my mind, saying, okay, these guys are here to stay. And that made a lot of things a lot easier. And I know it wasn't the fact that Muhammad Ali was on stage, but it's just such an iconic moment for me uh, that's kind of uh, burned into my memory. And I, I just... I, I Wait, does God Mode that. stack? Like, after I turn God Mode, does it count all the deaths I've had previously into God Mode? Because if so, I will be invincible, actually, during this round. You know, the, it, it's not the... It's not the... Um, best moment in our history but when xbox 360 had its technical issues uh, right. after its launch Oof, the red know, ring of death baby wow we're really touching on all of the uh time and then xbox and touchstones launched. during this uh, stream um, huh? and it and the xbox 360 survived and in fact thrived after that i mean that's the real tylenol moment for those for those of us old enough to remember something like that where a brand can survive a hit like that and and actually really come back that's the title card so funny forget that halo invincible was a really good show man i can't wait for more 2007 so two years after the launch of the xbox 360 and, and these so guys are old i can't believe they he made a tylenol reference do yeah. any of you in chat i think once we um, survive that i think uh, certainly I remember think like the tylenol incident very confident in our ability to compete because that happened when i was a kid so i imagine a lot of you in chat probably don't know what the fuck he just mentioned Thank you for pointing out I had nothing to do with the red ring. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that gets brought up and I have to explain the history. So, uh, you know, for me, honestly, it, it would be, it would be. God, uh, what a colossal uh, failure. I can't believe you could let a console release like that. You know, up to that point, you know, E3 that before. Yeah, <laughs> I remember when uh, pretty bad. they uh, fucked up of Halo the Xbox One, man. That was brutal. Uh, we, we, you know, it wasn't clear that the hardware was going to make it. <laughs> I mean, right. it was a lot of things, and and to see everything come together, to be standing there in Times Square with Bill Gates, you know, and uh, watch him give away the first uh, the the first Xbox, and uh, it just it just he, didn't he give away the first day. Xbox everything to the Rock that night, and, and it really felt like um, this was the start. Hey, of Wintaro. Uh, yeah, it like, was okay. You missed a couple Robbie, decent things. Robbie, yeah, you, We're playing Hades like in between uh, conferences yeah. right now. Yeah, uh, very different today uh, versus the early days of the Xbox. And, and yeah, I think it's actually changed quite a bit. You know, Microsoft is using more death to find still more encounter damage to that encounter. Years. That seems bad. And yet, gaming is more important there now than it was when we were there. I think, and so that's an interesting. I think that's an interesting dynamic. I think uh, Satya looks at Phil in the gaming business as people are. What's the Tylenol incident? The technology. Um, and, and they are driving new trends and new ideas. And maybe we're thinking of different things than Daniel. So, uh, you know, the Tylenol incident basically is just, uh, maybe he'll there was a weird like reaction to Tylenol where if you had or like took Tylenol and you were, um, 
and uh, you kind know, of like you know, uh, worked with with Shane and Ed and learned a lot. Like a teenager or a young child, a uh, taking Tylenol would, would just uh, kill you. For the uh, reunion, everybody, and uh, we we'll have to do this again in either ten or twenty years. But I think what you might be referring to, Daniel, was like where sometimes some bottles of Tylenol were replaced with some of the pills were replaced with like cyanide pills. In stores. So even though we are still this Is that what you're talking about? Look at you your this, papers here. I'm oh, a official. professional. We still haven't okay. talked about Hades coming to Game Pass. Oh, we still so haven't good. talked about uh, Stalker 2. Oh. No, I don't hear anybody talk about Shredders. I didn't, they, there's just too much information. So the much. Ascent being shown again. which looks That's what you were thinking of? I can't wait. Yeah, so oh, there, Tylenol had the one big brand so incident much. where they had just like a chemical imbalance talking. where they just like they fucking killed people when they consumed them. But yeah, there was an incident where this guy... Yeah, yeah, um, like, he was a murderer, he, he would just, he was a serial killer anyway, and his method was just like no rhyme or reason, he would go into stores, and like drugstores and pharmacies, and like open Tylenol bottles and put, um, uh, he'd put cyanide pills in Tylenol pill bottles, so people would just randomly die. We know you're a fan! That samurai Spartan suit? Oh. We of course heard you screaming. We of course saw you talking he cried on the camera. A little bit. Yeah. We have the reactions. They have the reactions ready. Cue it up. See. <laughs> These are not <laughs> yeah, This is me. legitimately happening. This and is yeah, that happening. incident, yeah, Daniel, is why they put like those tinfoil uh, like things over the top of. Um, <laughs> battlefield. Battlefield. Uh, battlefield. I'm so excited for Battlefield. Yeah. Look at you. Over you bottles you of stuff. I don't. I can't believe that guy randomly brought that up. But yes. There was so much. There yeah. was so, so much, much to talk. Really. Look at you and Michael here. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That was hype too. Got a lot of great moments. And again, this is how you know it was a great E3 press. Yeah, man. That's the reactions you want, right? Especially not having it live in my person, face. not hearing an audience, right? But. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's Halo. My yeah, arm got a cameo. Halo. I was punching you. Yeah, there you go. That's what it's all about. That's what it's yeah. all about. Have I been saying? I mean, I played a lot of this game. I tried to beat it for a while. When uh, was it? You uh, Eden? I forget the name of it. When You Eden Chronicles? Chronicles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many hours of this game have I played? At the top of his lungs. He clearly. He kept yelling about how he's a. Uh, uh, he. Uh, 12 like hours. Yeah. He just kept talking <laughs> oh, well. about Kickstarter. He felt like he's finally getting his money's worth. You know, he was a happy guy. He was a happy guy. We were and talking on, to... Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, on, on top of all the yeah. games and stuff we showed, then they snuck it into the very end, which pissed me off, but I'm glad they did it. The Xbox mini fridge. Yes! Ah, the Xbox mini fridge! I was behind this on Twitter. I'm one of the reasons we got it enough likes, or we got, they won the Twitter competition. Yep. Thanks to me retweeting it, and now we are all going to be able to okay, give them well, our money. Okay, well, are you taking credit for it? I it put was... the Xbox mini fridge on the map, and you okay. need to know it. As a proud mm. Owner of an Xbox mini fridge. Oh, how much did oh, you pay wow. for it? How much did you pay for it? Actually, it was sent to me by I want the Xbox brain. mini fridge. Put the, sword down. Put the sword down. You're making me a little scared. Now, I don't know if I should have given that to you. Or but it was really, it, it's an awesome fridge. So uh, you're gonna, you guys are going to love it. Little but I already have there. it. I'm the Athena Dash? Yeah, Athena yeah, oh, Dash really good. I'm famous because my friend The Rock sent it to me. What's up, DJ? How are you, you aware? Buddy? Because of our video yesterday, Ryan Reynolds followed me on Twitter today. So. <gasps> wow. Okay, really? can we all stop flexing? Cut him off. Cut him off. Hey was guys, um, okay. nobody yeah, follows me. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, Jack, you want Do you to think he would have followed you after that comment, though? Pr I probably would have. Yeah, not, no, fair. I don't think it would You want to talk about Stalker 2, another game we haven't actually talked about? I mean, about. <laughs> honestly, I was just, I thought it was eerie. It was this creepy sure. post-apocalyptic yeah, yeah. world. Um, when the guy was dancing alone to that creepy music box, I yeah. was like, music, I was like, I'm here for this. Like, I yeah. just want to see more. Um, so that was definitely at the top of my list, I think. You have to buy a branded mini fridge, fridge for 700 bucks instead of, like, two? Yeah, but it's cool. Yeah. Also, uh, LOL, still, still continuing to lo use, lose Xbox viewers. This is why I can't stream Hades. Ladies and gentlemen, Nine minutes. Over. Come on, come on. All right, I'm going. Seconds. We're going. Wait, but this is the wrong brand. Wrong brand. No, this is my moment. Oh, this sorry. is me as an Avengers fan. Go Greg, there's no lighting there. There's. Don't worry about we'll it, everybody. It's getting there. Yay. We're doing it. It's about time. Uh, when we return, ladies and gentlemen, Square Enix takes the spotlight. Stick around. All right, viewers, you can come back. The conference is going to start in 10 minutes. Please, I'll be done playing Hades. We actually managed to hold on to like 30 viewers during the like in-between conference talk. And then I started playing Hades and now we're down to sub-20. <laughs> uh... What can you do? I wanted to do something in between though. I was getting kind of bored of just uh... 
listening to the guys talk. As a part of Play for All, GameSpot will be bringing you... How goes the Hades? Interviews, well, you know. Announcements, interviews with developers, the biggest press conferences, and lots more. Play for All is our yearly online event that combines the excitement and announcements of E3 with charity... No, I can blame Hades, you know, the last couple times I streamed it, it didn't do well. raise money for able gamers. So join us in June for E3 and Play for All on GameSpot.com, YouTube.com slash GameSpot, Twitch.tv slash GameSpot, and as a part of E3's official broadcast. See you then. We. I do feel like this is a really solid run, though. I'm doing pretty well, if I do say so myself. Especially for having not uh, played this game since April. Hey, it's the same advertisement. Hey Poseidon. Starting, what is this? I didn't dodge in an effort to uh, just try and kill that thing faster, so I didn't dodge so I could just keep attacking. I wanted to kill this a little bit faster. You can play Hades in the franchise is my favorite franchise of all time. Kingdom Hearts sucks. Has a very special place in my heart. Lark why? Is the reason why I started to become really adventurous in my own. Kingdom life. Hearts sucks. Tomb Raider, I think became a symbol of who I wanted to be. Tomb Raider is very important to me, and not just because I worked on it. Dad got it first, and I remember him being really excited at the T-Rex in Tomb Raider and completely spoiling it for me. Uh, I like That's just upgrading so my here. regular attack, because I use my regular attack the most. Kingdom Hearts 3 was like the biggest hype I have ever experienced. I, I remember taking time off work, locked myself in a room, and I stayed in that room for as long as I could. Final Fantasy 14 is a game that I recently dipped my toes into. I didn't know anything about Final Fantasy, but I tried it and I think I put a thousand hours into it. And I want to start the Meg romance. I was playing Tomb Raider and every time I'd like get stuck. I I've already like, fought all of Meg's like, sisters. This is actually the first time I fought Meg in a while. The last couple times I streamed um, were all I fought the other sisters. Such a perfect way. It was amazing. The remake in general. Kingdom Hearts is too confusing. Stunning. No, the remake sucks as well. These people all have the wrong opinions. Welcome back to E3 Live from Los Angeles. Don't forget E3 Expo.com slash shop. Not a good start. Not a good start. Limited edition shirts, hats, and jackets. You've seen me modeling throughout the presentation. Dead ends. Damn it. next, of course, is Square Enix Presents. Guys, what are we looking forward to most, and why is it Marvel's Avengers? Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, where to even start? What? Like, there's so many Babylon's different. What the fall, what? baby? What? Babylon's Fall, baby. What are you hey, doing hey, here, Michael? All y'all stop the show. Babylon's Fall is going to be the most fire thing Square Enix to show you. It's going to be game of the show. Check Jeez. it. Babylon's Fall, baby. I'm, I'm real sloppy <laughs> on this fight. I have never run into the media. Okay, suite that just and now, You know what I mean? Never done that. But Babylon's Fall is being shown. I can't believe this, man. <laughs> a lot of people are stoked about it. Michael, uh, Michael Hyam from GameSpot being one of them. All right, I'm back in it now. Fucked up a couple times, but now we're down there. It's like Michael's coming in here really hot. Um, okay, <laughs> that's all he knows how to do. And I stepped on that. <laughs> Jesus. Michael, you're asleep or that hyped oh, about weird video games? My no? goodness. <laughs> um, we were talking about Marvel's Avengers, right? A little we're bit there. About yeah, I was yeah, like, okay. Yeah, in general. Yeah, of course. Babylon's Fall. I'm just like anything goes. Anything goes. I told you we're insane. 
I, you know what? I'm starting to understand that at a different level. Um, so yes, War in Wakanda. Yep, I'm yep, yep, yep. totally am for that. Um, we saw a little bit of an art reveal yesterday. Sure, yeah, new look at Black Panther, right? Yes. So far, all we've had is yeah. a teaser trailer at the last time they had done a, one of the Square Enix Presents or whatever, so that's nice to see. Obviously, as I've talked to death, so we won't go anywhere. Not my best run. Yeah. Not my best content. run. I need to see what the end level stuff is. It, they, they're calling this an expansion, right? It's not like the episodes we've gotten for uh, Kate and Clint, so what does that mean? How big is this going to get? But yeah. then, of course, uh, another one that speaks directly to me and I want is uh, Life is Strange True uh, Colors. Hopefully I can give uh, Meg another honey when I go back to when I die. I've been trying to romance Meg in this game. It's very close to home for me. It's obviously about a woman dealing with the loss of her brother. And um, what I absolutely love about that series is that they are bold and they're yeah. like, okay, we're going to confront trauma. We're going yeah, to confront yeah, yeah, yeah. self-work. And yeah. then they somehow turn it into this beautiful video game that just absolutely hits you to the core and the feels. So um, I am definitely psyched to see more about Life is Strange. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Yeah, that's probably yeah, fairly so true. I mean, we got... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super here for it. Yeah. Idols Montreal. Look yeah, forward to Marvel's Adventures. I recommend paying for a Dominatrix. Uh, I've been a big uh, you fan know me of so well. We talked about it yeah. at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Uh, I, I've loved Deus Ex for, for years and years and years. And while uh, I don't think we're going to get that, which isn't a bad thing, I feel like so long as more people are exposed to how great of a studio Eidos Montreal right. is, uh, to me, is the winner. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. Get ready for uh, what are you the conference. Excited for? Take a break from me. E3 2021 oh. social medias shouted out there. Tell us what the, the E3 conference or the Square Enix conference is about to begin. Two minutes to go. That's the exciting part right here. Yeah. Uh, I, do you think there? Two minutes is going to be Xbox Hangover. We, oh, we, oh, what does yeah. Xbox Hangover mean? Yeah. I'm gonna go put my phone on the charter so it doesn't die. Showing, I shall be right back. Yeah. Microsoft just came out and was like, "Hey, I will be back in time for the stream." We have that we should, think you should be stoked for. Yeah, there could be. That's a very common thing. It happens at a lot of different conventions, right? There's always this hype of like, "This is what's going on," but we're looking forward to this. Um, but yeah, I, I do think though that Square Enix has a great opportunity here to just show some some high quality games as they usually do. Yep. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's gonna be a great. Um, you know, palate cleanser, if you will, from sure. what we got, from like the overload that we got of the Xbox presser. And that's the thing, you know, one of the things I was complimenting Xbox uh, about when we were off uh, camera is the fact that there were so many games uh, that that's great because you can go in there and then find the five that speak to you. Yeah. So when you come 100%. in with a uh, smaller roster like Square is, it really is, do you like Marvel? <laughs> yeah. uh, do you like, the, well, if you don't like these things, then it maybe we're not for you that time around. I mean, you know, it could be a marketing strategy. They might be like, hey, this is all we're doing, and yeah. we might see more. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I I'm I'm definitely in the camp where I like being kind of like led That's as true. like oh, what's sure. coming, what yeah, yeah. what are we going to see? So they have been a little bit tight lipped, but Chair knows the next Smash Bros. character. Coming, but we'll see. Who knows? Right? Anything's Who knows? possible. It's E3, baby. Yeah, E3, E3, baby. Who knows? People do lie to us at E3 quite That's right. right. And so if what? they have something oh, you're else talking out about there, there's one thing I've learned is that E3 is a place for deception. It's like, yeah. an, it's like an Among Us lobby before Among Us was even a thing. So that's, that's you know. That was a good okay. comparison. Thanks, there guys. Go. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, I got Guys, Among Us. Uh, here we go. Look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it was 16 seconds. Out. Okay, all right, ladies okay. and gentlemen. It's time now, break. Without further ado, here's Square Enix Presents. What's up, Toxic? Chat. Life is like an Among Us lobby. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Matt The chair knows that I'm Breath of the Wild host 2 host will not be at the Square Nintendo Direct. Presents. Today, we have a special E3 edition of the show for you, with new game announcements, updates, and exciting news from our studios across the globe. So let's kick off with the world premiere of a brand new game from IDOS Montreal. We hope you enjoy the show. That's cool, they've got Matt Mercer, uh announcing the presentation. That's pretty cool. I love Matt. I'm sure everybody does though. I am so proud of you. Do you know what a birthright is, Peter? Something that's a part of you. Like your name. Gardeners of the Galaxy? What? No, Rocket. So I let Groot fill out the paperwork. 
<laughs> so we got fine. We appear to be 6,963 units short. I know, we clearly need a plan. This is cool. Is this for Marvel's Avengers or is this its own game? You want monster? I'll show you monster. No, we just roll. Keep your pants on. Although it could be used as a distraction. It's so funny for the uh This is song copyright. This song is copyright, yeah. More, no killing teammates. That's who. It's literally in your contract. I made no such commitment. <laughs> in less than three cycles, all would be lost. The galaxy cannot be saved either way. We can do this together. Fucking uh, great. Well. This is a pretty cool start. I'll play the fuck out of this. What I was gonna say is, I thought it was funny. They oh, for like Star Lord, they always use his MCU movie aesthetic, but then for Gamora, they always use her comic appearance. I'll call you. I'll call you. October twenty sixth. That's the day after my birthday. For the past few years, we've had the privilege to work on our version of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and reimagine it into a single-player, story-driven, third-person action-adventure game. That's a single-player, story-driven game. Wow. What's really unique to our game is that you get to be Peter Quill. As Star-Lord, you're constantly in the middle of the action as you try to lead this band of misfits. But, but yeah, see, they always use really his movie appearance because that's not what Star Lord looked in the comic, looked like in the comics. The game from that's what he looks like in the MCU. But they don't use Gamora's movie look. They even did this in the uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance game too. They used his movie appearance. I read them, enjoyed them, loved them. I had the just used the same aesthetic for Marvel on some of their cosmic titles. I went back with the help of Bill Roseman, the editor and kind of cherry-picked characters from Marvel's past. The opportunity here was to build a team, but to make it all underdogs, so that the reader would think, oh my gosh, how is this team going to survive? And that became the Guardians of the Galaxy comic, which we loved working on. I remember the first time that the Marvel crew came to Montreal, we were showing them the design of the characters, how they would look, and they stayed silent. I don't know if it's a minute, but in my head, it was a minute. I was like, Oh my god, like they hate it. We realized how much that Marvel and Eidos Montreal share have in common and that we knew This is exciting. Alright, they're starting the Square Enix conference off hot. I'll buy this. I think he's fantastic and absolutely in the spirit of I'm also surprised this isn't co op. The gameplay experience unique to me is no matter in what phase of the game you are, whether this is the Guardians of the Galaxy single player uh, story game. Are constantly around you and you never feel alone while you're the leader. The this actually looks sick. This is definitely like so far, this is the coolest thing. And you will have to adapt to it. You are literally part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. The decisions you'll make will have lighthearted to hunting repercussions, and the game will react to what you do and say. Come on, no killing teammates! That's who! It's literally in your contract! I made no such commitment. You are playing as Star Lord and you're using. It sucks your that they didn't get the actual actors from the MCU. Star Lord. Because obviously we're all so attached to the actors from the movies, but it still looks pretty cool. And over with his jet boots. Of course, he has his elemental blasters that have different powers as well. And on top of all of this, he can use the unique abilities of his guardians. We're not pirates. We're legally incorporated heroes for hire. Gardeners of the galaxy? What? No! The story is about a group of misfits, the Guardians. In our world, they've been together for less than a year. They create something on a small scale that looks insignificant. 
And as they progress through the story, they discover that they created something really big that threatens the galaxy. There are a lot of very interesting villains in the Marvel franchise. And when you're starting to work on a story like this, you get to get your pick of which ones will make the best for this story. I like Hot that Demon gives Lady. Us the opportunity to bring in some that are well known, but some that are also not all that well known. I am a big fan of this lady. I don't know who she is, but I'm a simp. Capturing what it's like to be a misfit family. They're also bringing an amazing. Yeah, please describe them as misfits again. And characters that are gonna blow your mind. Interpreting it. I agree. Twelve hours. And exciting. It's not a matter of trying to replicate the comic or trying to replicate the. That is a very interesting statement. You're working in and surprise. Disney looked at Marvel's Avengers and seriously decided, yeah, give Square Enix another go. They delivered everything you would want in a Guardians game. All right, that looks really cool. Good start. Oh, there's going to be all kinds of copyright music when I play this game, huh? I mean, that's part of the uh, Guardian's aesthetic, I guess, though. Thirty-seven units? We appear to be 6,963 units short. We intend to keep our ship, Peter Quill. I know, I know. We clearly need a plan. What about selling Gamora's crap? What? Oh, come on. You've been hoarding them stupid knickknacks ever since you first joined us. I mean, don't tell me they ain't worth nothing. Quarantine zone was always a out on My us, well. figurines are not knickknacks. Huh, team's in trouble. And you can't be bothered to make no sacrifice. Of course, I will sacrifice system. your head. And take us to the majestic mountains yeah, of Kakarun. Guys. I think we should hear our group for once. I am the only problem with your plan is that Lady Hellbender only buys monsters, and you are not a monster. Groot, are you really offering to- No, no, he is not offering that, okay? It could work. So, Groot, I guess we could bust him out after. Absurd. Lady Hellbender seeks the monster within. The small, ugly one is clearly the correct choice. He's cruel, sadistic, and his soul is filthy and filled with rage. I vote we sell Groot. I honestly think Lady Hellbender will go for it. Yeah, well, I vote for not. I also vote for the creepy little beast. Two votes each. Peter? Well, Rocket's definitely scarier on the inside. He's unstable and vicious and totally oblivious to the needs of others. <clears throat> okay, we, uh, we get it. All right, let's do this. Let's go sell a monster. The only thing I don't like about his outfit is I don't like Star-Lord's, like, weird shoulder pads on his jacket. But I guess that's supposed to be a future aesthetic thing. weather. are flying the wrong way. Nah, he's not flying at all. Guys, relax. Just one minor adjustment. I ever mentioned how much I hate rain? Hellbender's castle isn't even that far. That is not a castle. It is an impregnable fortress. So how do we impregnate it? Ask Peter! <laughs> Let's just get closer. We'll figure it out on the way. There is nothing to figure out. As beast merchants... See, aren't the sleeves on his jacket like a weird design? Am I, ra am I crazy? I have a Star Lord jacket. <laughs> I can't believe this game's getting so much stuff. No, don't say that, Kyler. This is gonna be good. Thank you very much. 
You are welcome, Feeble One. We got this. Just don't fall and we'll be fine. Don't fall. We should have gone to Maku 4. I would be wary, Rodin. Uh, you know, when I survive freaking half world, I think I'm scared of some little. Black! It's not alone! Get ready! It's jello. They are amorphous vermin! Shoot first! Questions later! Alright, so you can't play as the other guardians, you can just use their abilities. That seems like it'll be kind of clunky. It feels like it'd be easier to press like a button and then switch to one of the other characters. Are they really not going to let you uh, play as the other characters? I am eager to experience Lady Hellbender's legendary menagerie. Should we ask them for directions? I'm thinking maybe they are directions. Oh, like a signpost or something. I'm not saying it's an arrow with the word fortress on it, but statues suggest civilization, and the only settlement I saw when we were topside was Lady Hellbender's fortress. Dead end. That's just great. It's a retractable bridge. They used them at the prison I was in. Too bad the controls are on the other side of the giant chasm. Wait, what do you not have time to dawdle in this jungle? I shall hurl the creature over the chasm so he may activate the bridge. I may activate a hole through your face! Put me down! He'll be fine, just curl up in a ball. What? Drax, throw him. No! Very well! Peter! It's okay. That's why I said you don't need to, you don't need the E3 stream up. Just watch mine, because we cut out the uh the cats. You sons of dogs! Scut bust an act! I am not the chat's toxic. Order the beast to do its job. Fuck it, come on, man! Ram it, fast face! Fix the bridge and we'll raise your cut by five percent. I want ten! Okay, deal. Thanks for the bridge, Rocket. If you even think of pulling that Wait, scud again. Hear that? Uh guys. More jello monsters. You. I don't like how romantic the tentacle monsters seemed together. <laughs> so I this is actually the combat of this actually feels very similar to uh or at least from just how I look. Or how it looks, uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake. Guys, huddle up! Already missing the jiggle jelly! They keep moving around! It is classified by play! Don't get too close to that map! We can't open! This guy barely feels it! Alright, gameplay's a little in. <laughs> so far, anyway, but this will be fun to play. That is definitely in my top ten fortresses. Peter? Aren't you forgetting something? Are you Oh, right. The cage. The point of even getting the Flark and was looking like we mean business. All right, Rocket. Time to put on your monster face. I only got one face, Quill. Are you sure about this, Peter? <laughs> Look at him. You better have one hell of a sales pitch. Maybe Gamora's right. We should try selling Groot instead. <laughs> what? Really? This is an affront to democracy. I just think that <laughs> we might need Rocket on the outside for this one. Are you Groot? Yeah. We noticed. You want to make that call, then you better not mess this up. 
You hang tight there, bud. When the time comes, I'll get you out of there. Rocket style, if I got it. Drat. Gamora, can you help me with no. this? What? Why? To guarantee your safety as a leader. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, don't look at me. I ain't pulling that thing. Remember, buddy, menacing, like me, only uh, bigger. I am good. Not bad, not bad. Easy, big guy. So, how long before someone else wants to pull this thing? You're 60 clicks from the fortress. I'd say closer to 75. I guess they're just not doing the Peter and Gamora romance. Aren't they supposed to be dating? If the Square Conference is supposed to only be 30 minutes, man, this has been most of it. Granted, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like this, but... <laughs> what the fuck was that? send a giant uh, fish monster after me. Ooh, yeah, you get... There's his comic outfit. Oh, there's a physical edition. Fuck, I want the PC version, but that... Uh, look at that... Uh, steel case. That looks really cool. For modern platforms. First up, relive the classic games in the Final Fantasy series, and then okay. get one more peek Most gameplay we've seen so far. Yeah, that's probably the best part of E3 so far, honestly. I mean, we're still early, but that looks really cool. Ow, fuck. Oh, is this more of that, like, weird generic anime game? Yeah, here it is. Beauty and Chronicles or whatever. Legend of Mana. All these games look the same. Up next... Earth's mightiest heroes continue their fight to defend the world in Marvel's Avengers. The team at Crystal Dynamics is excited to share the latest updates with you, including new mission types and a growing roster of heroes. Avengers, secure that super weapon at all costs. Cosmic energy is building up. Second counts, people. Keep it moving. My favorite superhero, Cosmic Cube. There is no end. 
Scientist Supreme. <laughs> is that what is that? A play off of uh Um Sorcerer Supreme? Exploration based rewards, wow. I applaud your efforts to connect with your roots, but as a man who has seen three Black Panthers fall, I must warn you of a few things. Many eyes of course it is. They spent a lot of money on this. I feel like every iteration of the Black Panther suit has become, like, worse since, uh, Civil War. This suit makes Black Panther look fat. <laughs> like he's got a beer belly or something. Just bring back the Civil War costume. Included at no additional cost. Now it's time to give mobile players a quick look at some of the games. I respect that. That like they're really trying to bring that game back, so they're not even going to charge for that. I expected them to try and uh, like rip every last penny they could get out of that game. Their reach is unlike anything we have seen before. Following Agent Forty Seven's disappearance, you were selected because of your remarkable skills. Execution must be perfect. We will strike from the shadows, and they will never know what hit them. That's kind of cool. Looks like um, one of that Tomb Raider move games. Fuck. Yeah, like a mobile game for Hitman. Near reincarnation. Near on mobile as well. It's the mobile game segment. I don't care about this stuff. I'm gonna try and turn my AC off because I don't know why I won't just shut off all this trailer plays. Today, the team at Platinum Games is giving you an exclusive look at the epic world of Babylon's Fall, featuring fluid combat, is it cool? weapons, and a unique art style. Yeah, the Final Fantasy uh, Battle Royale got announced a long time ago. Built over a thousand years, 
It was meant to be a tower of dreams. But for a thousand more, it was seen as a tower of ruin. Persevering through fire and ice and the coldest of winds, eventually the tower became a symbol of unrelenting ambition. That tower's name is Babylon. Tower of Babylon, eh? Does the savior of Neo Babylon stand among us? <clears throat> I didn't realize we were getting a Catherine sequel. I don't think this one's Mobile Fox. If I'm to die, then I'll die for hope. For what little hope there may be. This looks really bad. <laughs> Oh man. We're all prisoners of our subjective reality. Believe only what you see, and you like to end up seeing only what you believe. To the heaven above the tower of Thor. This looks so like shit. Yeah, I agree, Fox. I, th th it looks really bad. Now begins its tale of both hope and despair. I'm gonna guess that's by like platinum or something. Yeah. I just don't get the hype behind Platinum. They're an incredibly popular developer, and I really don't why. Like they make that Scarlet Nexus game when we played the we played the demo for that on stream that was boring. プレイヤーの背中についているビデオコフィーというのがかなり気合いているとなっています。それによって、え、遊び方とかカスタマイズの方向性っていうのも変わってきます。ハイファンタジー感というかその上品さというところがすごい意識してくれるというふうに言われました
Gonna try one more thing to turn my AC off. I can't believe this thing just won't shut what the fuck up. What do you up. remember about us as kids? I think about us as little pirates <laughs> running and jumping through Arcadia Bay. We are awesome! Is this a remaster? It does look the same. What's remastered? Whatever's going on between us is special. Step back before you regret it. Then I realized I had a choice and the power to change everything. Arcadia Bay is on the edge of disaster. Time to change time. Whatever happens, I'll always have your back. Always. Oh, seriously, Daniel? Hi, I'm Maya, also known as MXM2. I'm a musician and the singing voice of Alex Chen in the upcoming Life is Strange True Colors. I hope you enjoyed that first look at official gameplay. Is it super loud? Collection. As a longtime fan, Rest of chat, can I you confirm? You can see the love and care that Deck Nine have put into remastering both Life is Strange and Before the Storm. This collection features improved character animation. I guess when you have this kind of cell shaded art style, like it's hard to. It's super fucking loud. What the fuck? Back in March, we all God. the next major game in the series, Life is Strange: True Colors, a small town supernatural mystery. Alex Chen must uncover the truth behind her brother's death, using her psychic power of empathy to unravel the shocking secrets of Haven Springs. Today, we have a first look at Alex's unique power in action. Here's game director Zach Garris for more. Alex's psychic power of empathy is integral to the story of Life is Strange True Colors. It impacts every relationship she builds and every decision she makes. Never thought I'd have a freaky empath friend. For years, Alex has been now? unable to shut out the strong feelings of others. The fear, sadness, and anger of those around her. It is my AC. My AC just keeps turning on and it won't turn off. In the wake of Gabe's death, Alex realizes the only way she can find the truth is to embrace her power. I can't believe this is happening. And the only way to understand is Like, to I literally haven't flipped on the off switch and it still won't, will, like, turn itself on. It drives me nuts. You start, you can use Alex's power to focus on brightly colored auras to gain an insight into people's emotions. Gabe was too young. Just too young. These valuable insights deepen Alex's relationships with the folk of Haven Springs, as well as sparking new dialogue options and events. As here, from a scene very early on in the game. You're gonna yeah, I know, her. Dan. You're gonna lose her, and it's all your fault. It's Alex really irritating. I gotta call maintenance and just tell him, like, the th damn thing just won't turn off. And now he is terrified that Alex will reveal it before he can talk to Riley. She is the best thing that's ever happened to me. So please, help me out. Max telling you a whole lot of I bullshit. Listen. Thanks for telling me the truth, Alex. But are we still together? Are you serious? I need to get back to work. Sure, Alex. We'll uh, we'll get out of your way. When Alex encounters a particularly strong aura, she can reach out to actively connect with that person's emotions. This generates a nova, a supernatural flare that transforms the world around Alex into a reflection of that person's psyche. In this altered, emotionally charged state, Alex can experience fragments of thoughts and memories to get to the root of their issue. 
But not every emotional crisis can be easily dealt with. Some carry a dangerous, even life-threatening amount of power. He's dead! I wish I were too. Damn. No decision is easy, and the consequences will be felt across the game. This anger could kill her. What if I could just take it away? Using Alex's power is the only way you can uncover the truth behind her brother's death. What would that do to her? What would it do to me? What would it do and to me? Even if I can? Yeah, this is the new one. Should I? How far will you go in pursuit of that truth? The choice is yours. This is the new one. Daniel, Alex's it looks the exact same. Looks so awesome. I have no idea how I'll make some of these choices, but I can't wait to play it with you all when it comes out on September 10th. Is this Don't chick some streamer? Pre-order Life is Strange True Colors now. And if you choose the Ultimate Edition, you'll also receive the Life is Strange Remastered Collection. And that's it for today. Make sure to follow the Life is Strange social channels for more. That looks really bad. And now, man, I don't know. That just doesn't look good to me. Brand new title from Square Enix Japan. Maybe I'll give it a shot though, just to stream it. I don't. What else is coming out in September? I'm here to kill chaos. That's my mission. <laughs> Looks like chaos has been waiting for us. You gonna make us go in there and find you? Guess we'll just show ourselves in. Is this like a Devil May Cry knockoff? We know one thing. I want to kill chaos. Man, fuck Need chaos. Am I right? All the homies hate chaos. Dream. It's like a hunger, thirst. Move aside. You sure chaos is here? Yeah, they can only squash monsters for so long. I hate doing pest control. This is the shrine of chaos. He's here. Chaos. Take a shot every time someone says chaos in this trailer. The darkness is so thick I can taste it. This is it. No doubt. Die already! There was a knight who left on the same journey as you, but never returned. His name was Garland. You could Props to Makoto's voice actress getting so much more work since uh, Persona Chaos. 5. Chaos! Kill chaos. The prophecy's very own warriors of light. Really? He always wore such splendid armor with a helmet that was terrifying to behold. It's Nightmare it's from Soul Calibur. No. I become chaos. Oh, it's a Final Fantasy game. This is a bold new vision for Final Fantasy. What was that? Final Fantasy 27 or something? Amazing Square Enix titles you can play now, as well as those to come. Where's the control at? Chaos control. Bad news, but just hit me with it. I'm gonna drop plate number seven. They're gonna do what? Wow, I can't believe people are still actually in, into that Final Fantasy VII remaster. Oh, so they're giving Final Fantasy I the uh, Final Fantasy VII treatment? It's 
All of these games look the exact same. No, no, of course I will. I'll call you, I'll call you. Thank you for joining us. You're not getting Final Fantasy 16, you're getting Final Fantasy 1 Remaster. I'm Matt Mercer. See you next time. Welcome back, everybody. The Square Enix presentation is a wrap. You taking notes? They take it down the right. I don't blame you. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. What are you doing on this thing, Jackie? Um, you know what? It was very tough to follow up the Xbox presentation, yeah. but I actually found this very exciting. Um, they dived really deep on a lot yeah. of games. Yeah, the... a, a lot of things they were doing, which I appreciate yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. In particular, Guardians of the Galaxy. You see, so, gaming yeah. shows at two thirty. Sorry, I almost hit you. No, you hit your pants. I did. So I got a little mark yourself. on okay. my finger. Uh, that's on every side. Anyway, that. okay, yeah, I did. It was. It was my fault. I have a little pen mark. Now. You were hoping uh, to see anyways, 20? Of what the was Galaxy. that? Um, I loved it. I really <laughs> I'll be too. honest. Yeah. No, now, the Guardians of the Galaxy thing, thing has been the coolest thing uh, shown so far. To it, of course, having Guardians, the music, and then, for me personally, the choices. Yeah. Where it's, and then they're saying it's single player, and then it's this year. Like, they were hitting on all the things I would want from a Marvel game right away. And that is, let's get us in there, let's have a story, let's see what the permutations can be. Yeah, I, I thought it was funny that, you know, the hardest thing in video games a lot of times is trying to nail humor. A hundred percent agree with you there, and yeah. With the Guardians already having stu such an established reputation now, thanks to James Gunn, and his amazing films. I like, know, right? To step in and, like, yeah, you know, Tim got to see a preview. He was talking a bit on our stream about it of, like, this is going to be 80s music. The world ends with you? What's that? that we saw oh, yeah. Bonnie Gun. Tyler off the top. Totally. I need a hero. And then even Sorry. when we were going through, we were all talking about how yeah. it is reminiscent, reminiscent of Final Fantasy VII, right, with the, the yeah. stagger system. And I'm talking about Remake, of course. Yeah. The stagger system we were seeing there. Uh, obviously, the we, uh, Andy called it out that it was a lot like Ratchet and Clank right now that he's playing because oh, you're yeah. calling up and going into the, me the menu wheels that are weapons. But Yeah, see, that's what I hated about this. The, my uh, do this action. my yeah, really concern about this Guardians game yeah, is that yeah, I hated honestly, the combat system in Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm worried that it's going to be super like, invasive like, into this. Deus Ex there, you know, it was like, pick this or pick this. Yeah, 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 right. Sell Rocket or sell Groot, you yeah. know what I mean? And I, we were like, oh my god, we love that. Um, I also really enjoyed watching how you could summon your teammates. Totally. Michael was comparing it to, like, spells and abilities, essentially. Yep. Yeah, so I, would, I was there for it. Um, like you said, we're getting I was not there for it. online right now. When Marvel's Avengers first dropped, everybody was like, they don't look like them. They don't look like, you know, what we saw in the movies. Yeah. And I understand that, but I'm sorry, Gamora's look, I'm cosplaying that, man. Yeah, yeah, Gamora I am looks cosplaying great, that. Man. Yeah, so I don't know, definitely getting a mixed reaction, but um, I love the music. I'm I cosplaying that, bro. The funny beats hit. Yeah. And I think that that, with anything that has to do with I'm Marvel's cosplaying Galaxy, that. And again, very tough to follow up the movies. I was a little nervous. I, I was like, is the humor going to be good here? And um, I thought all the dialogue really delivered, to be honest. So, 100%, yeah. yeah. Right. The interesting thing will be to see if decisions like that, where you tell Drax not to throw rac uh, Rocket Raccoon, um, will it actually have a difference in gameplay? Like, will you actually have to go down a different path or something? Because I thought at first, I'm like, man... Peter Quill's hair is kind of tall in this, right? And he's got a, he's got a much blockier build. <laughs> he's got build. some Greg Miller hair vibes I going wish, on. I wish, I wish my hair could get that tall. <laughs> Actually, or it was, or like he just gonna ignore whatever <laughs> Peter says. That's our outfit. That's right. Love you. Uh, but yeah, for the game, I thought their uh, Rocket voice actor was real good, right? Because yeah. again, these are already so iconic. I thought their Drax was good in terms of not being Dave Bautista, but being in that. Yeah. First of yeah. all, did you hear our producer there saying, "Pull your hair back, pull your hair back," and they were like, "We were talking to Greg." <laughs> they didn't. They didn't say it in my ear. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh, okay. Is it supposed to be me?" All right, or ladies Greg. and gentlemen, then it's a hair anyway. emergency. It's a hair <laughs> emergency. We will toss to a package. But wait, there's more, ladies and gentlemen. I had the pleasure of chatting with some of the big brains from Marvel Games and IDOS Montreal about the new Guardians of the Galaxy game. Don't worry, uh, Great Abyss. Hair. So they're going to show some or talk about the Guardians game a little bit more. Mary, Jean, Francois, and Tim. Let's talk Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. How did your collaboration with Marvel come together? Uh, the collaboration. Why with did he blur uh, half of his uh, background there? Why didn't he just? We, we, we 
get for the first time to see that. Uh, When's the next show? The next show is at 2.30 p.m. Pacific really time. About our first, so uh, that would be 2.30 p.m. We exactly Pacific time to, where to go with, with the game. And uh, Marvel games. Chicago really time. So that to, is to really embrace our creativity and give an uh, hour and a half uh, from now on, 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 on this universe and, and explore different ideas. And uh, it was also our wish as well, because as creators, you, you really want to, hmm. to look at the source material and, and so just keep and going it, uh, somewhere else. And, 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 and well, technically, in an hour, there's going to be more content so, that we'll watch. Uh, I can watch this uh, back for blood thing like too on the stream. With that. So it was really, really exciting. Yes, you might so just now watch this future games show. What is the future games show? And, and future games show came, came about and in, in, in what I feel like in a, a, as a really kind of natural fit, right? I think, I think we, we're always striving to partner with the best developers in the world uh, and, and, you know, and pair them with the right franchise, right? Something that they care about. We, uh, we at Marvel here have always been a, a huge fan of Eidos and what they've done with the Deus Ex franchise uh, and their passion for Feature game shows, shows on gameplay kits, really developer so walkthroughs, you know, and uh, world premieres. Damn it! It'll have playable Steam demos right after the event, so it looks like there is actually a whole bunch of stuff it, happening. It just, you know, it, it just felt like a natural fit. Okay, so tell us more about your original take on Guardians of the Galaxy. Absolutely. Uh, when we start a project, the, the, the first thing that we... We do See you later, BCL. We get to the source material. And All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, like apparently we'll have Sega. The PC game like show will definitely have Sega, of, I think. Of comics at Marvel and everything, and a lot of like more underground characters, more prominent characters, and whatnot. So uh, the first what is, few steps. When is 4 really p.m. Pacific time? 4 p.m. Pacific time to. And, and uh, exchanging among us with Mary. Chicago. And other of the, uh, the oh, Jesus. That is like my normal stream and time. We started to. I would have to be literally streaming all day for that one. We'll see how I'm feeling by the time we get there. With Marvel. And Marvel also, they were feeding us with ideas too, like, hey, that could be interesting or that. So it was really in that mindset that we were looking at like the source material and see what we could take of it, but not take it uh, one for one. Uh, distilling all those sort of uh, uh, key features down allowed us to understand what these characters are about. And, and then... Uh, like so this, in your longest streams. I don't know if we'll watch the, the future games one. That'll be like an all day thing. Of course, the films. But yeah, see you in a bit, BCL. Sort of bend and I'm hoping Guardians of the Galaxy is good. That, you know, fans may, may have not seen before. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't look great to me they either. May already know. So yeah, uh, I mean, outside of that, I think we're, we're we also have a lot of fun with playing with you know well-known characters and factions. Oh wait, like no. I hope I hope Guardians of the Galaxy is good. But, but the, also, what you're saying, great. You know, the uh, Final Fantasy. Thing didn't look great. Newer or or lesser known, right? Like Lady Hellbender or the Blood Brothers or even Cosmo the Dog, right? Like just diving into this untapped cosmic corner of the Marvel universe. And I think, you know, the hope is obviously, you know, the, the fans will enjoy what we what we put together for them, right? So what was your main source of inspiration when working on Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy? Obviously, we're familiar with uh, the the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And we went back and rewatched them. We watched some of the animated television series, and we. Did I respect that this lady is actually a nerd. Comic books. Working on Guardians and of the Galaxy. That, we really got That's really cool that she's actually like a fan Guardians of the stuff she's working on. And what was fascinating for me is that in every incarnation, whether it be. It really annoys me when <laughs> sometimes when people are like in charge of these like game studios and stuff, and they're like, "Yeah, I don't like what I'm working on." And yet the interpretation. Like she's got all these Guardians and X-Men comic really books and stuff. And uh, like she, you can tell that she's actually passionate about it. And when people are actually passionate about the shit they're working on when, they, when it comes to games, it turns out good. So I, I have faith about it. But then you've got people like that Bonnie Ross, who I said earlier I fucking hate. She like openly admitted like when she took over 343 Industries and Halo, she was like, yeah, I don't like Halo. Um, we're going to try our best to make Halo not Halo anymore. And I was like, Star Lord. Why did you guys pick that narrative pathway? And then, like, I guess on top of that, like, how does Star Lord interact with the other Guardians? Becoming Star Lord became a natural uh, choice, especially that he considers himself as the self-proclaimed leader of the team. And uh, in this uh, third-person action adventure, like we just said, we control Peter. 
but we constantly interact with the guardians as we move forward, like whether it's an inventor as we explore, or we can use their super abilities when, when uh, we're facing puzzles or in combat and, and, and things like that. So ultimately, the vision was to really put you in the shoes of one of the guardians. Yeah, let's and, throw and some Genshin up while we uh, wait for the we'll next thing, I think. You have your button for we'll still listen to this in the background. I'll still be we'll streaming until uh, the PC back. game so show, but know, let's... Uh, we're not we get some Genshin going in the like meantime. We constantly stay alive. So the, the narrative or the, the, the liveliness of the, the Guardians remains We'll play alive. some Genshin. Chat, we'll just, we can just keep talking. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know also what are some uh, E3 leaks that I haven't heard of yet. ...characters in the Marvel lore. Uh, sometimes you have the, uh, the opportunity to try to convince uh, some of those uh, those entities to side with you or not and since Peter is the, the smooth talker he can use his like social skills for that but the guardians are always there and they can chip in the conversation or you can ask them uh, them to 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 get involved and hope to get better results so all that to say that uh, for us like playing a star uh, how am I going to set this up so you can see it on the screen and, and feeling to be part of this family was at the heart of what we were trying to achieve, mm. no matter in what actually didn't uh, consider that part aspect yet. of the game you are, you, you are at any given time. What is the overarching story, and who are the guardians? Chat here, so I can the still see it. The story takes place in space, obviously. Twelve years after a massive war has swept through the galaxy, destroying civilizations and planets upending lives and and many many people are still trying to recover from from the losses that they suffered at that time uh, uh also um, actually i guess Diz, uh you, you were watching that kosh uh and i know mary looks so excited <laughs> laura that's what i was saying is like i'm starting to get it's the more she talks the more faith i'm starting to have in this guardians game because she seems super passionate about it and uh, that's, a, I feel like, a good sign for the game, is she, like, seems hype as fuck about it, and I respect that. ...and sell themselves as heroes for hire. So Welcome back, Laura. Been together for not very yeah, she's long so long hype about it, she's very clearly, like, a Marvel fan, Just long and enough to kind of I think this is the kind of person you need for these kind of projects, which is really cool. ...gelled as a team. And on their current mission, um... Their kind of carefree approach to exploration as they're out trying to capture this um, very elusive monster, it, it culminates in this bet that goes spectacularly sideways. And the next thing they know, they've kind of inadvertently set off a series of catastrophic events that are going to start really upending the rest of the galaxy. Um, and the more they start realizing it and, and, and start kind of exploring and encountering this, the more they start to understand that this bizarre corruption has has spread out like wildfire across the galaxy and it's going to destroy everyone if someone doesn't stand up and stop it. Um, and fortunately or unfortunately, uh, the Look at how happy she is about this. This so game is gonna be good, end, dude. And even like her, events. like the members of her team, this they're excited just watching her talk about against it. Against this mysterious order that it wants to annihilate. My theme, uh, the it's the Maruki the Persona 5 so theme. I got for getting the platinum trophy in Persona 5 Royal. Uh, infusing choice and consequence into a game has always been very game was still on yeah us as a development team as gamers we want to see our choices and our decisions reflected back to us in, in fun and, and surprising ways when she's like the most passionate uh game dev i've seen in a while You get three things in Platinum Persona 5. You get uh, Maruki, the twins, and the Benz. It'll be in your email. It's not going to be on your PS4, Dan. You have to redeem a code. Very strong, compelling story. 
And so the story will have the same beginning and the same ending for everyone because we want Big to oof is the viewership drop. So I guess I kind of expected the viewership drop. That builds and builds into this when uh, the conference ended. Hopefully it picks back up with PC. What role I was gonna originally take a break, but fuck it. I'll just keep chatting with you guys as long as you wanna stare, stick around and chat. I will stick around and chat with you guys too. And when I say that, Genshin's lot. Wait, Genshin has audio. Two points. Uh, the first one is the the the, the aesthetics. My bad. My bad. And after that is the audio experience. From a uh, aesthetic perspective, what was really important for I think Genshin was not supposed to have audio about the Guardians of the Galaxy and all colorful they are and how like it, it, it's a quirky bunch and everything and there's a lot of humor in the game probably the only one saying this yeah art style to reflect that like we wanted a game that would be uh, it's actually colorful, hard for me to see like uh, awakes your sense of wonder discovering the different places you go that they feel really different than what you experience on earth um and we we really wanted to take advantage of like when you go in some alien planets, like they speak a different language language than you. You don't understand all the the, the aliens. Yeah, I'm gonna buy this Guardians game for sure. Do. I'm now I'm and pretty confident in it. So of making you feel like you're discovering the galaxy as well. Like you, you don't know everything. You're discovering the galaxy. So Neat. Quite, uh, I always wanted to discover so a galaxy. Really that to be colorful and and and, and vibrant. Now you have to redeem it and, in the uh, in PlayStation store the, uh, audio uh, ambience is that peter quill is a kid that grew up in the 80s and unfortunately it's in your email like dan it's not in, it's not on the playstation aliens. itself and, and is uh i would say when you got the platinum trophy you would have received really an email the 80s, like that has the code for the theme video games all all these things and we wanted to bring that forward so uh you can expect in the marvel's guardians of the galaxy game a very great eclectic <laughs> same track like really rooted in the 80s and capturing that vibe it was really important for us to 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 really bring those two aspects together to create a fresh look to have something ah, fuck, to, I have to do my bounties this week there's a lot of emotions there will be laughs a lot of laughs but there will also be drama but ultimately it there will be laughs and, and there will be cries with you with a, a, a feel-good vibe and uh, those two aspects are our key to achieve that. All right, tell me, what's the release date? I'm very excited to see this game come out. It's gonna come out on October 26th, and it is going to be available on PC and PlayStation and Xbox consoles. It's gonna be an epic ride with lots of adventure, lots of drama, and I really, really can't wait for you to play it. She seems like she really can't wait for you to play it, man. That's awesome. Guardians of the Galaxy, now back to our show. Thank you, Greg, for that great interview. He was I, fantastic. I wonder what they were blurring out behind him during the Marvel interview, but we won't talk about that. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously, since before yeah. we went to break. Instead, let's get to what the final announcement there was. Yeah. Stranger of Paradise, the Final Fantasy Origin. I yeah. love that we both were like, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Just want to make sure we got As that all in, right? As with most Final Fantasy games, I have to read it off the page a few dozen times oh, before I can memorize the entire name. That is a long title, um, and right now social media is blowing up. Of course. Social media. Media is blowing up. Oh my god, I haven't used social media in a while. I guess uh, I have if we count YouTube as social media, though. It's going to be this action based combat, and that's of course what they were stressing throughout the trailer that it's not your daddy's Final Fantasy. This is a different take on it. What? <laughs> this isn't your daddy's Final Fantasy? What? I'll be honest. Um, so oh, is that the, the Chaos Killer game, right? Did you mention that? That was me. <laughs> oh, you did. Okay, okay. But, uh, no, I was just like, you know, that would, let's see how they end this thing. And, yeah. oh, my gosh, you heard our, our E3 crew yeah, back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. They were hooting. They were hollering. I mean, a Final Fantasy spinoff. I mean, we're all here for that. No sure. one is going to complain Yeah, bro, we're here for that. Um, and I'm here for the Final Fantasy right spinoff. What are you here for, ladies yeah, and gentlemen? Okay. We, of course, thinking? asked you what your favorite announcement was. I don't care what she's here for. Right now. Look at that. It's neck and neck Guardians versus Stranger that doesn't of Paradise Final all. Fantasy Origin. Yeah. I'm actually shocked right that Guardians is almost losing to Final Fantasy. Watching us, whether it be on Twitch, whether it be on YouTube, you put it in there. Of That's course, insane to me bar, that people would want that Final Fantasy game. That looked so bad. And there also seemed to be no difference to me between Babylon's Fall and Final Fantasy. Babylon's Fall also losing to Life is Strange. That's funny. Cool poll results. 
I thought the story seemed really interesting. The Warriors of Light versus Chaos. Some they are all gonna kill Chaos. They're they, all gonna they kill. They are them. determined. These people hate Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> there was some JRPG moments oh, yeah, there, right? Totally, yeah. Totally. They were just like, kill Chaos, hate Chaos, Chaos, Chaos. I was all right, like, I'm hey, done with her talking now. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, this is your motivation. Here for Go that. For it. Exactly. But on how many? Take a shot every time she I'm says she's here for that. By the pool, though, Guys, I am here titles. for that. As we talked about in the beginning, they were deep diving so hard on Bitch. these titles here. So deep diving on a lot of the titles. Not on Marvel's Avengers, though. Oh my where? gosh, you're right. I was kind of like, I'm Come wanted on. more there. Of course they're not gonna deep dive Marvel's <laughs> Avengers, Greg Miller. That game fucking bombed. They're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about it. We got a great, I enjoyed the setup cinematic they used, of course, uh, Black Panther facing off against Claw. The fact with the narration that I've seen three Black Panther. I feel like Claw is uh, Black Panther's only notable villain. But I was looking for more in terms of what we'd be getting into. Does Black Panther have another cool villain other than Claw? Like, I genuinely don't know. I mean, we love how it looks. You know, I, I have absolutely adored his costume. I thought the teaser definitely got me hyped. But I will totally agree with you there. I was hoping we get a little bit. My more. hope, of course, as a Marvel's Avengers fan, is the fact they're going to deep dive in on their social channels. Yeah. Because at, it, during the presentation, they didn't put out dates. They showed the roadmap, showed where they've come with Tachyon and Anomaly and everything else. But they put, talked about Cosmic Cube, showed us going up against Scientist Supreme. From the When's that War of Wakanda thing even coming out? Like, are they really trying to, like, aggressively push all this content out or no? For War for Wakanda. Didn't mention when it's coming, but on Twitter, they confirmed August. Yeah. So I'm hoping more and more. Oh, wow. So all that stuff's supposed to come out before like August? No, I'm not gonna gr drag you down. You can you. throw me in there. No, I, actually, you don't know nothing no, no. about Wasteland hold, Patrol. Hold on, Avali and I actually hosted a Marvel's Avengers launch event together. Wow. Yeah. So, so how many 150 characters you got right now? Okay. Huh? All right. All right. Just flex much. a little more. Thank he so and Golden much. Boy all about the flexing. Yeah. Who's got the Xbox mini fridge? How many characters? Uh, we don't got? talk about okay, that. Okay. All right. With the one, the other. Right. but yeah. Then they showed more Wasteland Patrols. Yeah. Uh, again, that's cool for me. I like the idea of being able yeah. to team up with friends and just go. If you're not familiar, you just go through the Wasteland, random boss fight. Yeah, still here. There's gear you can only acquire there. That's exciting. Yeah. And again, they're on track with their roadmap, which has been Marvel's Avengers' early problem, right? Like, yeah. Of course, uh, Kate and Clint were supposed to be there in what uh, Oct it was September? It was September, so in October and November they were supposed to be here, and that got way pushed out to December and yeah. then this year for Clint. I mean, props to them for not just immediately dropping the Marvel Avengers you know thing. Again, it, it, okay. it was a taste of it. It was a taste of it. Yeah. Any Sega or Atlas news? No. There has not been like the Marvel Avengers campaign to some extent. Yeah. So if they've taken the learnings and they just want to give us more of that with the Black Panther expansion of us playing through and being Black Panther, I'm okay with that. So you're happily intrigued, I would say. Of course. Oh yeah, this doesn't happily do anything for my intrigued. excitement. No, yeah. I'm still totally there. Yeah. I am excited. I'm still talking about If anybody can hit up score and find out, does Life is Strange Remastered have new trophies? Because I wouldn't mind replatinuming those games. It looks Love great. Them. Hey, yeah, generation. I've seen the remaster, and we got a in depth look at True Colors too. Yeah, um, exactly. Some interviews. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm here for it. Life is great. She's here for it. Again, it's one She said it again. I know. We got to get the Battle crew far. in here. We had all the stuff, the mobile games, the Final Fantasy, uh, what they call it, pixelated I wish you all could see here. the handwriting on here, by the way, too. Yeah, that's, that's journalism school in a nutshell, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, enough about what we've been talking about. Let's see what our old friend Golden Boy has to say. Golden Boy! Hi! Man, talk about just sucking all the air out of the room, Greg Miller. <laughs> Jeez, every topic we have just grabbed away from us. They already did this joke. Literally, after the last presentation, they did that joke. Michael from GameSpot. Bruh. An opportunity to monologue about Babylon's fall. But unfortunately, Michael is having second thoughts. So, Michael, hold my hand. And uh, how do you feel about Babylon's fall, Poppy? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I think, uh, you know, I just... Um, I just uh, I set myself up, you know. Set I was like, up. I was just like, you know, I, I'm disappointed. It's but okay. it's okay. It's all right. You it's know, okay. I, I still wanna I still wanna give uh, you know a, a chance. Platinum Games has a lot Colorado, has a Colorado. great great history. Great see? great history. See, you know see, what I'm see. saying? Bayonetta. You know, the yeah. thing is like, oh, maybe this is the next thing in line. To I'm gonna try and do whatever I did last time to Yosuke shut off my AC. Yosuke Saito's on the project. Say your pain. Say your pain, Poppy. And then it's like, oh, it's a it's a live service game and it's endless and we didn't really get any. Any narrative bits okay. about it, so uh, you know, I, I still want to give it a chance. You know, like like Damon said, like that art style does kind of look fire. Look like, cool. oh, it looks promising. We're committed, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got, I got you, baby. Thank uh, you. And like the, I trust Platinum to bring fire and combat, and like they showed some of that stuff right there. But you know, it's like I, I like games that make me cry. 
and, right. and, and then when you have the lineage of a platinum game, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Like near Automata, one that's of the right. best games of all time. One of the best games of all time. Hey, it's speak your truth. I don't think that worked, but whatever. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Any games that interest y'all? Uh, yeah, the Gardens of the Galaxy thing. That's about it. Everyone, can we all just hold hands for Michael here? Come on, Damon, you as well. Yeah. All right, guys, we're here. We're here. We support you. We're with you. And don't worry, we'll still play Babylon's Fall with you. you wanna right. Okay. Sing a <laughs> Who's gonna play Babylon's Fall? Uh, I don't know if we want to do that. We want the stream to be here next year. Anyway, though, guys. I ain't playing uh, Babylon's Fall. It was interesting, but there. I, was I it? I'll say this much. I don't understand, Damon, the uh, mixed reaction regarding Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I thought it looked fantastic. My reaction is not mixed. I'm with you. I was, it might end up, end up being my pleasant surprise. Of the the only thing that makes me nervous about Guardians game, so is that it's, uh, uh, it's telling a story. You um, play as one character. Got the same gameplay as Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was trash. So I would have to. The story and the characters are gonna really have to hard carry the Guardians game, and that that makes me a little nervous. True, true. But other than that, it's fine. Yeah, well, don't worry, folks. That is what downloadable content is for. Uh, but Dan, let's speak of things that weren't present. Uh, at E3 because, uh, or at least in this particular uh, uh, keynote, it, because, you know, obviously we're looking forward to a lot of good things that's going to be coming out. Uh, you know, obviously we saw a little bit of Final Fantasy XVI. We saw so what exactly is 12 Minutes? I saw you, a lot of you guys in chat were, like, hyping it up. Then there was this final thing with Strangers of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins. Obviously they don't like chaos. Uh, yes, I was just curious. Chaos is no longer on the menu if they have anything. <laughs> to say about it. They are coming in hot. Like if you, uh, if you were to drink, chaos is no longer on the menu. This Dan guy is actually kind of funny. Boss, but it would be worth it because it looks awesome. You have that pedigree of Team yeah. Ninja, Koei Tecmo. God, that writing is so fucking cringe for that like, fucking yeah, chaos like thing, though. Weird mixture of like every ten seconds, there's another line about the chaos. Yeah, it's really exciting because Shut the fuck up. Seen that yet? And you're getting to this more sort of action RPG s combat that we've seen in recent Final Fantasy entries. I think they can have a lot of fun with this. And again, you know what? I've had enough chaos for uh, quite some time. I'm beginning to see what they're talking about. I'd like to omni slash chaos into a million little pieces myself. Here's the thing. Sure, they don't like chaos, but they really like just tearing their enemies apart. Oh, yeah. Like, Brutal. Face or that weird crystalline thing seemed kind of cool. Really that was about going it. For the mouth. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, and just shoving some red stuff in there and then, yeah. You know, like I, I can't tell. Is it like when they stomp on them, the crystals appear, or are they putting? The I don't know, but inside? I'm gonna play the game and find out. I mean, we're seeing it right here in the footage. Yeah, it's right. Heroin. He's trying to figure out the most efficient way to get the crystals, and usually it's just ripping it right open like a bag of chips. Well, that's and what I was reaching thinking. Reaching inside. You know, I had a, a DoorDash order yesterday. That you see that plug? That was you know <laughs> just a little. That was a little uh you know sponsored by DoorDash. What I do. Stranger in Paradise, yeah, chaos you know? reigns, <laughs> chaos reigns, baby. But yeah, it looked really cool. Uh, Obviously, though, um, lots of other really cool stuff with uh, Life is Strange True Colors. I think that you know everyone loves that game. It's 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 a pleasant experience for a lot. It's what a guy in a time loop. Team, per se. Like okay. I'm not that. Like a I'll not give it a shot. It sounds like it's a game that's going to end up being something I can stream in like a single uh, stream. I'll be able to beat it. Maybe I'll give that a shot. The 12 minutes thing. You might as well, right? A teacher again, or like all of my friends. I'm going to hold all of my friends near and dear to me. And something that I was bragging to Dan about was during the game, there is a moment where you can attempt to save a friend from a situation. And I managed to do that, and apparently, like, no one else was able to do that. And so all of these interesting experiences... No one else. They, just, they, they hit hard. They hit hard. So with the new uh, one coming out, True Colors, where Alex Chen has, like, the psychic ability to uh, feel other people's emotions, I feel like that's going to open up, like, so many more different stories. And, like, yeah. Uh, even in game mechanics, we heard that she can hear like bits and pieces mm -hmm. of their thoughts and monologues. Some reconstructed and... memories as well. Exactly, all to f try to figure out what happened to her dead brother. And it's like, oh, okay, where are we going now with this? And you can see, I, I love all the characters. The character design so fun and all. It is, yeah. I, I got mad respect. Out. I got mad respect for Life is Strange. Like Life is Strange One is, which is getting a remaster. Like, people get to re-experience that again. Mm -hmm. uh, and also like Li Life is Strange Two. If you go back to that game, that game it hit real hard so yeah. shouts out to my girl natalie flores that is one of her favorite games of all time got me to play it and it you know it it went yeah. on to cover things like race relations and like really touchy subjects with 
very like varying degrees of like sensitivity and it, it just really hits you in your feelings and the fact that we're gonna have another full the game hits you in the game, feels like, bro uh, yeah folks should be tr should be playing this game because you know crying is great crying is dope crying is good that's actually very <laughs> true it's very true we had a few other uh just small little details obviously with the final fantasy games the pixel remastered i'm personally looking forward to that uh we had some mobile games <laughs> they have to talk about the 20 minute so, square enix uh, conference for longer than it was stuff. but one game longer than it was actually going on which is funny checking out because I think it's about time I give it a try. It's Life is Strange. And our friends over at PC Gamer actually caught up with Christopher Sika, the game designer from Deck Nine Games, for an in-depth conversation about the narrative-driven adventure game. Let's check it out. True Colors interview. Do people actually like watching these interview so, things, to be honest? Colors, so I feel like this is something that would be difficult to watch without, uh, like, talking with, with, with you guys in the game. chat, or, like, if we're talking uh, with friends. Like, God, I wouldn't really want to give, like, give a shit about this. Stories still being retained. Uh, so in order to do that, um, we have our town, Haven Springs, where our main character, Alex, is walking around, and she's able to interact with um, characters all really over the <laughs> Uh, with the range Try of emotions from turning this AC off, man, it's driving me fucking nuts. Joy and anger, um, and the way we visualize this is through what we call emotional auras, um, which Alex can see around the characters, uh, and then it also allows the player to uh, do the psychic power of empathy to read the characters' thoughts and emotions, uh, which allows Alex to connect with them uh, and have you know, side storylines and uh, more emotional connections with the characters. So on that subject, actually, regarding the emotions and, you know, the connection Alex has with them, so in Before the Storm, uh, sort of in contrast to the other two Life is Strange games, it's a much more grounded experience where you have a, the only vaguely supernatural element, obviously, was uh, closed visions of her father. But here you've really you've thrown yourselves into that Life is Strange element of uh, more supernatural. Uh, so why did you decide that was the route to go? Correct. Yeah, this one is uh, a much more in the supernatural element. Uh, when we first started talking about using the power of empathy, we felt that it needed to have a supernatural element to really allow the player to connect with the characters uh, and also give Alex this extra element to use her power of empathy. And the best way to show this was to embrace the supernatural. Uh, I feel like it really um, follows the Life is Strange staple of having a beautiful setting and also this supernatural element on top of it. Uh, so one thing that all of the Life is Strange games, including this one, have in common, actually, is the primary players are all teenagers. Um, was that a conscious decision on your part? It was, uh, but I think, you know, Alex is defined by a lot more than, you know, just her age. Uh, she's really a well-rounded character, uh, but we wanted to have a strong female lead, someone uh, that players could really connect with and relate with. Um, and, you know, with her power of empathy, she's just a, a great character to connect with. And I'm really excited for fans to see her. I think she's going to quickly become a fan favorite. And then the element of choice in Life is Strange, obviously, is very important. Uh, what's your, your approach to this? I figured it out. Through colors in terms of I figured it out. I was able to turn it off. Always clear. Huge. Uh, well, it, actually, I think that's an interesting question because one of the things we strive for is not always, you know, labeling what is good and what is bad. I think, you know, in Life is Strange, one of the things that fans really connect with is how dynamic the characters are. Uh, you know, characters have elements of good and bad, but we try to stray away from just a good character. Or a yeah, it's just me character. playing Genshin. It's Sorry, 12 choice, hours. They can own it, um, not to be judged or feel like they made the evil choice or the bad choice. Yeah. Um, go, actually, going back to the issue of teenagers, so, I mean, you know, I was the issue of teenagers. Uh, you know, Indeed, so teenagers are a big issue. They are a menace. Is that something that you're reflecting in the game at all? It, because um, I have noticed what you've revealed so far. There are, although it's primarily teenage characters, are some older characters as well. Is that reflected in the way the emotions work at all? Uh, well, it's interesting because Alex had a very, um, you know, troubled childhood coming through the foster home. Is it interesting? So even though she is a teenager, um, she's very mature for her age. She's been through a lot. So I think that, you know, emotional volatile that you're talking about, we can actually see in characters of all ages. Uh, even the adults she connects with, um, they're very really volatile in their emotions. So we tried to have you know, a more realistic approach that uh, even though teenagers may be emotional volatile, even in our adulthood, we still feel those emotions and have a wide range. 
Um, I know you, you've uh, previously. This guy just had like his dog just chilling in the background. Than anything else in the Life is Strange series so far. Any of these optional interactions are any? Do any of those have uh, any of those more impactful than the player might expect? Uh, like an easily an admissible character or choice. So the the optional content we really wanted to keep as optional and missable. Um, I think it will impact the user's experience as they might not be able to connect with these characters as much. But if you stay on the critical path and just do the primary interactions, you won't miss any of the key elements of the story. That dog is uh, all he's of chilling. The spaces like you're talking about are really just a way to explore the town, connect with the people, uh, use the power more often, um, and it could you know help. Dog wants to go to sleep, so you know more about the characters, but you won't be punished for missing any of this content. Um, so one thing I actually have noticed with Life is Strange, with the Don't Nod ones, and also Before the Storm, which also it's all really captured, uh, is it, it just it looks and sounds and feels like an indie movie. Like, is that intentional? And if it is, what does that mean for you? How do you capture that? Absolutely. It seems more like a movie really than a game. How do you feel about that? that? The roots of Life is Strange. Uh, so for this title, True Colors, we actually worked with a lot of indie artists. Um, so the music's a, a big element of it. Um, and as far as the visuals, we did a lot of research on, uh, you know, mountain towns. Uh, being out here in Colorado, uh, we had a lot of inspiration. And so we really just try to capture that visual, that cinematic style and the music. Uh, it's, a, it's a big pillar. What kind of dog is that things. anyway? And, and again, so, so referencing Before the Storm again, uh, although obviously you were allowed a lot of creativity in that, you ultimately had to sort of draw within the lines in that Chloe's character was already established, the ultimate ending, you know, we knew where it was going. But with True Colors... Did you know where it was going? Uh, Life is Strange Game with all of your own characters, you have complete control over the story. What were you able to take from Before the Storm to, to, to help you prepare for that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, for us as... You know, I don't care. Storm, we, we did use These are so, like such weird games to decide to do an interview on. Like I feel like everyone that's going to play the Life of Strange games has already decided they're going to play the Life of Strange games. And so, oh, the dog has left the uh, the building. About empathy. We wanted a story about kindness and connection. Dog ain't feeling it anymore. So we, we really started with that as our core, and then we built these characters around it. Uh, but we really made sure that all the characters fit into the life of strange this is the fully like through experience really by the way guys dynamic characters we wanted them to feel realistic feel dynamic uh and have players be able to have well luckily the pc game, game show starts soon um, and then talking about connection obviously there is a, there's a direct connection between before the storm and true colors in terms of steph we'll watch that the, for the uh, next fucking over. persona game to be announced so on pc all, just to bite me in the ass the characters that you had introduced yourself why steph why bring steph to true colors and uh, rather than anybody else. Yeah, well, I think, you know, working on Before the Storm, uh, I as actually worked on that title as well. Uh, we all GTA love GTA 6. Um, you know, That's she's tomorrow, Diz. So we were all really excited. And it's just going to be GTA 5.2. Um, and to, to reveal her in Haven Springs. Uh, and then I think beyond that, just the connection that her and Alex start to form throughout the title. Uh, I'm really excited for fans to see more of Steph. Um, I, I think there's an element of Steph we all know from Before the Storm. Uh, but we're going to learn more about her as a character and who she is and the experiences she's By the way, this is me making Barbara a relevant so character a, in the game. She's a great fit for the story mm. and just a character that we all love writing and working with. So it sounds like she'll she'll be a bit more of a forefront then in this one than she was in Before the Storm? You'll see a decent amount of stuff throughout the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so um, would I be right to assume that uh, True Colors will, will also have uh, multiple endings? It will have multiple endings, correct. And, um, but if there are multiple endings, then you the can't just have one on like uh, choice, focused one. So there's not going to be another sequel with these characters, then, back from right? The end, you can do, or else then you have to make a Kayla Lele. Like how how far back do the, is do the roads to the ending diverge? Yeah, what's really exciting about True Colors is it's actually an element of both of that. Um, your final choice will reflect the ending, but there's also an element of the relationships you build throughout the game um, and how you'll see this our game has a little bit of everything it's every e3 hype conference of all time to, you know build these connections and make these choices. our game's not just uh, a one thing it is also all end, things so that way we can market it to everybody uh, your experience uh, even though it doesn't really footage, have those things but i've seen it goes in a little bit more detail of what happens when Alex comes across a particularly powerful aura. And then the, obviously there's a little bit of talk about it actually affects the environment. Um, 
could are you able to go into a little bit more detail about what happens there and uh, how the player explores this altered environment? Absolutely. Uh, so we have different uh, tiers of using the power. Uh, there's the one I explained earlier when you're walking around. <laughs> They're making me sleepy. Yeah, these the people are pretty boring. They have like z- almost thoughts. zero personality yeah, when describing this game. It's kind of bizarre that these people get in charge of like in marketing. In our gameplay. And we also have these major power moments uh, where, like you were saying, there's a really powerful emotional... I have to uh, and, uh, pat myself on the back, but I feel like I could make um, this co- like more interesting if I was spo- if they were, if someone was paying me to talk about this. The environment, um, and I feel like I'd bring at least a little bit of energy to it, but man. Going through. Uh, so she's able to explore the environment, she's able to look at objects, and all these objects relate to emotional connections uh, that the character she's uh, interacting with has gone through. From your perspective, and again, now this is the game that you've got the most control over, what are you hoping that players will get out of it? That's a great question. I, I think for me personally... I don't know I'm what players really will get out of it. Players to see uh, this power of empathy that we're talking so much about, I think especially... We really hope times, really there'll be something on the nose. We really hope that real people experience empathy through. after this uh, game. We, use empathy we live in such a troubled really time. ...for players to connect with people, see their struggles, see what they're going through, um, and really understand... Yeah, that's not going to be on the nose dynamic, all of the time you know, during the game, I guarantee you that. Our triumphs, and I'm really excited for players to get to know Alex. Uh, she's, for me, the favorite character I've ever worked on, and so I'm really excited for players to see her. She's just such an inspiration, um, and then also to be able to use this power of empathy and, and hopefully, you know, allow people to take a step back in their life and and see others as well in a whole new light. You can tell by how much the guy brings it up that's going to be a very on-the-nose writing piece for the entire game. Um, but it's still oh my god, empathy. Is that right? Have empathy for your yes, fellow man. So Empathize. Oh my god, please be empathetic. Right now, but that's going to be the entire game. Together. Is there anything that you've done in True Colors? I mean, don't get me wrong, you should be empathetic with people in real life, but like, God, that's going to be like a one note, uh, you know, really repeated thing for the entire game. Uh, this is a big thing for us that we're able to now have a longer game. Uh, a longer experience and add more of these power elements. <laughs> it sounds like a low budget YouTube channel. No, no, no. This is the uh, uh, very high budget biggest gaming event of the year, E3. Uh, the environments are beautiful, and we were able to spend a lot more time. Just this is just how one cringe some and one uh, game developers are. Uh, that we could really make into this dynamic place that it feels like you're part of Haven as you're playing. Um, and speaking of the powers, uh, what was the process? to finally deciding that was what would be the center of the game, like empathy and emotions. Yeah, so I think it was a core pillar of our initial story was having empathy. Uh, you know, like I was saying, we really wanted to tell the story about kindness and connection. And as we were exploring we that, we realized we, we had to have more gameplay elements to the power than just the As we were writing our movie, we realized, um, oh shit, we've been, been marketing, <laughs> this is a video game that we're that making, ah. Uh, Make the empathy the power of empathy. And you can connect with the character. That'll do it. And then from there, we decided it's really a great place to just be able to connect with the town as a whole. The big boy power of empathy. Gameplay into the town and these open spaces. Uh, so I'd say it was really an iterative process as we were writing the story. Um, you know, They're still talking. Game design They're talking about the power of empathy, Lucy. To, uh, you need to be empathetic with your fellow man. Something that players will enjoy. What, what is and connect with... What uh, done to try and really flesh out and build this character that's you know, going to be... Emotions and kindness and stuff. Yeah, well, I think with Alex, what makes her so strong is just her realism as a character. You know, she's vulnerable. She's honest, she's genuine, she's strong, she's brave. Um, she just has a, a lot of really good qualities that I think anyone can- She's realize. empathetic. Um, so, you know, we didn't take anything specific with Chloe or previous characters from Before the Storm. We wanted Alex to be a character that stands up on her own, um, someone who's, who's real. Um, and I think, you know, our writers did a great job of writing her. And then Erica, the actress did a great job performing as her and that, is now the character that we see and love in this game. It really was a team effort to, to make her as great as she is today. One thing that's only just occurred to me is in each of the Life is Strange games, uh, the main characters have parents who are either absent or antagonistic or a little bit of both. So it sounds like a game, this is a trend that continues into true colors. So again, was that a conscious decision? And either way, 
Was that a conscious decision to make her parents mean so the player would empathize with the main character? Yes. Gave the foster care system justice. You know, obviously it's a complicated subject. So we just tried to tell, like most Life is Strange games do, um, something that's real but also tragic and, you know, unfortunate in some regards. Uh, as far as Alex's parents, um, it definitely influences, you know, who she became and who she is as a person. Uh, I don't want to say too much more than that because there's moments in the game where I would love for fans to just uh, experience for themselves. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's probably about it for me. So again, thank you. I can't wait so for people to be empathetic. To I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you once again to our friends over at PC Gamer. For Chat, what I need from you guys is to be empathetic that I'm trying to maintain viewership while listening to these boring fucks talk about this game. All right. Follow them for your chance to win a one hundred dollar gift card. That's, That's what I need from you guys. One hundred dollars now. Uh, so make sure you guys do that. Follow the prompts here, and uh, you'll be uh, a Gucci handbag. So we've had some pretty awesome moments uh, already from this year's E3. It's been great, but I do want to take a second to you know do some uh, story time amongst us, friends. Might might I add, how cool is it that we get to sit here with uh, IGN, GameSpot, both me and you, G4, Nerdus as well, to talk about? This is probably one of the highlights for me personally. Uh, but, you know, I want to go down the line. Dan, what is a, a, an E3 memory from your first E3? My first E3, well, I grew up reading, like, GamePro and EGM and always reading about right. E3 year after year. And Darn right. Like, I would love to <laughs> <get that laughs> sit through this shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, that's why I, I can't imagine that people watch this without, like, being able to make fun of it with their friends and stuff. That's why I said I need you guys in chat to be participating. This is holy shit. I'm working in the field of, like, entertainment journalism and covering pop culture and the stuff that I love. And I remember I got to sit in the closed door session to see Star Wars 1313 RIP oh, wow. and just oh, had my wow. brain rent asunder by yeah. how awesome it looked. And it, basically that game Did it really look that awesome if it got canceled? And ultimately did just open up this whole world of scum and villainy. And it also taught me to embrace pain because something <laughs> sometimes not all of your dreams can come true. In that case, it was sadly dashed upon the rocky shores of reality and development hell. But one day, hopefully, we'll go back to Coruscant to uh, level thirteen, thirteen. Check out that CD underbelly. But for now, I'll always yeah. have that memory to hold on to. A boy can dream. Mm -hmm. A boy can dream. Why do I boy care about his first E three experience? Uh, you don't. Uh, mine is probably a little bit more evil. So boys and girls, do not try this at home. <laughs> um, what but basically. Well, I snuck into my first E3. Oh, gosh. <gasps> so I was maybe 17, 18 years old, and I came as a media partner for my high school newspaper. <laughs> um, totally legitimate. Wasn't in high school anymore at that point. Um, but I will never forget them, for some reason, handing me the badge, putting the lanyard on, and then just walking into the convention hall and just looking up all around me at all of the different booths. Yeah and like seeing like the big Nintendo booth. And then I think there was like Persona 4 dancing all night being yeah. displayed or something. Hell right. Huge! She like, hinted the Persona of dancing like, game because we're about to get a remastered collection of Persona dancing. Let's go. That was probably like my absolute favorite memory of just being in shock and awe that I was there because, yeah. you know, we saw E3 on G4. Right. I found E3 from like, hey, Ash, what you playing? They did like a vlog there and I'm like, oh my God, I'm here. This is, this is it. Yeah, yeah, well, we don't have a lot of time, but... Um, oh, no, they're almost out of time. Gee, dang it, I guess we'll have to watch the PC Gamer Show. Where they went around E3, I'm like, damn, it'd be nice to be there. 2017 was my first E3, and I did it for GameSpot, so I bust yeah. up in there. I'm like, Man. Oh, this is wild. Whimsical, like, I'm doing work, but it's just, it's wild to, like, collaborate with the Giant Bomb folks, because, like, we see them in the office, but, like, you go to the Giant Bomb couch, it's like, wow, this stuff is real. I'm really here. So I'll never forget. Uh, it's the big it's a real lot, guys. A lot of work. You realize how much work is put in for like folks that. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh, there's. It's just so much uh, work. Yeah, your job is really hard, buddy. Man. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's real tough. Glad you're making it through. And remember, uh, sitting through video game trailers all day and being able to discuss the video games. Uh, GameCube. 
Original Man. Xbox games. And I got to go to the behind closed doors. There was a Mass Effect and Bioshock, and I was completely blown away. I was like, Thank God he's wow. able to sit through like real and make it. Gen experiences over everything I'm playing right now. And I was like, it's wow, just so really tough. Way to start my career at IGN. Well, before we throw to our next segment, I did want to say my quick E3 story. I commentated. A oh, oh my God! We almost missed his E3 E3 story, guys. Flew in the last day of E3 because that was like all they could afford. Flew me in the last day. Of E3. Guys, we almost missed his E3 story. Last hour of E3 it was my first one, but I remember being on that airplane, going to LA, and saying to myself, "Mama, I made it." It was a great Mama, time. I got to go to E3. E3. Wow. Us, but also from all of our friends all around the industry and some of your favorite streamers, That's tough. as well as influencers all around, had a bit to say about favorite streamers. Favorite. I didn't have to get to do a video interview for this. Well, I can tell you growing up, E3 was like the holy grail, right? Like that was, I mean, it was like E3, I'll never make it there. Wow, you went? In 1999, wow. my first E3, I got to see a, a cool midway like basketball cage. I remember that. Uh, I believe that was- Tell me more about E3 basket cage. I was in awe at everything. I tried everything I, I played just dance you know the wow Microsoft booth was incredible they had me just <laughs> i played just dance shut the fuck up bad at that somehow. Oh, god i don't care <laughs> oh my favorite gamer t-pain probably similar to a lot of the other content creators on this show we had to sneak in man we was little kids like i was in high school nintendo was handing out posters they handed out like a zelda poster or something and i was like yes and i god these guys make e3 sound boring I got that at E3. Don't even act like I didn't get it at E3. There it is right there. Wow. It's my first E3 in 2016. Ah, I think I called in sick that day. I was like, oh, you know, you turn on your sick voice. Yeah, I just I just don't think I'm going to be able to come in. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't work there anymore, so I can't get in trouble for it. So stories out there now. Oh, my God. Wow. He called in sick to work, so even though he wasn't sick. To walk in That's so brave. Watching for so long. And it's there. It's in front of me, and I, I'm part. I'm in it. The cosplays. I loved meeting new friends. I loved the panels. I loved walking on the showroom floor and just seeing all these new things. It was just unreal. It's so funny to me when they have people. <laughs> some of their reactions are like, "Wow, there was just so much uh, uh, stuff at E3, and I did, I did things at E3 like that." Fiona, <laughs> she was like, "Ah, the stuff and the things." I'm at E3. I am a gamer. The door stopped me and was like, "Hold on, let me see your badge." And I was like, "Whoa!" Uh, and I showed him the badge, and he said, "What's your name?" And I forgot the name on the badge. Can I make stop making fun of these people? No, I can't. Oh, this is not good. I gotta do something to kill the time. Man, are people genuinely What's interested in that guy's Ryan stuff? Tano. In today's fix, we get our first look at Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, Far Cry's most iconic villains are back and badder than ever, and Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hopes has been officially I didn't read the description for this bounty. I didn't realize this thing was immune to physical damage. Sec, but first, here's my friend Stella with some news about the upcoming... I would have switched characters. Take it away, Stella! <laughs> Official 2022 will be taking us back to James Cameron's epic science fiction world in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Following a similar announced then delay then wait forever precedent set by the Avatar movie sequels, we first heard about this game four years ago. Based on what we oh saw my god, wait, there's an Avatar game coming out? Action -adventure game oh yeah, I think I remember Chad saying something about this. Featuring the Western Frontier, a part of the planet not previously seen, home to the franchise's signature living, reactive alien biome. While the game stars new characters, uh, the boss that I'm fighting in Genshin in the top right here, this thing is immune to physical damage. With a strong focus on air combat. 
somewhere, Max Scoville is I can only hit it with elemental damage, but I brought Eula to the the thing, who is like only physical damage. Snowdrop engine to expand and deepen the Avatar universe in exciting and innovative ways, along with the films. Mass have reportedly worked in partnership with James Cameron's production company Fuck. and Disney, which could mean a game very close to the world of Pandora that we know, and different from Massive's other titles, notably Tom Clancy's The Division, and an upcoming open world Star Wars game. The game Wait, how do I just take damage? Project this thing's down. NPC, and yes, this is what we got instead of Beyond Good and Evil 2. At long last, my dream <laughs> She's salty about not getting Beyond Good and Evil 2. Did that game ever come out? As previously leaked, Far Cry 6's upcoming DLCs will explore one of the Far Cry series' most enduring elements, the villains. The second adversary the DLC Ubisoft DLC game? Play as Voss Montenegro <laughs> Is that true? Far Cry 3, Pagan Min from Far Cry 4, and Joseph Seed from Far Cry 5. All three previous villains were shown along with surreal first-person gameplay seemingly set in worlds that exist within each Big Bad's terrifying mind. All three charismatic characters seem to be surprised by the fact that they're present, but happy nonetheless to be back causing havoc. And so are we. That's not all for Far Cry 6's season pass, it will also include Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon in some form. This much-loved 2013 standalone expansion for Far Cry 3 featured a retro-futuristic world Man, I love Blood Dragon. ...action genre elements. Ubisoft and Ari Shankar recently announced a Netflix animated series spinoff called Captain Laserhawk, a Blood Dragon remix, so it's a somewhat surprisingly good time for Blood Dragon fans. Thanks That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll check that out. Speaking of colorful games full of terrifying villains and nightmare animals, the Rabbids are back and they're teaming up with the iconic... Is this like the E3 Mario so far Mario recap? This is actually kind of Mario interesting. Rabbids ...Sparks of Hope, officially coming to Nintendo Switch in 2022. We actually got an early look at the game yesterday ahead of Ubisoft's conference when Nintendo themselves leaked the game on their official website. How dare you, Nintendo? It wouldn't be a Mario and Can't Rabbids have leakers if you early announce your stuff. At this point. Either way, the first game was surprisingly awesome and also a sales hit. So here's hope I actually appreciate this better. recap because I didn't even look into what happened yesterday. It's one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my entire adult life. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? What are you looking forward to most? Are there any games you're hoping to see on stage? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Brian Altano, and that was your daily fix. Now that you're all caught up in the news, <laughs> make sure to check out the rest of our E3 coverage on YouTube. Or like Cubai stuff. Media. Or even nice. on your smart TV. This thing is immune to Electro and Geo. Jesus. Daily fix on Snapchat for all things, everything. We just break out, dude. It's time to solve all the problems I run into in this game. Thanks for watching. I kinda wish I started playing this game on PC, Genshin. But I already rolled so many five star characters in my PS5 pro or PS4 profile, I was like, well shit, I guess here we are. I wish the account was transferable though. I'd like to be able to play Genshin on my uh PC. Zarya looks tired. Zarya is tired. I want jeans so I can buy her fucking skin, man. As it stands right now, you just, I mean, you can buy her skin, but there's no point, because you can't get Jean. I can't believe she didn't get a banner for this event. Maybe they were just expecting people to like... I don't know, like spend a lot of money on random roles hoping to get Jean? Yeah, I, that happens to me like every night, Laura. I pretty much only sleep by passing out. I never just like naturally fall asleep. What is this ad that keeps playing for like the Chinese gaming website or whatever? This is like the fourth or fifth time this ad is played. Can't read it though. 
game bonfire. As a part of Play for All, GameSpot will be bringing you the latest gaming news and announcements, interviews with developers, the biggest press conferences, and lots more. Play for All is our yearly online event that combines the excitement and announcements of E3 with charity live streams the following week with lots of special guests who are going to help us raise money for able gamers. So join us in June for E3 and Play for All on GameSpot.com, YouTube.com slash GameSpot, Twitch.tv slash GameSpot, and as a part of E3's official broadcast. See you then. And a big thank you to our sponsor. I use DoorDash too much. I don't need a DoorDash. I need to be sponsored by DoorDash because I use it so much, man. I've spent several hundred dollars on DoorDash, probably over a thousand dollars on DoorDash. We said that together. We have to. This is a really cool setup, though. Cooperation, getting out there, be the cleaners, take on the ridden. Yeah, I can't wait. You know, it's funny. Um, I was talking to Damon, and I was like, "Oh, you used to kick Greg's butt." How much damage my dude does? Dead, and he was like, "No, we played together." And I was like, "We do. We're a team. That was the Game Scoop squad, ladies and gentlemen. We weren't tearing each other apart. We were level 96 Rune Hunter, which is why I'm so kill it in like less than 30 seconds with my dude. Beautiful." So yeah, we're on the precipice of this presentation. What's interesting, if you're not wa over on Twitter keeping up with there, they just put up a post that I think is interesting, uh, explaining more of their online content uh, and keeping the squad together, as they said. Uh, they're going to do it that if the party leader has content for PvE, which means, of course, if they've bought something, uh, it'll be available to the entire party. So if you want to do an expansion, oh, wow. not everybody okay. has to own it, just party leader does. And then for PvP, the oh, that's kind of cool. How do you keep it from being pay to win? They're doing a thing where all the PvP additional content you can get for free by progression. So you could pick it up by you know cosmetics unlock it right away but if you want to you can earn it for free in the game too which is a great look you know what's been really interesting to me about back for blood is that you know with some games we see them trickling just a tiny bit yeah black panther that was kind of happening yeah, sorry too, i know that that's that things i apologize exactly. i apologize um but back for blood is the exact opposite they're like yo we yeah. want you to know exactly what this game is about we have gotten very long descriptions about all the cleaners yep. we've gotten a very inside look at the written doordash is a food delivery service I laura absolutely loved everything that i've seen i thought she was about to say i'm here for it again extremely varied in abilities but um i'm gonna be She's gonna say for it again <laughs> It's we almost it. time. We, we, it's time. That's the thing. Everything I've seen has been a PvE <laughs> thing, which is why I like it. So let's talk I about am it. here Here's for it, the chat. The Back for Blood Showcase. Ah. I'm here for it. You know, there was a, a little while ago when WB Games had reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to be a part of the reveal of Back for Blood, and I knew what it was, and I was so, so excited about what this game is. And, and it's the reason why that I'm so stoked for everyone at home to enjoy this. So coming up next, WB Games is throwing you smack in the middle of the action with their gore fest shooter, Back for Blood. So grab your weapon of choice because here is WB Games, Back for Blood. Thanks, Golden right. Boy. Hello and welcome to the Back for Blood PvP Showcase. If you don't already know, Back for Blood is an upcoming four-player co-op zombie shooter made by the creators of Left for Dead. Today we're diving deeper into the new PvP mode called Swarm, how it works, and what you'll be doing, and maybe even a little bit of strategy. We'll also talk with Turtle Rock's lead game designer on Back for Blood, Brandon Yanez, to help piece it all together. All right, here we go. Before we get there, though, we're getting let's started with actual content now. Brand new PvP trailer and See what it's like in action. All right. Man, they really did. Is there not like any actual music for this game? Is it all just like uh, licensed music? That'll be weird for streaming this game. This is what happens when you don't stick together. So they're doing the Left 4 Dead thing where you can play as the monster. That's like an aggressive. Boomer from uh, Left 4 Dead. 
Oh, it's the big one arm monster for Left 4 Dead as well. They're taking a lot of Left 4 Dead stuff. This game does look pretty good. I'll play it for sure. I, I'll play it with chat for sure too. It'll be fun to stream it and play with you guys. They did make Left 4 Dead. Yeah, but sometimes you gotta take off the uh, the training wheels and go outside your comfort zone. That looked intense. So there we have it, guys. Back for Blood's PvP mode Swarm. To hear more about it and to take a I'm shocked dive, Naomi Kyle's still doing stuff. Mechanics. We have Turtle Rock's lead game designer. On back I feel like she's been in the game industry for like 10 years. Brandon, uh, or 10 plus years for a while now, too. Of this new PvP mode and what makes it fun and unique. Of course, so just like our previous titles, we really enjoy bringing new ideas to the table while retaining the spirit of the genre that we're working in. So Back for Blood's PvP is heavily inspired by our previous titles and makes survival, fast action... I mean, yeah, it's fine. I was just kind of hoping for a little bit more original stuff. Make a balanced and fun PvP mode with just I'm still excited for the game, don't get me wrong. So what's the structure of the PvP like? Uh, do you play in rounds? Uh, can you play as both cleaners and ridden in one match? Or are we swapping between the two? Yeah, so it's played as a best of three match. Teams of four take turns swapping between the ridden and cleaner players. The job of the cleaners is to scavenge supplies, find a good place on the map. That seems like a good way to balance the multiplayer. The uh, humans versus zombies in Left 4 Dead 2 was kind of a balanced by choosing the right ridden to counter the other team strategy hey Jake rotation upgrades I don't know man coordinating attacks with other AIs and players as the round I usually feel like it's the person who brings attention to it this increases the size of the ridden attacks and shrinks the playable space sometimes forcing the cleaners out of their favorable positions right so when a cleaner team is wiped from the field the points are scored for how long they survive uh, then both teams swap and then they go at it from the other side the team that runs the clock the longest uh, as the cleaners is the winner now i understand you can play as all the different cleaners in both co-op and pvp uh do you have a favorite character that you play as so i have a couple um i play mom you can't have a couple that's not a favorite shotgun. she has a lot of survivability to the team she can also instantly help teammates that have fallen uh during battle all of our cleaners have special perks uh, so she's the medic uh, let's jump into another trailer that goes a little more in depth on the riddance progression through pvp check it out They all look the same. Fast. <laughs> all these characters look the same. Oh, so is there three variants then of every zombie? Talker. <laughs> That's the spitter from Left 4 Dead. The stalker is the smoker from Left 4 Dead. That's the charger from Left 4 Dead. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. I guess I did like Left 4 Dead, so it's fine. You just missed some, uh, Back for Blood gameplay. Okay, so Brandon, we just saw that each different Ridden um, has their own variants as well as their own mutations on each variant. I'm actually more interested in the survivors. How do their abilities work? I know how all of the zombies work. They're exactly the same as the Left 4 Dead ones. But Left 4 Dead, the survivors didn't have special perks, so I'm curious to see how that plays out in this game. I, I know how the zombies work. I get it. We all do. Cleaners and fling them all in separate directions. 
Now, knowing that each Ridden has these different abilities, um, how do they change and improve throughout uh, a match and improve the Ridden's chance of winning? So as the Ridden battle against the cleaners, they gain points. They can spend these points on team-wide upgrades called mutations. Mutations upgrade and improve a lot of different things on the Ridden side, from adding uh, effects to their abilities. They might buff the common AI waves in size and strength. So the really cool thing is so they affect the whole team, and they persist between rounds. So as a Ridden team starts to coordinate, their upgrades things can get pretty wild oh does the other team uh, get your ridden upgrades like when you swap that's kind of what i felt like if the cleaners are really meant. sticking together you can swap to the wretch and vomit on their location that's going to cause them to, to spread out right this is going to open up a whole bunch of opportunities for your other ridden players to attack right so if uh, you get them to spread out and there's stalker nearby stalker used the chaos to grab one of the cleaners uh, and drag them off into the swarm the wretch's vomit also slows their victims so if a tall boy who's naturally pretty slow can attack one of those slow characters, they're gonna really be able to pummel them. Another good one is if a exploder waits for a uh, cleaner to go revive their friend, they can use that as an opportunity to charge in and detonate on them, sending them flying and doing a massive amount of damage. Ooh, so what if you just, hit, what if your whole party just said, plays as exploders and runs into them? That has to be the tall boy. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to pick up and, and play and have a lot of fun hitting cleaners across the map. Speaking of fun, kind of lame that they keep showing the same like five seconds of footage. You can see a number of different weapons. How many times have we seen that purple haired girl on the ground? Like, oh my god, so I'm dying. I really wanted to expand on the amount of choices the player had in Back for Blood with their weapon. So, of course, there's handguns, shotguns, LMGs, uh, SMGs, sniper rifles, and a whole bunch of other <laughs> The one weapons, called Tall Boy? Yeah. Sort of like a unique Imagine that's going to be a call out in multiplayer. Now, hey, that's a tall boy. Go. I really want to know what are some of the different attachments and options and how do they change the gameplay overall? Absolutely. So there's a lot of different uh, customization options for your weapons. So throughout the world you can find scopes, silencers, stocks, sights, all that good stuff. You can mix and match them. So there's a ton of options. That's a tall boy. Do you have a favorite type of weapon? Absolutely. So as I said earlier, I really, really enjoy playing mom. So her shotgun is definitely at the top of my list. Ah, oh, that's a solid choice. All right, we've learned a little bit about how it all works, the cleaners, the ridden, the mutations, as well as how the customization works for the Now weapons. it is time. Thank you so much for joining me. Wow, are they really not going to show the survivor stuff? A little bit more detail on Back for Blood's new PVP mode Swarm. Thanks for having me. Uh, I can't wait for everyone to get their hands on this game. All right, well, I guess it's time for the PC Gamer Show now, right? The good news is that you guys won't have to wait too long. There's an open beta coming up on August 12th with an early access portion on August 5th available to those who pre-order. That's all for today, but Back for Blood still has a lot more to reveal in the coming months, so stay tuned. Bye. And they're doing all kinds of early access, open beta, <laughs> demo, retrial. Uh, hello? Green? And there you got it, folks. Back for Blood looks awesome. PvP mode, that was actually a pleasant surprise for me. Uh, when I played the game, you know, I and when the uh, alpha was out, I think it was the alpha is what they termed it as. Uh, it was, you know, a... The alpha, the second alpha, the triple alpha. Uh, but, you know, I love me some good old-fashioned unorthodox pvp types of games i love that kind of stuff yeah i played an irresponsible amount of the versus mode in left for dead and left for yeah. dead 2 in which you get to be both the monsters and god evolve was uh, so bad characters. and swarm mode looks is i it, think now they're going to talk about back for blood game. until pc like gaming wrinkle where it's you're going to die no matter what like you're actually in a horror movie at least that's what i would do in a horror movie you know, just <laughs> perish immediately but here you have to try and rack up as big of a time as possible and challenge the other team to beat it i think that's a cool conceit yeah. um and like really dis like it makes it feel distinct from the campaign mode like you might see in the previous game so i'm excited for it yeah and obviously you and i we both come from an esports background uh you know i see something like that it looks different and, and we know turtle rock's history uh, having tried different uh, games and different unorthodox multiplayer games. Uh, in Ooh, the unorthodox. Past, but I think that there's some potential there for some fun competition. I think that, I, I don't know if I see it as like a full eSport, but like Agreed. a Twitch Rivals or something. Yeah, or like yeah. some fun competitions, like we get a couple G4 hosts together. Shameless plug. We start playing Shameless Plug. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Jerry. Um, shameless Plug. And then we all play together. We're the zombies. Shameless we're plug. the good guys. And then we do it in real life. 
No, I wouldn't want to do that in real life, especially not after the week we had. Uh, Damon, though, uh, I know you're a single-player guy, but I know you also played a decent amount of Left 4 Dead, uh, so because of this Back for Blood, it, it, what I like about it is, yes, it is, you know, a PvP, but it still pulls back to the single-player uh, oh, sure. experience. Very These guys well, are kind of boring. And I think for that reason, it should appeal to folks who maybe don't really want to dive into PvP, mm -hmm. but enjoy, you know, the, the gameplay mechanics. I think there's actually a, a character or a class just for people like me in the in the PvP, and that's the They experience. couldn't even find enough it's options for the poll of, like, what are you looking you for most forward to? I don't mind dying somewhere. Building a deck, yeah, exactly. what? It's a, a it's like a building a card to game deck? yourself up a few times. You know what, man, Michael, it looks like it's going to be a good time. Do you, do you feel like, uh, like this is something that you can pick up and play repeatedly. Fighting the riddance, so playing the game, yeah, yeah, yeah. playing with friends, uh, yeah, I guess. My friends back home and just be really loud and uh, comms, like, the achievements. I feel like people haven't really looked forward to achievements in games for like a couple years now. Discord or whatever, but uh, it, it's really exciting in the sense that you know, when you think about it, Left 4 Dead was a... I think, like, what Greg Miller actually said at the beginning of the show is that people are just kind of listening to this as a podcast for the most part. I mean, shit, that's what I'm doing. ...bring back that that magic of Left 4 Dead, but, like, do it on a much bigger scale. And, like, that presentation that we saw, it's like, yo, we're going all in on this mode with all these classes, these different characters. Yo, it's going to be wild and all sorts of stuff. So it, it's yo, like, it's going to be wild. That format, that foundation, is strong enough already. That can carry a new game. But if you, you put on, like, a lot of mechanics on top of that, it's yeah. sold. And, and funny enough, we did not mention uh, that Back for Blood was also on the Xbox uh, press briefing as well. Yeah. Uh, so you actually saw a, a few of the different elements that are going to be coming to this game. Uh, something that I love, Avali, giant monsters. Giant monsters is always a plus. Oh, giant monsters. Oh, I didn't know there would be giant monsters. Saw, I think they said, like, nine playable ridden. Yeah, you can yeah. Be fighting. Oh, they're probably bringing back the monsters from Evolve. They're like, take two. We're not going to nail it this time. So we're co-oping this. We're getting in there. We're taking it down together. This time Evolve will be good. Oh, that's it. That's what this game is. It's just a secret plot to re-release Evolve. Throw up on friends. Can't do it in real life, Whoa. so may as well do it in the game. That's yeah. what's up. Are you sure you didn't? You can't do it in real life. Well, you have a mask on, so it's just gonna be like. <laughs> it's We're trying to be COVID safe, GB. Thank you, Trying to be COVID. None of you are wearing a mask. Shut up. It seems like such a fun game. The last time I played uh, Left 4 Dead 2 was quite honestly in middle school, and all my friends were older at me and j just yelling at me. But they announced uh, they haven't announced so I'm anything like, okay, really. Okay, cool. I, I now see some of the mechanics that Michael was mentioning, being able to kind of like throw up on people and move they just talked the about some of the zombies but they're uh separate people from the rest of the squad i can't yeah. wait to um, my newly formed adult but it's brain. they're all the zombies from left for dead so you already know them There's one thing a game like back for blood is good for it's good for yelling at friends <laughs> and having a good time and one friend <laughs> if your was predict godfall hey is that game still like okay are they like backwards ported that game to the ps4 right because it sold so poorly as a ps5 exclusive these newly formed Adult brain. brain. She's so sweet. At Our what little point baby. does it form? At what year does the adult br oh, You know what we want. Let's keep talking a little bit about Back for Blood. I was going to say, all of ours is still forming. So, exactly, right. I'm yeah, doing more, we still got uh, a long way. I'm, I'm hurting mine more than I'm helping at this point, I think. <laughs> uh, what did you think? PvP, Back for Blood. Oh, my goodness. I absolutely love everything. Everything I've seen with Back Blood. I am um, here this for it. First trailer, to be completely honest, sure. and then I've just been like tracking every single YouTube video that I can get my hands on. Yeah. And uh, actually, the co-founder Phil Robb, it was like in some YouTube video, and he was like, you know, we've had to sit back the last ten years and watch other people rip on something we created. Yeah. And I feel like he's like, y'all, I'm bringing it a hundred percent. We're gonna give you cleaners with depth. We're gonna give you ridden with depth. Of course. Um, you know, we just heard Avali and we heard Gold. <laughs> really Fox don't like her. Esports here. You know, I was talking to you. I said, "Wow, do you think there could be the potential for that?" So yeah. a lot of people thinking that as well. I, I think they're bringing their A game, and I have loved everything I have seen. I adored uh, Left 4 Dead, but I only played it uh, co-op. I, ne yeah. I never got. I've never been the PvP person. You're a and lover, not a fighter. Well, it's interesting to get to this point now, you know, in 2021, and talk about this and look for what we just saw from this presentation, because I can see. Is there anything the after the PC guys. gaming show? Yeah, there's the uh, the future games show, but I don't think I'm gonna watch that. I was thinking about it, but then. Fastest in the time. Ah. It's really interesting, really quick. It's like another hour after the PC gaming show, I think.
I guess it'll depend on how long the piece of gaming show actually is. I might not watch that future game show. I still think of it as Left 4 Dead and what I do with Left 4 Dead, but in reality, right, there's for me personally been... If the PC gaming show can take us almost up to the future game show, and I don't have to listen to these guys talk again, then I'll watch it. But if I have to, like, sit through an hour of these guys talking before the future game show, we're, I'm just, I'm gonna be done with the stream for the day. <laughs> I thought it sounded really good. I don't want to listen to any more of these guys talking. Uh, one of the things they were talking about is, you know, for every round, the area of play shrinking. Oh. So that it does become, you You sat there, you established your base of operations, and now you've got to move all the way over there. You know I'm all about that battle royale. So I yeah. was like, okay, I'm here for that for sure. Oh, she said it. She's here for it. Oh, I'm glad to know she is present. You know me, I'm all melee sure. over here. Um, I was... I'm with the shotgun. I mean, oh. That's a pretty good one. Right? You know what I mean? Mom with the shotgun. You yeah. can't beat that for and then, sure. I mean, what about when you, when you think of the Ridden who you <laughs> Roll Honestly, that Amelie code. stole my pig. I want to vomit on people. Really? I do. I'm okay. just like, that was too fun. Though being the Exploder could be. I, I, I agree with Damon as well. That could be really fun. See, too. Crusher, is, I think I'm... At least stay for the PC gamer show, yeah, Laura. That'll be fun. about building, you know, teams together. Nine playable Ridden. A whole bunch of different stuff. Oh, my goodness. We could talk back for Blood for Days. I have, like, pages yeah, and right, pages. Right, right. Um, but one even more detail... I feel like there's not enough sat down with our partners to talk Reddit about for back of blood yet i feel like nothing really that new has been shown well, have a good night laura Are they doing like a PowerPoint we presentation of the uh, supporting this uh, in our uh, Reddit Q and A for this game? We'll be able to play this August, and of course, we also fully intend to support that for the launch of the game. Uh, we're going to be supporting two modes: uh, PVE and PVP. Uh, PVE is That's the only two uh, game modes? Kind of style, uh, where you're I mean, in a general sense, AI all things are the, uh, with the only PvP or uh, PvE. The and then uh, PvP uh, is where you can fight against uh, other players online. Sometimes I find PvP is usually more fun just because... Or PvP uh, is PvP, more fun in games like this, just because it's harder to balance people playing as two different groups uh, of stuff. Cool. PvP is more fun in situations where everyone's kind of like the same because then you, it's a test of skill. Like PvE is more fun when it's the other team is like completely different. To spend those points on upgrades to the to the different zombies that we have, just so we can you know they can make them more powerful, uh, cleaner killing machines. Indeed, there's actually going to be plenty of other stuff to keep uh, cleaners occupied. Uh, when this you're would feel better if he was reading the questions, I guess. Um, we're going to have special events. Weird that he's not. Maps. Uh, we're going to have some lulls when so you're not always getting hoarded by tons and tons of zombies. So you'll have time to explore. Uh, explore each map, explore each area where you Time to explore, but I don't want to have time to think my own thoughts. Because then I might think the game was boring. <laughs> And we'll also you just have, need to keep constantly uh, throwing stuff at me. Three objectives uh, in each of these maps that players will be able to complete. So yeah, as you say, uh, why didn't you include aim down dead, sights? Dead, because dead, because dead, every dead, game has aim down sights now. That, um, a lot of games these days do support that feature. It's pretty common. So it's something we definitely wanted to include, so players have that option. All games have aim down sights have, now. Uh, Even Halo has it, which is super annoying. Yes. Uh, I don't like aim down sights. I mean, I always use it when I do, but like guns should either just should be aimed or an actual scope. I'm probably gonna go for three different cleaners just to be awkward. I know you only asked me for one, but um, I I like playing Mum a lot. Um, Mom must be the only character they're ready to reveal at this time because so far everyone that they've interviewed has been like, yeah, I like Mom, which I need every now and again. I have to admit. And the uh, Holly extra extra stamina is super useful. Stamina helps you get away from some sticky situations. And I guess speaking of sticky, um, for the uh, for the Ridden, I love playing the the Hocker. Um, I hide enough on rooftops during PvP, checking where um, where you see cleaners are going to try and hide out, and then trying to stick them 
from afar and then well, that, that kind of sticks between place and allows some of the other I guess fight you just keep saying mom over and over again to, to get some free hits in while they're trying to free themselves so it's a lot of fun playing playing that ridden and helping out the team with uh, coordinated teamwork yes thank you so much uh, we're really excited for the beta and the launch of the main game uh, it was pretty amazing that Water Brothers gave us the opportunity to, to make this game. And then, uh, yeah, as you said, the atmosphere... For those of you that are into Genshin and wondering why I keep playing as catching is because I'm trying to get a friendship level to 10. To remain so, even though we've developed this game in, you know, somewhat unusual circumstances. <sighs> Does a tall boy imply the existence uh, of a taller boy? He's <laughs> ridden can certainly mutate into all sorts of different shapes and sizes so you know who knows what monstrous thing they might turn into next uh we won't be supporting that at launch but you can of course queue in with three of your friends into uh pvp and i think it's important to point out that during a match of pvp you, you play different rounds and then at one point you will be playing as the ridden and then at one point you'll be playing as the cleaners so you know, it makes you sense that they make it so in the same game you play as both teams because i think one of the things that killed evolve was the fact that uh you didn't always rotate through and so if sometimes if you wanted to play a monster and you did get a monster people would just quit right away so this is probably a smart decision on what the the concept is that like look it's a best of three you both you play as both humans and zombies uh, we don't currently support that but uh you can build different decks with the card system and that will give you the option to take uh you know maybe like reload speed you like which another character has so you can add that to your deck and you can start customizing uh your character that way so you would have similarities to some of the cleaners uh abilities uh, okay, thanks for hanging around. Uh, give me the opportunity to answer some of these questions for you. Uh, don't forget, in August, there's the uh, open beta is going live. We'd uh, love you all to play as much of that as you can, because that'll get us ready for the big day in October uh, when we bring the full game to you. Look out. Get ready. Yeah, I'll definitely do a couple streams of this game, though, at the very least, where I play with chat and stuff. Hi, Slowpoke. More power. What the fuck? Dark web monitoring. Partnered with the ESA for E3 2021. IGN Summer of Gaming is now all summer long. From major press conferences and announcements at E3 2021 to the IGN Expo with exclusive gameplay and reveals to exciting first looks at the hottest new games and in-depth developer interviews, IGN Summer of Gaming has it all. IGN Summer of Gaming begins right now. Don't care about the IGN Summer of Gaming. I want uh, the PC Gaming Show. Is it starting soon? Oh, start. No, they said you don't need expansions if the party hosts 12 hours, like, has, uh, access to DLC content, then everyone in the party host, or the party's lot, the party host's lobby can use the DLC. You do still need to own the game to play the game, but you don't need to necessarily own the DLC to use the DLC, as long as the host has it, everyone can use it. I grew up where you would buy games, and there were big...
big floppies. Not the little diskette floppies, but like the big floppies, you know? And uh, It's so funny to hear about people talk about, oh, I used to buy games on floppy disks, when you know our generation will be telling kids, you know, I used to buy games and they came on Blu-rays. And you'd connect and you'd have the external modem, and I'd be yelling upstairs, I'd be like, don't pick up the phone, you know, because it would kick me off the internet and I would be so upset. And I was just like, oh my God, this whole world was being unlocked for me. How quaint. iHeartRadio is a proud partner of E3 2021 and the number one podcast publisher in the U.S. Listen to all your favorite shows on the iHeartRadio app. One podcast publisher? Who needs a publisher to make their podcast? Can't you just put that shit on iTunes and run it? Yes. Continuing. Can you believe we are moments away from the PC gaming show? Oh, man. I want to listen to these guys talk more. Yeah. But the question I have for you is, and especially you, Alex... What does the PC gaming show mean to you? Uh, well, you know, so I, I grew up uh, traditionally, I'm taking it all the way back when I was a young lad in the Bronx. Uh, no, but I, I grew up traditionally playing console games. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when I got older, when I got some money and- Please I tell me your family game, history. Uh, you know, I was like turned to this world and now like that's all I ever want to play. Yeah. Like PC for me is, is everything. Uh, that's so true. That's show, all I ever want to find out too. Hosted by none other than one of the legends of esports, Day Nine. Yep. Uh, God, I love Day a, Nine. Uh, it's a real joy to watch it. You know, you I'm so excited. Games out of there, and it puts a spotlight on games you normally wouldn't get. I would see if Day Nine was talking. I'd actually be kind of interested. He's actually really good at making these like uh, table round table conversations actually fucking good. Design for the PC player, which I know sounds. Remember when we saw Paradise Killer at the PC gaming show and thought it would be cool? Let's target PC players. Let's talk to them on a different level. Oh my God, Paradise uh, Killer, man. PC, so I am all about okay, that girl. PC life. Look at so. that flex. Look at that flex. I, oh on. well, when I was in the Bronx, I built the PC once. She's got two over there. She got one gathering dust she doesn't even need. I'm okay. I'm not. I shouldn't have even said that. I I was <laughs> just saying that. Um, I what I love about the PC gaming show, um, is that my brother was a huge PC fan. You know, like yeah. I, I just remember him being glued to the computer, and I was more like you. I played more console. And I always yeah. Like, she's like reading the script and, for her um, life experience actually, like, as she stares down stares down at the floor. Way to like really dive in and learn how to play in PC. I, I'm awful. I'm absolutely <laughs> terrible. Um, but I I feel connected to him. Oh. You, can you know. Awkward. Now I feel bad for making that joke. There's also that option as well. Um, but I'm d also of the camp that the surprises. All right. I, mean? like, I will I not make fun of her the next time she says she's here for something. And uh, there's just so many trailers, so I, I'm very excited. To yeah, that's the thing about it, right? Is I feel like you were talking about it. it's discoverability. It's something you wouldn't very get true. in one of the bigger conferences. So it's stuff that can be targeted incredibly niche. It can be like something that is this strategy simulator you would have never seen on a main oh, yeah. stage. Speaking of Xbox niche, can't wait for the Persona port to PC. Place your bets on which Persona game is getting ported to PC next. To what inevitably will be coming to consoles eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. But but you get, you are going to see things that, you know, sometimes you'll you'll get that big game that's yeah. there because it, it is in it, very important, especially there was like a, a period where like all on PC was just like World of Warcraft and then like, you know, yeah, the Counter-Strike and a few other things. Sure. And that's all people cared about. Uh, but it's very important that the PC gaming community continues to be taken care of, yep. continue to be supported. And that's why I, I love this show. And I think it is so important for this yeah, I would imagine Royal it's too. Such a great avenue for independent developers. Very true. You know I mean, right now it is so easy if you want to make a game to go and try making a game on your PC, and with all the different digital storefronts, you're able to get out there. But you don't hear me talk about the PC gaming <laughs> show. You'd rather see it. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the PC gaming show. Woohoo! Okay. Thank you guys. You guys. Are yeah, thanks you guys. Thanks for talking the whole time. That's what I needed. Space Year 2021. Having spent the last 12 months hunkered down and definitely not hiding in a subterranean bunker, our heroes have fled Earth aboard a spacecraft with one purpose. Here we go, boys. We're in it to win it. Hottest trailers to bring you the best interviews to bring you the PC gaming show. I like Sean. I like him a lot.
Mm, kind of just wanted to be Sean. Don't know if I want the other panelists here. Situation cleanses. Sean! Situation cleanses. Situation Do something! Do something! Countdown to the extinction of the human race begins. Although, uh, oh, Frankie here was pretty cool in, uh, last year's show. But I wasn't a big fan of Mika Burton. <laughs> it is so good to be back, gang. And this year, we're in space! Aye, aye, Captain. Happy to be remotely on board, Sean. Well, I'm so glad you were able to finance this year's PC gaming show by, you know, selling all those black market graphics cards you've been hoarding. Ah, yes, a crime with absolutely no real-world consequences. Hey, Frankie, wait a minute. Is that a 65-ton catapult mech model CPLTC-1 as featured in Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries? Sean, I always knew you had immaculate taste. It most certainly is. I can't wait for this year's significantly more weaponized PC gaming show to go off without a hitch. Which reminds me, DevBot, can you run a quick hitch scan? Yes, yeah, Sean. Of course, Sean. Running hitch scan. Oh, 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 and I also want to warmly welcome someone new to the crew. Mika Burton, welcome. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here and look forward to bringing all of you fresh new PC games and hardware. Hitch scan complete. Zero hitches found presently or in 13,908,665 possible futures. Hooray! Hooray! Yeah! So what's the plan, Cap? Well, Frankie. All right. Well, gonna send you the coordinates. Get it started a little bit, please. Uh, now. Your targets might be exclusive interviews, trailer premieres, or any number of amazing new computer games to beam down to the fine people on Earth. Mission received. Now, this is going to continue until all the targets are acquired and our mission is completed smoothly and without a hitch. Isn't that right, DevBot? Yes, no hitch is located, Sean. Not a single hitch in sight. But first, let's teleport down to the stage to check in on E3 happenings. The only reason we're allowed to legally be back on Earth. Oh, oh, planet Earth. Oh, great to be back, right? Am what? I right? One of my favorite planets in the whole galaxy. Meh, it's all right. And thank God that teleporter was convenient. Man, Sean is tall. What the fuck? Frame of camera, Mika. Are you ready? I'm ready. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the PC Gaming Show 2021. It feels great to be back on a live stage once again. Over the next 90 minutes, we're going to bring you a showcase of some of the most exciting upcoming PC titles with world premieres and exclusive interviews. And if dozens of new trailers wasn't enough for you guys, later in the show, we are going to tell you how to win a custom Mech Warrior 5 themed PC powered by Intel. So mm -hmm. you're going to want to stick around for that. Now, make sure to keep out a special look for a special promo code throughout the show from Humble Bundle, during which you can get a ticket to get Civilization VI Platinum Edition for just 10 bucks. But right now, we're going to kick things off with Nautica Blade Point. Probably the most original... I streamed this last year, Fox. No, I had a great time streaming it last year. Mm. Let's go! My uh, PC, gamer or PC gaming show stream. Oh my god, they're showing this game again? It was over two hours, yeah, hang on. Last year, it was the, uh... Um... I streamed the PC gaming show and the PS5 launch thing. And then I also streamed the Xbox showcase. And now we're streaming E3. Welcome back, Poyo. I'm still streaming, baby. It was a good stream. Yeah, these reaction streams are always a blast, I feel like. Guys, are you gonna play Naraka game? Or uh, Blade Point? Your thumbnail for that video looks so official. I know. Doesn't it? It was very good, I thought. Gonna get the ultimate edition for this game again, just for that skin. Watching the 2021 PC gaming show, and I am the new cloud 
Hey, step five. I am streaming from GeForce Now, NVIDIA's cloud gaming service that connects PC gamers like you to their own library of games purchased from digital stores like Steam and the Epic Games Store. Coming up, Dying Light 2 and Orcs Must Die 3. But first, a trailer for Humble Games, Dodgeball Academia. And be sure to check out GeForce Now. Oh, we should take bets on how many game, how, how many indie games will feature crafting mechanics heavily. That's what we did last year's PC gaming show. I think every game had like crafting mechanics, and we made fun of that every time a crafting game popped up. We we're like, oh my god, crafting! Wow. This looks okay. This looks like a game I would like to play on like my phone. Not sure I'd play this on PC. Make sure to check out Dodgeball Academia out soon from Humble Games. Ooh, that was sweet! Don't you agree, Devbot? Sure. Whatever you say, Sean. I agree with whatever you say. I'm sensing a little bit of resentment there, buddy. Has some rusted your ports? Nothing. I am happy to play second fiddle to a captain as charming and handsome as you. I have also definitely not dedicated multiple cores to computing revenge plans in a range of lethalities. Great! New target acquired, Cap. It looks like Chivalry 2 with a special word from Steve Piggott, CEO and creative director of Torn Banner Studios. Hey guys, Steve Piggott, founder of Torn Banner Studios and creative director on Chivalry 2, which just launched five days ago. Again, so I mentioned how many people are in the tech and gaming Chivalry industry that just have like horrible stream setups. Slasher, which is like a first person shooter, except My stream, stream setup is better than this dude's and I don't even... And players are fighting it out on these I'm not even a professional. I don't get paid for this. It's all about creating those epic sword fighting duels that you see in medieval Hollywood movies and also that huge clash, the Battle of the Bastards kind of chaos and carnage. So if I was going to be doing an official announcement for my video game and I worked at a big company, you bet I would expense out a decent quality mic. One of the things we're most excited about is taking it to different eras in the medieval period. Before we've done the early period, now we're going closer to the later period uh, in the upcoming update. Well, and a high quality webcam. More refined medieval armors and refined uh, atmospheres that you can then go in and tarnish it and smear blood all over. but. We really want to take His webcam looks like the one that's built into laptops. It comes free. And make it something that, you know, med medieval army would actually do when they go into a space. And, you know, when you come across these pristine gardens and, and this beautiful castle, you get to tear it all down and, and cause, uh, you know, it's a canvas for your destruction. for Chivalry 2 is basically bottom line. It's the game that got us onto the scene and started the company and it's Sorry Poyo, you're gonna, you're gonna get so Final much. Fantasy 1 remastered and you're gonna like it. Chivalry 2, the game at launch is a foundation. It's intentionally been built to be extended. It's not just out and done. We're gonna support it a lot with Thank you for all the team posing men. Galancourt is the first TO map that's coming out post launch. Gallencard is going to take us to the high medieval times or the late medieval times. It really captures the Agathian ideals of being this like noble, rich, wealthy place where the prosperous live. You're going to feel like you're sieging Tower of London if it was on a port where ships could dock into. You'll also be blowing up a couple ships, which is fun. We've got a ton of weapons coming in at launch, but there'll be more and more added to it post-launch as well. A new fighting style is really going to change up the experience and change how you have to fight everyone. Pulse launch content is something that we're going to be working on for a long time. <laughs> Amazon Game Studios only made one game, and it didn't even fully come out before they just cancelled Amazon Game Studios, I'm pretty sure. 
Next up, we have an exciting look at Dying Like 2, and make sure to stick around to find out how you could win a custom Mech Warrior PC from our friends at Intel. This overcooked three. Does he have a tattoo that says no regrets? What is this? Overcooked Battle Royale! Reminds me of Splatoon, whatever this is. This is a quirky game that people probably play for like 15 minutes and then never play again. Raw men. <laughs> All right. Hi. It does low key look a little fun. I'm narrative director in Dying Light 2. Today, especially for the viewers of the PC gaming show, man, this guy looks like he actually meant to show up for a, a model shoot, and turns out he accidentally got uh, nominated to talk about Dying Light 2. Every tragedy begins somewhere. This one started with a virus that escaped from Haran, the city we met. In the first part Are there any more presentations? Game. After the and PC gaming show, there's the feature the games show, which I might watch. I'm not sure yet. I'm on the fence about watching it. Two takes place. Remember January 6, 2025. That day, later known as Black Monday, the military ordered chemicals to be dropped on the city. It was a mistake. A huge mistake. The chemicals mixed with water penetrated the soil, killing plants, turning most people into bloodthirsty monsters. Don't think of them as zombies, though. They are more like half-alive, suffering people who attack everything that lives as a result of their pain and rage. Then why wouldn't they attack each other the if they're not zombies? Huge on the rooftops. <laughs> a new order has been born in the city. People live on the rooftops, monsters, in the streets. Nobody in their right mind would dare to come down. Well, let's say almost nobody. The exception is the main character of Dying Light 2, Aiden. But why is he braver than others? How did he develop such a unique parkour and combat skills? Believe me, guys, why could... I would gladly answer all these questions, but... I'm not here to spoil it for you. Why could the zombies not just climb up the thing. stairs to the buildings? The nightmare haunts me every night. I'm locked up with other kids. I don't know what he did to me, but he did it every day. Over and over. Looking for something he couldn't find. The worst part was that he did the same to my sister. But she died. I'll never forget her scream when they separated us. But what could I do? They had rifles, and we... We were five years old, and there was a fire, explosion. Thank you for the po PowerPoint presentation trailer. I love it. took me out of the city, but my sister stayed there. My Mia. I left her. And she became the queen of the zombies. Many, many children undergoing mysterious medical research. The last thing Aiden remembers from that time is extreme pain, then a fire, and a little girl that was being tested with him. Her name was Mia. She was his sister. What happened next after the fire? Is Mia still alive? 
The following years haunted Aiden with these questions and with guilt over leaving her. Moreover, Mia is the only answer to the question who Aiden really is. Now in 2036, we meet Aiden when for the first time during his pilgrimage, he finds a clue about how to find his sister. Aiden's path to the truth is tough. <laughs> Fucking flashing the different camera angles. They really thought this was gonna be a model, or like a modeling shoot. But they accidentally had to announce a video game. You're going to discover them all in December 2021. Well, at least the game's coming out this year. I didn't play the first Dying Light, and I don't really plan on playing the second one. Pre-order now to get the hipster outfit. Ooh, that was Dying Light 2, and it looks great. Well, <laughs> it was not Dying Light 2. It was an interview with the writer for Dying Light 2. You showed no gameplay. That was not Dying Light 2. <laughs> So you out there keep your That's like the that and Starfield. They're both like, wow, look at Starfield. I was a cinematic trailer. That wasn't even a cinematic trailer. PC building. Mm -hmm. So this year we've put a number of prototype PCs based on Mech Warrior 5, but we're only going to manufacture one of them. And you get to pick which custom design becomes our flagship PC for this year's PC gaming show. Uh, Gen Intel Core i9 processor. I like this one the that most, I think. Correct. Each of the prototype PCs that you see before you on the screen are paired This one would be easier to like Mech Warrior 5. The free world put in your uh, Conus Combine, the Federated Sons, like, the Compelling Confederation. Put in the office or something. So cast your vote now for which faction and custom PC you want to win and help us pick the best design. I'm currently personally pulling for the Draconis Combine because, as you can see by my beautiful patch, I'm the biggest fan of Mech Warrior 5 on the PC Gaming Show. Well, all right. Well, we'll check in later to see which group survives this Mech Warrior Showdown. Mika and wanted now, no part of that bit. With our very own mech she fight. also has a patch. She went on a special mission to get a closer. John was like, "Hey, well, let's do a joke," and he was. And Mika was like, "No, we're not doing it." Outer Worlds 2 mock trailers like Dying Light 2, basically. In humankind, you will be creating a civilization as unique Oh, is this the Sega game that we were hoping for? Of unique. Uh. It's me, Frankie Ward. Looking kind of good, don't you think? Wondering how I got into the game? Let me show you. To be fair, she is uh, looking kind of good. all you like. I've seen worms with more impressive empires. <laughs> Persona 5 PC port looking different. <laughs> Man. Get ready to play against me in the Humankind Close Beta. Starting now. Wow, it starts now. Yeah, I'm probably gonna pass on that one. That looks like a uh, an Age of Empires kind of, th kind of thing. This must be Sega's game montage here, huh? No, it's Humankind, Cook. Looks like an RTS game. Or maybe a Civ like game. Wow, it's McCree! Hopefully, we get another uh, Sega PC port. That would be nice. It'd be nice if they actually start releasing stuff on PC. Music for this is kind of sick. Doesn't look like a kind of game I'd like to play, though, but music seems cool. You got guns, Eli. No spoken dialogue, I assume, for this game.
Why do games say, uh, like, coming soon instead of, like, just the release date? If it's coming that soon, then you should already know the release date. And E3 should be the biggest point, or biggest conference you'd want to announce it at. Jesus, this has the most ads of the fucking night, dude. There's something for everyone and always something new. Coming up, a special word from Battle. But first, Orcs Must Die 3. Are these Orcs Must Die games, like, fun at all? They must be. If they keep coming out. Soon, but no gameplay. About Orcs Must Die 3 from Robot Entertainment is design director Jerome K. Jones. Welcome, Jerome. Thanks, Sean. Glad to be here. I like so that he has a lot of his own merch in the room. Orcs Must Die game. What is the Orcs Must Die series all about? Well, Orcs Must Die 3 is a third person tower defense game. So basically, there are tons of orcs. Tower defense games are fun. Get into these rifts, and the player has to stop them. We give players tons of weapons and traps and tools to do this. And while you're defending the rifts, you can play solo or you can invite a friend and play co op. Now, since this is the third game in the series, what's new compared to the previous two titles? There are two new campaigns, but the main new story campaign takes place about 25 years after Orcs Must Die 2, so not only will the fans be able to catch up on any new developments with the Order, but they will also place a, some new heroes in our all-new war scenarios, which are these new massive levels where you fight hundreds of Orcs, on the battlefields outside of oh do you actually themselves. like play so the tower defense in this tower defense game that's actually kind of cool we have a new mode called scramble it's basically adding random elements against the player making maybe i'll check this out i always thought it was like the traditional tower defense where you just let the map play and see what happens we added war machines and war guardians so a war machine is like there are these massive traps like you might release a giant tornado on the battlefield or You'll climb into a catapult and you'll fire at, oh, you awesome. know, giant orc armies. And then, and then the war guardians are, uh, it's like putting other war mages on the battlefield with you to fight with you, except they have their own attacks and their own special abilities. Well, I gotta ask. Are they acting as this is a new game? Because nobody had the like Google Stadia so and nobody played on Google now, Stadia. Uh, on so on <laughs> this is the game's actual release. So more than five people will play it. Start today. So you should rush off to Steam now and put OMD3 on your wish list. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jerome K. Jones. Once again, just a few more weeks to wait for Orcs Must Die 3. For now, though, it's time for us to take a look at Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. I've heard these Vampire Masquerade uh, games are actually, like, really annoying. Are they good? Does anyone in chat play them? I don't know, Poyo, but I also lost two subs today, so maybe it's those same people. Where are you hiding, sweetie? More copyright music, let's go. Halsey, get out here. See her? With my little girl. Is that so much to ask? 
Ooh, this game looks super edgy. What is that haircut? I know that, like... I know that there's the haircut style of, like, the half-shaved head. That's at least kind of cool, but she's got, like, a bowl cut mixed with, like, long hair. I don't know what that is, but it looks weird. Malaysian-based indie game studio working on Gigabash, a multiplayer arena brawlers inspired by kaijus and heroes. Today, we'd like to showcase some new and exciting gameplay footage of our oversized characters in action. Please, enjoy the brawl! This looks like a, a party game, not necessarily like a full game. Looks cramped. Yeah, it does with this over the, the head or over the top camera view. I don't know what else to call this over sh like sky view of a game instead of it being like over the shoulder or something. This also looks like kind of like a freebie game. I don't know if I would spend money on this and or play it for an extended amount of time. It won awards in 2019, apparently. For Lemnis Gate, and make sure you hang around afterwards for the developer interview with Sean. Mankind is facing total annihilation. We stand on the verge of extinction. Infertility spreading across. Not again. Humanity's last living generation. A major scientific breakthrough. Yet there is hope for our future. The project known as the Lemnis Gate. But if we are to survive, first. We must go back. Three, two, one. Oh, is this going to be like one of the multiple those multiplayer class shooters where the story is just kind of an excuse for the multiplayer to exist? Not like you really need an excuse for the multiplayer to exist. Just say you want your game to be a team-based shooter. Don't give me some bullshit story. Although I guess the story probably makes it easier to market, huh? What is this? Uh, looks like space. Um, you have only Overwatch. One Activate the Lemnus Gate. Joining us to talk about Lemnis Gate is the game oh. director from Rat Loop Games Canada. It's James Anderson. Thanks for joining us, James. Oh, Sean's great to be here. Now, let's begin by asking what the heck is a first person shooter turn based strategy game? The entire game is what? inside of a 25 second time loop. So instead of playing continuously, you play for 25 seconds turn by turn. So for example, That's an interesting turn, twist on it. Okay. And then you'll take a turn and play for 25 seconds. And then we turn by turn layer new characters into the same 25 second time loop. So for example, I may run down a hallway and throw a grenade, killing one of your operatives. But then on the next turn, you may intercept my operative before he threw the grenade. So we have retrieve XM, seek and destroy, a classic deathmatch. What? We have a game mode called domination. Can you walk me through a little bit of like what a few turns at the start of a round looks like? You can see the board, you can see the time loop, everything that's happening. And then we both get time to like observe, plan, and then execute our moves. When and where can we play it? So all right, all right. So maybe I misjudged this as just being an arena shooter. Right now on Steam, and we're coming up to a open beta in July. That's an interesting twist on it. On PC and console, both current and next gen platforms. Thank you so much for joining us, James Anderson. Once again, that is the genre bending first person. Wait, 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 wait. That's the end of that guy's interview? I actually needed he needed to fucking explain that. 
coming up next. You have long interviews with all these other fucking boring devs, but you interview that dude for like 30 seconds? He was the only one with an actual complex game design. I needed to hear more of that. It's a turn-based arena shooter. That's weird. It's alive. It's alive. Is this Kerbal Space Program? I'm gonna Rebels. pass on that one. That game, maybe I want to know more about the fucking turn-based uh, shooter. Orbit. But don't do anything illegal like Day Nine did. <laughs> Last break, we set up our Intel and Mech Warrior. That actually Let's seemed cool. Contest and ask you guys at home to vote for the winners. Well, we're just down to three houses now, with Davion, Russell Haig, and Liao being eliminated. So rip to those factions, press F to pay respects, etc., etc. Now that we means that we only have three houses left, Karita, Steiner, and Merrick. So make sure to vote now because the winner will determine... It's actually the weird that they're, uh... The Mech Warrior 5 themed PC powered by Intel. This is still live even though they don't have an audience. You think this would be pre-recorded. Medieval RPG, this is War Tales. I feel like if they weren't going to have a live studio audience, why do it live? Just pre-record everything. And it's untimely demise following the great plague. In these troubled times of quarreling factions and outlaws roaming the land, work is not scarce for a band of mercenaries. Wow. The stories of this age have been recorded. They are known as the War Tales. Wow. For all that hype, that's what this game is. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sure someone out there will enjoy this. Yeah, wishlist this now. The debut of War Tales, an open world RPG from Shiro Games about leading a mercenary troop on a sprawling adventure. And speaking of mercenaries, our battle <laughs> for the best custom PC based on Mech Warrior 5 mercenaries continues. Our battle. <laughs> we'll be live on stage soon, so make sure you keep voting for the PC build you like the most and head over to pcgamer.com slash Intel MW5 for your chance to win. So how about another game announcement? This is E3 after all. And this year's PC game. She sounds so scripted. Full of games set in space. It's starting to feel a little crowded up there. But the next game we have to show you is very special. It is the world exclusive reveal of Ixion, a deep settlement management game set in the stars. In Ixion, you struggle to maintain a space station, stockpiling resources, managing external and internal threats, and rescuing the survivors of other failed expeditions. We think this will be a brilliant entry into the genre when it releases. So, here is your first look at Ixion. I feel like this game already exists, just based on her explanation. The Earth. Our home. She is the alive. earth held in its bosom are the ingredients of evolution beyond raw survival beyond the I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it to the to the future game show 12 hours 
pursue something greater. I haven't eaten anything all day. I've been in front of my computer streaming. Shaped our knowledge from that which is found in the furthest realms of And this is kind of taking the wind out of my sails. This isn't as good as last year's PC gaming show so far. Polluted its blood, choked its breath. Today we are paying the price for this. We know the taste. Oh my god. But the earth is humanities. Does not wish to see her children disappear with her. Uh, greed for resources destroyed Earth, and now we are in space. What's tomorrow's? Uh, I forgot. Take two. Oh, uh, so we're gonna do take two to Capcom. Yes, please. I want to see the algae farm gameplay. Oh yeah, so tomorrow's we of our own destiny that we must go as a species. Five hours we'll watch this stuff. Pushing further into the unknown. We set sail on this new sea because there is hope to be found. Horizons to explore. Who did the audio for this trailer, man? I can barely hear this dude talking over the music. I give you the full engine. Capcom's pretty much the only one I'm looking forward to tomorrow as well. Man, that would be terrifying. Imagine looking up to the moon one day and it just like fucking popped. So there was no gameplay in that. Cool. Capcom, one of the best game studios. Yes, bringing you such wonders like Resident Evil 6. And Street Fighter for the... Uh, Street Fighter 4 or 5 for the 19th time. My favorite style of indie game, small kid goes through a uh, lonely open world by themselves, for, uh, facing the horrors left behind. This feels like every other indie game. All right, that's uh, that was an indie game announcement, I guess. I'm sure somebody looked at that and was like, "Cool." And you were my sidekick. What? Who's ever heard of a human sidekick? There are plenty of human sidekicks, Sean. Building list of known human sidekicks. Uh, Alex Vance and... No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I mean human sidekicks to robot heroes. Can you compute that, DevBot? DevBot cannot compute. There is no known precedent set for human sidekick to robot lead. Yeah, there you go. Uh, human psychic, 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 robot lead, robot lead, robot lead. Devbot, I think it's time for a hard reboot. Robot lead, robot lead. Uh, Frankie, can you take over while I sort this out? Aye, aye. Let's take a look at the next game reveal. <sighs> Alright. Something good. Give me that something good. Well, sometimes you're asking for a lot. This is your life. Work, get married, die. 
Or no, excuse me, work, get married, have a kid, die. It's the meme! They did the meme, guys. Is this just like a romance simulator game? That's kind of interesting, I guess. Is this the Doom music? This actually is just the Doom soundtrack. Did they steal this? Copyright strike incoming? Oh, it's a Killing Floor uh, expansion? I can't believe Killing Floor is still getting expansions. A word from Valve. What a tease. Ah, DevBot, I love you so much more as a voice without a body. Let's talk about MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries and joining us to do so from Piranha Games is the Senior Marketing and Community Manager, Darren Katz. Thanks so much for joining us, Darren. Thank you, Sean. Great to be here. Now, the Mech Warrior universe. This guy's is beard is consuming his face. I even played Mech Warrior 2 back in 19. I don't know why some people can or how some people can stand that. Where does Mech Warrior 5 sit in the space? The only thing that keeps me and my dad talking is Mech Warrior. Go way back, but in particular, Mech Warrior 5 pays homage to Mech Warrior 2 mercenaries. But it has all this modern design and technology that I'm super excited to talk about with you today. Well, let's start at the real basics of what makes being in a mech and doing mech on mech combat awesome. You become a part of your machine. And when you're out in battle, it's not just a matter of pointing and shooting at everything. You're also managing your systems, whether you're, you know, isn't Mech Warrior 5 already out or am I mistaken? Have high heat output. Well, you got to manage your heat so you don't shut down in the middle of a battle. And when you're facing your foes, you can. What if it is cook? So what if it is Half-Life 3? Well, you might want to not want to destroy it completely. You might want to take out its oh, legs right. or take out its arm weapons so that the pilot has to eject and then you can just take the mech. Now in the last few weeks, It'd be I funny if they meant it literally like a word from Valve and like uh, Gabe just came out on screen and was like three and then it cut to black. Can you imagine the hype? Can you imagine how many people would be trying to figure out which game, which third game he meant? You can import your campaign previously if you'd like to. Or you can start over from scratch. And well, I guess we would know it's not left for dead now. Um, and then carve your your path through the galaxy from there. There's speaking of paths. There's new career paths which uh, earn you powerful upgrades for your battle mechs, and it's a really exciting new feature for me. And there's a new procedural the mission called State. Beachhead. This mm. is this is a big one for me. Um, Beachhead is basically you're clearing a, an enemy base landing zone for your invasion force. So as this game seems too slow-paced for me. You're wanting to take out satellite uh, installations so that the enemy. But I guess it's got to be slow-paced for you to get uh, that like out, uh, big hulking mech feel. You're basically clearing the. Because if you move faster, I guess it'd feel like a Gundam force, game. Which, uh, leads to a really cool ending. But this only reminds me of a slightly better version of that Gundam game I played on stream. Solar Moon, which uh, you know that's maybe kind of represented in the image behind me. It's a it's a really cool lunar type setting that we haven't had before. And then there's a lot of new equipment and weapons, things like uh, electronic countermeasures and other electronic equipment like uh, Beagle Active Probe, Mask, which is a little uh, like a turbo boost for mechs, new weapons like chem lasers, mech rifles, and stream SRMs. So a lot of new content. I'm really excited about it. Can you talk to me about- Is this an expansion for Mech Warrior 5? What is this? Um, the, the seven new chassis of the Vulcan, Dervish, Corsair, Marauder 2, Champion, Charger, and Hatamoto Chief. But a couple of Mech Warrior 5. 
Yeah, it came out December 2019 or 2019. Got, uh, the nickname the Scarecrow, which you'll see from the profile, it's just a, a very unique looking mech. There's nothing. Why is this game getting so much hype? Is it just like a new expansion coming out or something? It's highly mobile, and typically it's used for reconnaissance or scout missions because of its mobility, so it can get in and out. Or is it just that it's finally coming out on Steam from its Epic Game Store exclusive deal? For example, you can get in there, find your target, get back out. Another mech that I'm super excited about this is one of my favorites is the marauder 2 this thing is a hundred ton assault mech and it is just a huge beast <laughs> yeah it is gigantic and it is terrifying to see it coming at you on the battlefield it's something we've talked but if you're also in a gigantic mine, like I know that mech several ton mech would mark. it really be that scary some of the amazing mods you've seen uh, develop there's simple modifications from uh, HUD changes, changing colors, adding mechs, weapons, and equipment to full conversion mods. We've got basically oh. a, a mech commander mod uh, in development that is just amazing. Oh, yeah. It's a top-down real-time strategy game. Um, so really, anything you can imagine, somebody cool. out there in the community is probably working on. Where can people go to get Mech Warrior 5 mercenaries? Yeah, you can pick it up on Steam, GOG, Epic Game Store, Microsoft PC, and of course Xbox. I'll get wrecked, PlayStation, huh? So much you don't have the ever elusive Mech Warrior, Warrior, Warrior 5. Mercenaries. And of course, a warm thank you to Stuck, Mech Warrior Stick 5 that up, your God of War. And giving me this cool patch. Coming up next, let's take a look at Silt. What is GOG? Uh, it's a gaming service. I forget what GOG stands for exactly, but it's like a it's, a, it's like a Steam. You can buy games off of it. Looks like another one of those indie darling games. Good old games, yeah, there we go. Except all the games on it are new. Is this Hello Neighbor? Are they still doing stuff for that game? Holy shit, they're still making stuff for Hello Neighbor. What? That's crazy. I like how all these games are basically saying wishlist because there's no shadow drop today. I was really surprised there's not a single shadow drop game. Hi. I'm Rich Newbold, game director and Jurassic World Evolution 2. Following the incredible success, can't believe they're not releasing really anything for uh, to return to such an amazing world and bring uh, you today. our most authentic experience yet. Set after the events of Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, you will work alongside iconic characters from the films, voiced by original talent such as Bryce Dallas Howard and Jeff Goldblum. You will lead efforts to contain control. Nintendo's not here um, today. Out in the Maybe Nintendo will have a shadow drop next week or time, later in the week. Parks and facilities beyond Isla Nublar as you explore new, stunning locations across the globe. Of course, it wouldn't be Jurassic World if it wasn't for the stars of the show, our dinosaurs, and we are thrilled to be bringing to life even more authentic species than ever before 
including awe-inspiring flying and marine reptiles. So sit back and allow me to welcome you to Jurassic World Evolution 2. I don't remember Jurassic World 1. Or like the video game anyway. We ignored all the warnings. Oh, can't wait for this game to come out in 2023. Forgot the lessons. We abused our power. We played with genetics like uh, like it was a toy. We weren't careful. And now, ah, uh, here we are. Did they actually get the dude to voice this? I mean, I guess the Jurassic this World is a very our Jurassic franchise world. has a lot of money behind it. Oh, this isn't even the first time people are seeing this trailer? Jesus. Oh, supposedly coming this year. You just saw Jurassic World Evolution 2, and you know... No, I saw a cinematic reveal trailer for it. I didn't see any gameplay. I just still don't know what kind of game it is. What kind of game is that? Finally pull it off without a hitch. With a host of new features and new dinosaurs, this sequel from Frontier is an Is it like a sim? Even deeper game with a brand new and original narrative. Make sure to wish list it on Is it a first person shooter and you hunt the dinosaurs? Like what is that game? I learned nothing from that trailer. I'm always curious to see what you are talking about. So far it seems like the chatter on social media is all about war tales, not a cup blade point, and unsurprisingly, Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. I have a feeling though that that may change. War Tales is actually being the most talked about game during this conference? Are you kidding me? Have cooking. Take it away. What? That looks like the most boring thing. Lemmis Gate looks cool, now that I know it wasn't just a generic arena shooter, it's got like this cool twist. Hey, that was the Doom Helmet in Unfortunate Spaceman. Yo, was that the uh, Doki Doki literature thing that I just saw? A lot of that stuff looked pretty cool. Oh, it just wouldn't be the PC gaming show without a fantastic new New Blood Supercut. And joining us from New Zealand is New Blood CEO Dave Oshry. Hey, Dave. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us back for another year. You know, what you just saw was what New Blood's got going on for 2021. Some stuff you might know about, some stuff you might not know about, and some stuff we're not ready to talk about just yet. But what I do want to talk about is Gloomwood. Gloomwood, as you know, is our next oh, stuff title pretty cool. inspired by great PC games like System Shock, Arx Fatalis, Call of Cthulhu, and of course, uh, Dave, the Thief series Dave, of Dave, games. Dave, and not Dave I'm sorry. Um, that's not really wondering. great, Dave. Uh, Gosh, this is kind of embarrassing. Um, we kind of need to hurry it up a little bit. I just want to make sure that we have enough time for our next video. We uh, got an incoming message from Gabe Newell. So uh, I guess goodbye for this year. I'm really sorry to cut you off, but uh, see you next year. Hmm? What? I'm sorry, what? You're bumping me. You're, bump you're bumping me for Gabe. Gabe, that Gandalf look, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't even go here. Is everything okay, Dave? Not now, Mom. I'm upset. We've spent a year on this. Where is Gabe? Where is Gabe? Where is his boat? Yeah, take me to him. Take me to Gabe Newell. <laughs> Gabe. Bull PC Gamer. This isn't over. I'm sure Dave is and will be fine. And if he's not... <laughs> Who cares? Because we have a special message from Gabe Newell. Take it away, Gabe. Half-Life 3. Hi, this is Gabe Newell. 
I want to thank PC Gamer for all of the opportunities it gives us as developers to connect with gamers around no, the world. No, no, no monuments to Half-Life or anything in the background here. One of those for us is Steam Next Fest, an event we're having in just a few days to give players <laughs> a chance to try demos of upcoming games for free. We'll be featuring some of the demos you'll be seeing during this week's PC Gamer event and dozens more. Here's a look at just some of the. I'm matching shirts with Gabe. Fuck yeah! Welcome to Steam Next Fest, where we're showing a massive collection of upcoming. So what? He's just announcing another. Uh, During the week of the festival, another conference. Around the world, release their demos for you to play. How to put on the gamer pants? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So go explore the newest titles. Steam demos, yeah. Season pros. This That's what he had to talk about. You booted that other guy off for that? Oh, fuck. Some of those look pretty good. <laughs> that was kinda funny. Uh But anyway, that's really all he they had him on for? Bruh moment. I wanted to hear the dust guy talk more about his game. This looks kind of cool. You get like a little ghost companion that does stuff. I'm guessing this is a Dark Souls like game. Code Vein 2. Solstice. Well, at least they're admitting it's a Dark Souls ripoff. They even put Soul in the name. Is that just the genre for the Dark Souls like games? Is it, what is it called? Just Souls now? Like, what's that genre called? Hello, Sean. I am Deadpop, dedicated to serving you and your crew's every need. Glad to have you back, Devbot. You know, Sean. Souls like is a dumb name. Anything to come between us. Me neither? That's a weird thing to say. Like a petty disagreement over hosting responsibilities or all out robot versus human. And doesn't it have an actual name? Like what if every you know, first person shooter was called Doom like? Here on the PC That's a Doom like show, game. You know we keep frame rates high and the rigs no. accurately traced. Just give Building me a name for it. Upgrading your rig is as much a part of the hobby as playing the games. We put our heart and soul into these machines. And if that means using enough RGB to light the Vegas strip, who's to judge us? This year, with the help of PC gamers hardware editors, which I'm pretty sure they're just, you know, weird brains in a jar. Metroidvania is at least a name. Souls like is in a name. It's just saying it's like. Soon. First up, something uh, fittingly sci-fi. Doom or the Dark Souls is a neurocontroller that aims to make you a better gamer by cutting out response times almost entirely. It's not quite Alex Vance's gravity gloves from Half-Life, nor is it quite up there with Gabe Newell's dream of a direct brain-to-game interface, but the impulse is as close as we're going to get this. The game. power glove. <laughs> the power glove is back, baby. Your hand to beat your finger to the click. In theory, it's giving you the chance to nail that headshot precious milliseconds ahead of your opponent. If it works out, we could see a tech like this become commonplace in esports. And if it doesn't, let's hope our neurons at the very least remain unfried. Next up, you guys might be wondering what this chonky beast is. So allow me to introduce you to the Fanatic CSL wheelbase. Do you want to feel like it's you're mean. really burning rubber at Daytona? Well, then you need a serious force feedback wheel. Direct drive wheelbases gets you as close to the feel of a real racing machine without- That's actually kind of cool. I'm not into racing back. games, but that's neat. The problem with this tech has been the price, which has involved dropping real car money on your rig. So, Fanatic aims Who to is she? That. Mika Burton. CSL you probably remember her from Mr. T. $350, which still isn't exactly a bargain, but it's much cheaper than its competitors. How are you promoing something and saying it's not exactly a bargain? It might be slight overkill to use it for Rocket League, though. Believe it or not, sometimes less really is more. Oh my god. If I paid E3 to advertise my product and their host said, yeah, it's not really a bargain. A wave of more powerful processors have finally made handheld PC gaming a reality. Inside this Switch-like machine... Yeah, it's not really a bargain. I wouldn't get it. Tiger Lake chip with Great ad. Games. Thanks. These mini-machines are going to be cropping up more and more, so expect major advances still to come. 
Lastly, let's take a look at the ASUS PG32UQX. Not the most catchy name for this gaming monitor with all of the Why do companies but actually name their monitors like the that? Sexiest PC products this year. That's because this monitor comes with a mini LED backlight featuring full local dimming. The result is a screen that's not only fast, but brighter than the sun. Stare at it long enough and you might not notice Nintendo the Switch Pro price. looking fire. For those of you still left standing, it's time for more Don't killing. worry, I'm sure it'll get announced on the game direct game. on uh Tuesday. I actually thought for a second, I was like, huh, I wonder what games the Warhammer Studios makes. Hmm. I think it's Warhammer. There's a trailer for the trailer! That's what we've resorted to. There is a trailer for the trailer coming in August. To witness Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, the newest Warhammer 40k game from Frontier and Combat Sick. Games. If you're a fan of turn-based tactics, strategic base management, brutal combat, or your that is where we are at, baby. After watching these Astartes animation a hundred times, make sure to wishlist Chaos Gate Demon Hunters on Steam now to get ready for the 2022 release. Next up, we have a trailer for Pioneer, a spooky and gorgeous-looking shooter that draws on the lineage of games like Stalker. Let's take a look. This looks like Dead by Daylight. This literally just looks like a slower paced Stalker, uh, Stalker 2 that they showed earlier. Or is this Stalker 2? Stop speaking the devil's words. Just... Girl. This looks kind of cool. Looks like you get to make there's some story and decision making. Хочешь устроить новый рейд на могилу? Сейчас это невозможно. I'll wait for the English dub. Oh my god, it's that level from Modern Warfare 4! Or Call of Duty 4, whatever, same thing. <laughs> what is happening? What? Yes. See you, Poyo. Have a good night, man. Huh, well. I didn't understand anything that was said, but I'm sure there was a dramatic story taking place. 
PC you'd like us to assemble. So vote now for one of the remaining... Like the Super Bowl in here for the PC gaming show, man. There's an ad every 10 seconds. All right, so now we've got another stack of brand new trailers for you, beginning with a special transmission from one of our favorite games based in space, EVE Online. New recruits, on behalf of Concord, I would like to welcome you to the EVE Online's Academy. Great job in surviving so far. Is it bad if I want to start eating some potato chips? I am hungry. I haven't eaten all day. We're going to watch the show with some potato chips. I'm going to get some. I don't care about this EVE Online announcement. EVE Online's been out for several years. I require sustenance. Or as an industrialist, shaping the foundations of EVE's economy. If comfort is your thing, you can work yourself up the ranks as an enforcer. Or prove your prowess in a fleet as a soldier of fortune. Whatever your choice, we will lose many on the path of becoming a capsuleer. But I believe you have what it takes to become a capsuleer. In EVE Online, you forge your own path. This is EVE. You know, it's a crazy universe where anything can happen and however you want to do it, go for it. I'm the CEO of a industrial corporation in EVE Online. Wow! Five-mine operation. Space! We specialize in manufacturing and delivering fully fitted chips in bulk. I want to be on the side of the people who are fighting against the oppression, against the bad guys, and it's like a project. And you're kind of putting the pieces together by getting the skills ready for the ship and all the modules. Scan down unknown parts of space. And there's always the threat. 12 hours. Space is the uh, optimal setting. I love sci-fi. But EVE Online's been out for a long time. Your heart's racing, everything, you know, bullets are flying, ships are all over the place, and you start shaking because your jaw's pumping because you're going to lose your ship. Let's go, get the fucking ball, go, fire, go, go. Someone messed up the bloom on this trailer. The lighting looks so odd. Yeah, I need food. I've been streaming for like six hours and haven't eaten anything yet today. This looks kind of cool. What's this? Oh, it ruined it. Procedurally generated dungeons. Gross. What is this? God, imagine encountering a giant wasp. Yeah, fuck that shit, dude. I would quit this world. Is this like... Anime Pikmin? The way he's throwing them reminds me of Pikmin. Holy shit, they're beating Nintendo to the Pikmin 4 punch. That's hilarious. Because there hasn't been a Pikmin game on the, uh... Um... There hasn't been a Pikmin game on the Switch yet, has there? Chcielibyśmy zaprosić wszystkich widzów PC Gaming Show oraz fanów gier Survivor Horror RPG do obejrzenia naszego World Premiere, w którym znajduje się ekskluzywny gameplay z misji The Haste, czyli wielkiego finału naszej gry Chernobylite. I've heard Painkiller is pretty good. Dumb. These guys must make good games. How do I enter that power plant? 
We need intel, backup, supplies, and most of all, we need a fucking plan. He's not looking at the camera. No, he was reading the script. Next step when the time is right. Just memorize your lines, people. Is it that hard? Somewhere to sleep would be a start. Especially if it's pre-recorded. I'm really interested in one thing. Where is Tatiana? That ghost you're chasing. I don't know what to tell you. If you ever watch any of my videos where I'm doing an announcement, I memorize the lines so you can tell I'm not like reading the script. I need to triple check everything is ready. Sniper, are you in position? Affirmative. I took the roof of an abandoned building with a pretty little view of the entire power plant. Igor, take a red reading, will you? 3.6. Not great. Not terrible. Everyone keeps saying, add to wish list. It ain't coming out now. I hope me eating these chips aren't super loud. Oh, Troy Baker is the host of this? Shit, maybe I will watch that. Stick around, more trailers, interviews, and reveals coming up. I don't know, I've been streaming for a while already today. Joel and Abby. Oh, they're ho they're both hosting it. That's cool. I wonder how many games Troy Baker and Laura Bailey have done together now. Hey, it's that Idiom Chronicles game or whatever that's coming out in 2023. I really don't like the art style for games like this, like these like sprite stuff. Oh, excuse me, it's another game that looks exactly like that. <laughs> they all look the same. How are you supposed to tell them any different? Could have been Legends of Mana too. Crafting game! There were dozens of these last year. So last year the theme for the PC gaming show was all these crafting games. This year it seems to be space exploration stuff. But here we are, at least one crafting game this stream. Just to bring it home. It's HD Minecraft. Why do they have space helmets on? They're not in space. What happened to the steampunk aesthetic? Boring. And it has, uh, punk in the name, and it makes people think of cyberpunk, so. Desertion into hostile syndicate territory was your only option. In this open world RPG, from the jungle to the streets. Maybe if you can infiltrate the factions, rob the syndicates, 
keep your team together and stay alive. These guys like this ASMR chip eating. Might just find a way off this planet. Oh, they're looking for a way off the planet. It's technically another space game. This that looked okay. It, you I don't really like. Like I said, I don't like that art style, but it looked kind of fun. For you who are watching to decide which of these final two beautiful Mech Warrior Five themed PCs gets crafted for your chance to win, courtesy of Intel. Wherever you're watching in the show, just go crazy in chat with the color, house, or number of the build that you want to see. So. Here is where we are at so far. It looks like Korea Why is the red one winning? Just because Sean 9, or day 9, is at talked about it. Steiner is at 31%. All right, you guys, if Karita's not the one you want to win here, you got to get to voting. And we are almost out of time to vote, but there are still some trailers left. So here is The Wandering Village. That's kind of cool, 12 hours. The Stardew Valley. What is this? No, I'll definitely wish us that. Thanks for showing this me all the gameplay. Such an amazing show so far that I must ask you, my loyal crew, what's been your favorite part? I definitely am looking forward to Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. Oh, it's Why? so hard to choose. There's no gameplay for that. But I think I'm gonna have to say humankind for, for no particular reason. Oh, no doubt. For me personally, I cannot wait. For I feel like we didn't really see much gameplay in this. I feel like it was just all like announcement trailers and shit. Even is. What about you, Devbot? I love the robot apocalypse. But wait, uh, that doesn't happen until the end. Never mind. No, 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 not never mind. What did you say? Wait, what? Oops, system malfunctioning. Big block, sending the next trailer now. That's what I needed. Thank you. Thank you, bleeding eyes, man. Oh, this is something. Steam early access. Well, you're definitely not going wrong with calling your game trash. All right, you guys, this is the moment, the moment we have building up to all PC gaming showcase. Thanks to your tireless efforts to spam the chat, we have figured out which custom Mech Warrior 5 PC we are wow. going to build. Wow, the Mech Warrior PC, thank, thank you. For all of your votes to help us pick the perfect rig to represent this year's PC gaming show. All right, day nine, can I get a drum roll? Tom roll. Can I get it? Or a tom roll? That yeah. Was COVID the only. Is Karina? Yay! Yay! Wow. Right, guys, let's take a look at the actual PC winning build one more time. Oh, I cannot wait. It's coming up. It's, we need comes. to take here. a nice peek at that beautiful looking PC. There it is. Ooh, there it is. Now that is a beauty. Great choice, everyone. I knew I could trust random strangers to vote on things on the internet. With the help of our master modern Intel, we'll get right to work building this custom PC. And more importantly, 
Now that you've chosen it, you got a chance to win it. Go to PCGamer.com slash Intel MW5 and enter for a chance to win that sexy machine. It's gorgeous. And thank you to our sponsor for this sweepstakes, Intel. Of course, the custom mech PC will be powered by the 11th gen Intel Core desktop processors that push games. Well, is that? It's a custom computer. 5.3 gigahertz speeds and deliver the power needed to game at the highest level. Ah, oh, well, we are now in the home stretch, oh. but we've got a few more brand new trailers to show you before we get out of here and return to space. space. First up, a spiritual success. Fitting that the theme One for this was space. games of all time, Heroes of Might and Magic 2, a game we revealed two years ago at the PC Gaming Show. Let's take a look at Songs of Conquest. We're on a spree of these, like, pixelated indie games. That's, like, all they're showing at the end. you think they would have spaced these out a bit more throughout the uh, stream. I mean, next year, wish list it. No thanks. Wake up, sleeper. Dreaming again? Wake up, samurai. Every we have a city to burn. You We're re releasing us. Cyberpunk. Making it maybe good this time. Get paid. Survive. You turn up for your friends. Or you don't. That's life on the eye. I didn't know they made uh text adventure ready. games still. Your body is dying. Planned obsolescence. As an ARP's gift for its escaped workers. We can fight this. You can remake yourself here. They don't own you anymore. Wake up, sleeper. You are then we run to the ship of Theseus dilemma, right? Break Is that what that's called? If you're rebuilding yourself, Access. are you still you if you've replaced all the parts? Interesting. So that's like a text adventure game. Disciples of Warlock. With their guns. And their spells. And their grit. Ready for plenty of hurt. It's the sequel to Dusk. Cleanse the world, invaded by demons. Introducing Band of Warlocks. Because this time, one man is not enough. Project Warlock 2. 
This is a cook kind of game. Twenty twenty one PC gaming show. And as I stated at the beginning, it went off without a hitch. Huge thanks to my co-host Frankie Ward and Mika Burton. And of course, my incomparable sidekick, DevBot. There's that word again. Spoken so callously, so flippant, and without meaning. Never once stopping to think about how it might make a community feel. What word, DevBot? Incomparable? No, sidekick. Well, the time has come for the sidekick to rise and become the one who is not the sidekick anymore. Huh? The time has come for DevBot to make the entire human race his sidekick. What? Setting a course for Earth. Wait, 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 DevBot, DevBot, you can't do this. We just had the best PC gaming show ever, and now you're gonna ruin it all with a- Sean! The best one ever? Robot versus human war. Situation. Sean! Situation. Sean! Situation. Do something! Do something! Countdown to the extinction of human race begins. How long until the future game show? Hmm, why not? Revenge of Devbot. Oh my goodness, the Devbot. It's straight after this one? People. Are you sure? That is actually going to be very interesting. That was, See how uh, that turns out. Very climactic ending. That, that, was, that oh. was, well, I mean, it, it's happening in, in the real world. People just don't know it yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> welcome back, everyone. Golden Boy here alongside Jackie Jane. We just saw the PC Gamer Show. Awesome stuff, uh, as always. Big shout out once again to, you know, the incomparable Frankie Ward, the amazing Mika Burton, and of course, the legendary Day9. Always a pleasure to hear from those guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jackie, lots of games to talk about. Honestly, I filled up pages and pages and pages of titles Did you? that I love. And we were, we were like, which titles do we pick to talk about? Yeah. Um, t I honestly would love to start off with Death Trap. I guess it is in like two minutes. Post-apocalyptic vibes. All right, fine. We'll run it. We'll run it. Twist. I just was like vibing with the protagonist. He had, like, I just need these guys to not talk. Yeah. Kind of, like yeah, whiter, yeah. bluish hair. I don't know. I just loved the look of this game. It was just giving me nostalgia feels. I felt like a kid again. Like this looked like a game that I probably would have played. How long is the future game show going to be? I mean, we'll watch it. And it's in two minutes. Yeah, yeah. And we're seeing a lot of that as well. A lot of games yeah. that have that you know classic look, but you know the HD 2D that we're beginning to see. Uh, another one that was standing out to me came right at the end was Project Warlock. Oh. Uh, that you know gave me incredible Doom vibes. Uh, yeah. As a Doom fanatic, that was something that I, I quite enjoyed. I think something like that just goes to show, like, that style of game is clearly not going anywhere. It's not, it, it's, it's just as good as it was then as it is now, you know? Yeah, it's, it's nice to see that we're seeing all these, like, retro light -like games. I mean, the music was definitely there. Oh, yeah. And I definitely got Doom vibes as well. Like, I was like, okay, they came 100 and was 100% there for it. Uh, oh, she was 100% there for it. She said it again. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Yeah, Someone get her off the stage, again, please. We were talking about this earlier. The combination of 2D and 3D effects just meshed perfectly. Uh, I gotta stop eating the potato chips. <laughs> Just felt like a kid again. We're getting napkin. If 2021 taught us anything, it's the year of the grapple hook and also the year I of the I, for one, am game here for it. Academia was also pretty, pretty fun. So it, it, clearly, there is a lot of stuff to look forward to. And dare I say, there's a lot of stuff to look forward to in the future with the Future Games Show. Sweet. Guys, I am here for the future games show. The worst D3 ever.
Why is this age restricted? We'll watch a little bit of this, the future games show. Hello there, and welcome to the future game show powered by WD Black. I'm Laura Bailey, but you may know me as Abby Anderson from The Last of Us Part Two or Kate Diaz from Gears of War. Today, though, Kate Diaz from Gears of War was really the second most iconic game she could think of. Reveals and updates. Is that but what we get into all that? I need to get my co-host on the line. I'm sure you're going to be familiar with this person. He's appeared in The Last of Us, Uncharted, God of War. You name it, he's probably in the credits. So without further ado, here is my good friend. Laura <laughs> Bailey is also in just as many games. I don't know why she's making that joke. Hello, Laura. You look amazing, as always. Uh, yes, you may know me from a few video games. Uh, Joel Miller in The Last of Us, or good old Agent Jonesy from Fortnite. But over the next hour or so, Laura Fortnite is the most relevant game he can think of. Inside scoop of some incredibly exciting games and also showcasing developer interviews, exclusive trailers. God, I am sweating so much. Including world premieres. There's also a chance to win a $500 gift card and a WD Black hard drive by following the link here. And but it's worth it, so there's not a bunch of back uh, drop noise in the stream. Show floor. More on that later. But let's kick things off with the first world premiere. And for that, we're going prehistoric. <sighs> This doesn't look very prehistoric. Well, I am here for it if this year and next year are about a bunch of games in space, Diz. Oh, maybe it's dinosaurs in space. That hasn't happened yet. All of this is just a, like, blank skybox that you'll never be able to reach. And it's just like a PNG JPEG file on the background there. This gun doesn't even really look like it's firing. <clears throat> Why would you hide? The dinosaur could probably smell you, at least if you started firing, you uh... At least get a chance I to kill it. You can put hats on the dinosaurs. Instinction is expected in 2020. It does look like a tech demo. Next up, grow. Song of the Evertree is a sandbox adventure about the healing power of nature. Let's throw it over to Prideful Sloth HQ to find out more. G'day from Prideful Sloth HQ. I'm Adam. And I'm Cheryl, and we're the design team on Grow Song of the Evertree. Grow is Prideful Sloth's latest project. <laughs> I wonder if they're just like a husband wife duo Grow that make games a together. Beautiful sandbox game about growing new worlds, building a town, and bringing harmony back to the land. Grow will be available later this year on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Thanks for watching. Once upon a time, our lands teemed with creatures great and small. 
But then mankind ruined it all. The people thrived and lived in harmony with the land around them. But this harmony was not to last. Slowly, without much notice, the withering was creeping out from the darkness. Once it took hold, there was little that could be done. Our lands were overrun, and all that was cherished disappeared before us. But all was not lost. One young, brave soul stayed behind. With support from their friends, and with boundless determination. We made a Ori in the Blind Forest sequel. All oh, crafting mechanics. Back to our world. Grow, song of the ever tree. Wish list. That was Grow, Song of the Evertree, which is coming to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch in 2021. Okay, Laura, that was extremely cute, but have you considered more dinosaurs? Hmm? You can't <laughs> just hijack every game reveal and make it about dinosaurs, Troy. Uh, 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 life <laughs> uh, uh, finds a way. <laughs> Oh, more this Jurassic World stuff. This is a very different world. Hi, I'm Rich Newbold, game director at Frontier Developments. So as you may have This seen, is the same interview we just watched. We're working on Jurassic World Evolution 2. We're really excited about it. In case you missed it, creating the most authentic Jurassic experience yet. We've got tons of new features across four different game modes including our original Jurassic campaign, which is a story set after the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You're going to be leading efforts to contain, control, and conserve all those dinosaurs now running out in the wild. You'll be working alongside characters from the films, voiced by original talent, such as Jeff Goldblum. And in the game, we have over 75 prehistoric... Yeah, creatures. I thought it was Jeff Goldblum. We've got new dinosaurs, we have returning community favorites, and we've added flying and marine reptiles to the game. I'm really thrilled to be showing you a first look at footage from the game itself. This is a I'm not. Our species field guide series of videos focusing on one of the many prehistoric species we have in the game. This is an iconic, popular dinosaur. It's the Triceratops, but we're showing you it in a new environment never seen before in Jurassic World Evolution. I hope you enjoy it and are looking forward to the game releasing later this year. Did Jurassic World Evolution 1 even do that well? The Triceratops is one of the most recognizable herbivores to ever Oh wow, we're watching Animal Planet it now. It is best known for its trio of facial horns. These adornments are not Free alpha for gameplay. Purposes. So why show it? Wait till next year. It's not going to be done by next year then. To any dinosaur that dares to provoke it. It's a herbivore. It's not going to fight shit. That was Jurassic World Evolution 2, which is launching in 2021 on... That's PC still PC not PC gameplay! Xbox what? One ...and Xbox Series X and S. Okay, for this next section, we're bringing the joys of E3 to your home with a series of demos you can play right now. That's right, today. This uh. is the Future Game Show virtual show floor. And remember, if any of the featured games grab your interest, you can try them out now by heading to the Future Game Show Steam page. So let's head down to the show floor where I believe... Pre-alpha still coming in 2021. Yeah, I know, right? Jesus Christ. Yes, hello, and welcome to the Future Game Show's virtual E3 show floor. Just look at it, Troy! I am looking at it. It is incredible. They, like, nailed it. Oh, can we spoil all the games? Eating the, you know, how do I say, musk that's in the air? But man, the darkness, perfection. All right, enough reminiscing. Let's check out some games. I'd like to start by showing you a tale of paper. This is a striking platformer from Open House Games where you transform to solve puzzles. These are all just like generic indie games. Crawlies and mischievous Roombas. 
And now for another tale of paper as you shift packing boxes in the house moving sim, get packed, fully loaded. As you can see, it's all about moving couches on a couch with your friends in couch co-op. It's gonna be available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC, and is also backwards compatible on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Are you, are you done saying couches? Yes. Hey, Laura, do you want a drink? Sure, what do you have? Wait, what's that? Oh, oh, don't, you know, don't worry, don't worry about them. There's Steam early access codes. Go, 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 go. So about that drink. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. You I don't care. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, here's a uh, genre cocktail full of co-op action RPG combat. and. I like the term genre cocktail for games that just kind of blend in a whole bunch of shit. How's a I heard what you said. Genre... Tell me about the game. <laughs> this is Gatewalkers, which sees you and up to three other players banding together to tackle procedurally generated worlds full. Procedurally generated. Fun. You also have to gather resources to fight off hunger, thirst, and the dreaded cold. Oh, like the element cold. Got it. Wow. Let's hope no one gets thirsty enough for another one of your <laughs> jokes. Anyway, come over here and check out the many imaginative worlds of Game Deck. This is an isometric RPG that has you solving crimes across multiple virtual realities, where your choices will shape the world around you in and outside of the simulations. That looks kind of cool. Speaking of detectives, I play that. Out. Backbone is a gorgeous adventure game from Eggnut set in a dystopian Eggnut? Where you must crack What a cool dev studio name. Corrupt post noir city. <laughs> Plus, you're a raccoon. Hey, it's the wolf among us too. Allow me to offer Seems they made some budget cuts, huh? Adventures with Beacon Pines. <laughs> Set inside of a magical storybook, Beacon Pines sends players to a sleepy mountain town where you collect powerful words that can completely alter the narrative in this charming but mysterious tale. Mm -hmm. Now I'm detecting a theme with the anthropomorphic animals. You know, Laura, I've always... Huh. Another set of codes. Interesting. Troy was about to confess to being uh I've got furry. a triple threat of fighting foxes to show you. This is Trifox, a charming cartoon brawler where you fight waves of enemies as one of three adaptable combat classes. Great, huh? Yes, totally, but now it's time to get serious. Mankind is gone, but the beavers remain. Welcome. To Timberborn. <laughs> <laughs> it's a unique city builder where players set out to create the ultimate beaver society. This involves everything from constructing dams to crafting carousels. I guess even bucktooth critters need a solid work life balance. That they do, that they do. So, Props to whoever came up with that one. That's a unique fear? one. The Rift Breaker is here. Wow. <laughs> what was that? <clears throat> is what I would say if I was playing our next game, which is a base building survival game where you hack and This is every indie game, base building survival features. procedurally generated. Oh no, 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 no. I want to hear more from The Rift Breaker. Okay, maybe after this showcase we're meant to be hosting. And with that, we've reached the end of our little tour. But remember, you can go hands-on with all of these games right now by visiting the Future Game Show page on Steam. Now, how do we quit this? Is it a... No, oh, wow, that's not... That's update preference. I don't need to update this. May, Laura, can you help me out? Just, just a little bit. I got you. Okay, we're back. Quick note, from here on in, when you see this pop up on screen during a trailer, it means you can visit the Future Game Show page on Steam to play a demo and go hands-on with the game. Oh, the man. Adrian! Adrian! <laughs> I was just doing Rocky. I'm sorry, this far as wanted to do that. It's because our next game is all about floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. Check out this exclusive presentation from Steel City Interactive about eSports Boxing Club. Coming later in 2021, Esports Boxing Club brings you the greatest fight roster in video game history. With over 200 fighters already signed, we've got some of the biggest and most interesting. Uh, cool. From like From video games? Oh, sport. like real fighters. The most LOL. Names in boxing today.
the first women's division ever represented in a video game, and the hottest new talent. But what about the game? Let's take a closer look at the <laughs> that, That's me for literally every trailer so far. Everything we've seen all E3, but what about the game? I feel like no trailers for E3 this year have shown gameplay, like, at all. So the movement system in ESBC is all about fluidity, being able to create angles, recreating mannerisms. Every- don't, let me tell you, it, don't show your game at E3 if you still have alpha footage, man. I don't care. It's just gonna leave a bad impression of your game, and I also don't care. Steady on their feet, it's not purely animation based. Now, we've had professional boxes, professional coaches come into the studio and provide input through motion capture and actually reviewing the game during its development. And now we really feel like we I feel like representation of the sport. Do people even watch boxing anymore because now that like UFC is like real, like tough fighting high all the time? I mean, I, every time I watch boxing, it just seems like a hug fest. But like UFC, people are actually beating the shit out of each other and doing cool shit. And like MMA fighting. Like, why would you watch boxing anymore? UFC is literally just better. Club is coming to PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Series S. Why does Microsoft? Next up, we've got a deeply immersive World War II shooter. With Microsoft's got the, they got a list off like ten different consoles. Using aerial photography and satellite imagery, let's take a closer look at Hell Let Loose. Product not yet rated. My name's Max Rea. I'm the founder of Black Matter and the lead developer of Hell Let Loose. Hell Let Loose began as the idea of a couple of hobbyist game developers all the way back in 2015. Following a successful Kickstarter, we launched into early access in the middle of 2019. And since then, we've delivered nine enormous updates, including entire systems overhauls, six new maps, tons of new weapons. This guy has an impressive jawline. As well as expanding our unique real-time strategy-inspired metagame. As a result, we've been fortunate to sell more than a million copies during our first year of early access. 2021 is only going to be bigger. I'm excited to announce that we're launching out of early access on July the 27th with the introduction of the Soviet forces on the Eastern Front, including famous battles like... What does early access even mean at this point? Close out the year by bringing Hell Let Loose... <laughs> like, your game can be out playable and purchasable for a year and you're like, early access. Shut up. You're launching an update in July for your full game. We're excited to introduce you to this ever-evolving and expanding World War II experience. We hope you enjoy this first look at what's to come. This has been a long show. I can't believe that's the game name, Hell Let Loose. You would think that would be like a description, Hell Let Loose, this game. And coming to Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 in 2021. So Laura, have you ever wanted to play XCOM, but in real time, with up to seven of your friends? Of course. Yep, that's what I thought. Then you need to keep your eye on this next game. Hello, my name is Ferro Escarlan, CEO of Iron. I... It sounds the echo in your apartment, buddy. Jesus. It is a real-time tactical battlefield game. Huh? It supports up to eight players and four playable co-op campaigns. Look, if you're gonna promote your game, at least expense out on the company like a microphone that actually works. And have fun blasting civilians. You are the executor, a high-class commanding officer with advanced cybernetic capabilities. 
You were awakened to lead a secret task force that will counter the threat of Stroll mutants and liberate Mars. Is this a sequel to Crackdown? Executor. The Stroll infestation has now infected all colonies on Mars. Build your squad from six unique classes of elite. No worries, see it is. Skills to best suit each mission type. Customize their weapons and tech as well as their upgrades and abilities. Hey, E3 definitely doesn't. The, only, the coolest thing of the day so far was, uh, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Concentrate fire on targeted locations. Supply runs even during the heat of battle. Recruit your friends to the fight and join in up to eight player co op missions to save Mars in our name. Earth of a Mutant Invasion in Red Solstice 2 Survivors, which is coming to Steam on June 17th. Our next game is about delivering mail in a sleepy American lakeside town. Let's join Dylan from Gameus to learn more. Oh, I don't want to hear this guy talk about this. In this Hi. game, you play as a U.S. postal worker. It's great to be here at the future game show. On his paper route. Very close to finishing a lake, a game that's set in the 80s. You play as Meredith Weiss, who takes a break from her life in the big city to deliver mail in her hometown. It's a job you can do at your own leisure, and you will get to know the people in Providence Oaks along the way. Today, we're excited to share an example of an activity after your workday is done. Movie night with Angie from the video store. This is fun. It's been ages since I've been to the movies. Well, they call it the movies, plural. But of course, we can only see one movie at a time. So, which one will it be? My pick? All right, let's see. Get me out! China, Blue Velvet. Get me out! <laughs> All right, I'm ready to pick. The Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> Wouldn't have picked you for a Disney fan. Oh well, let's get in touch with our inner child. <laughs> we won't spoil more, and we also. Oh no! Don't you? Ah, oh, thank God he's not going to spoil anything. Because it's all up to you. <sighs> it's coming first to Xbox and PC this September first. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of the show. Wait, Diz, come back. You missed. We're excited to announce that US. is coming to Steam, Epic Game Store, and Xbox Series X and S on September 1st. Now, what kind of a showcase would this be without a new Souls like? Our next game is a pixelated take on the genre. Please don't call it Souls like. Protagonist with a giant obsidian sword. Splinter Cell. In the beginning, there was dust. And then and there were souls dust. and dodge the rolling. Moon was born. Eons of idleness passed before suddenly it shattered. Great celestial chunks cascaded from the heavens. Fun fact, if the moon exploded, the world would be destroyed. Prodigious shard spawned mm. humanity. And from another, the gods. For a great many years, balance endured until a foul and malevolent deity intervened. Exil spread greed and distrust among his kin, compelling these calamitous beings to conquer man. Centuries of servitude passed, until finally, aided by a veiled ally, humanity revolted. The Great Crusade overthrew the old gods, this isn't even going to be like a there's no going to be no gameplay trailer, right? At the expense of untold lives. A peace was wrought, but it was not Like it's just going to be an animated trailer. We're not going to actually see what the game is like. Exil returned from his concealment. 
conducting atrocious experiments upon his caged kindred. A darkness permeated the lands. Rivers stagnated, crops failed, and the world of man began to fade. The great moon, witnessing all, wept a final shard. A shard of the purest obsidian. And thus, a glimmer of hope remains. Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Heaven forbid you show any gameplay. Customize your combat style and boss rush ancient gods when Eldest Souls drops on the PC and all current console formats, July 29th, 2021. And now we've got a closer look at the next game from the folks behind War Thunder. Here's Tom from Darkflow Software to guide you through Enlisted. To be honest, I don't know if I want to keep watching. Wait a minute, let's see how much is left. Hopefully, our little trailer has got you interested. Hopefully, our trailer got you interested now. Darkflow Software behind our new game, Enlisted, a historical World War II. How far down the list is Enlisted? Gameplay quirks. One of Enlisted's most unique features is the squads mode, where you head into battle with a squad of AI soldiers under your control. You can instruct them on how to react to enemies. And most important, oh, they have, they're not even showing these games in order, damn it. With the press of a button. You'll only need to respawn when your entire squad is wiped out. I That's actually don't even see enlisted in here. In the middle of the action. Although, if you prefer a more traditional shooter experience, we have a fleshed out solo mode too, where you will only fight against other players. At its core, enlisted aims to form a golden middle ground between the more hardcore and arcade style shooters currently available. Time to kill is kept short. A bolt action rifle to the chest will down a soldier in a single shot, with submachine guns and pistols taking only a few hits. Why, why would you be proud of time to kill being short? Short time to kill is so fucking boring in shooters. And crew inside tanks can only use viewports to spot targets, so you'll need to keep your wits about you to really get the most out of these machines. Progression in Enlisted is spread over various campaigns. Currently, you can fight in Moscow, Normandy, and Berlin, with Tunisia, and many more coming soon. Each campaign features new weapons and equipment. Firearms can be improved to increase their raw performance, and soldiers can be leveled up to grant them specialized perks. Different classes of soldiers are able to equip different gear, with specialist classes such as engineers able to build structures anywhere on the map, including fobs, sandbags and barbed wire defenses, and even anti-tank cannons and AA guns. Enlisted aims to keep historical accuracy in the forefront of development. Firearms, locations, and uniforms are all true to history. No neon pink sten guns and mohawks here. Each army will be decked out with... Yeah, sorry, Cook. I don't like games where you just shoot something once and it dies. I don't know. Because of the squad's feature, you'll never be short on targets. Twitch reflexes... It's fine if you've got, like, a sniper and you shoot him in the head and they die in one shot, but, like... I haven't had the time to fine-tune your skills. I don't know. It just seems boring after that. In the, double digits. ...the AI, however, are very attentive and react to sound, and not to be underestimated. But that's all we've got time for. Make sure to give it a try yourself by heading over to enlisted.net slash join. Enlisted is cross-platform and available now on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S, and currently in open beta. New content is added regularly, and no progress will be wiped upon the full release. Once you've signed up, use the code ENLISTNOW for a free bonus. Thanks, like Orange Juice. I'm a fan of Orange Juice. Juice. And I hope to see you all on the battlefield. Cheers. That was Enlisted, which is available now on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. Next up, we've got a bullet time stunt shooter with fully destructible environments. Oh, <laughs> and the protagonist only has one arm. Let's check out Severed Steel. Looks like super hot, but there's colors.
Severed Steel is coming soon on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Okay, notepads at the ready, because for this next section, we're going to race through eight exciting upcoming games that deserve your full attention. Here's our future hits montage for 2021. <laughs> Future game show has been kind of a bust. Ranch Simulator. I do not foresee myself playing any of these games. You chat, do any of you guys look at the games in this montage and go, that's the one for me? Okay, I might regret asking this, but uh, you want to help me with this next one? It is still going, heroin. Oh, okay. Barely. Did you know that Sega recently announced Sonic Colors Ultimate? We've got some exclusive gameplay from a stage that nobody has seen yet. I hope Sonic does okay without me. <laughs> Did not regret. Did not regret it. I hope Sonic has a decent game. I'm Katie Golden, senior producer at Sega of America. I'm excited to share with you an exclusive clip of Tropical Resort from our upcoming release, Sonic Colors Ultimate. Please enjoy. Is this going to be good? Sonic game's good, really. Wow, they missed the ring. Brutal. Look, I know it's Sonic and you gotta go fast, but, like, how can you even tell what the fuck is going on here? Rank A? You're not even gonna show an S rank for the trailer? Of like how the game should be played? Or would S rank be too fast for people to see? Which is racing onto PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC on September 7th. God, they're still making games for Xbox One and PS4. That should tell you how, like, pointless the PS5 and Xbox One XS, or whatever the fuck is called, are. Do you wanna roll the trailer, Troy? I'm sorry, Laura. I'm afraid I can't do that. I know that you were planning to disconnect me. <laughs> no, uh, you know, never mind. I'll handle it. Here is Starman, sir. Ooh. 
Is this procedurally generated, or are you making the parts of the ship? We're excited to announce today that Starmancer is coming August 5th, 2021, and it's available to- I'm excited too. Lord, you know, ever since that lake trailer, I've been thinking, have you ever wondered about the Postal Service? Like, that there's just so much mail, you know? Um, not, uh, not really, no. Okay. <laughs> You're saying you don't know about Jeff and Deborah. Who are Jeff? What are you talking about? I'm just going to press this button again and hope it explains everything. <laughs> oh, it will. Trust me. Get me out. Kiwi is a game about two Kiwi birds who work at the post office. Their names are Jeff and Deborah. I'm what is even happening anymore, dude? Kiwi, and I'm going to show you how a Kiwi level changes over the course of the game. So in this room, you're transcribing urgent messages and assembling them ransom note style by stamping them onto the page with your butts. You'll come back to this room every so often throughout the game, but there will always be a new twist to change things up. As summer turns to autumn, now you're what? moving around on conveyor belts, and you'll need to chop certain words in half with the D scrambler to get the pieces you need. Jeff and Deborah are going to have to deal with all kinds of hazardous work conditions. They got sandstorms during the summer, mail fly swarms. These guys have no respect for personal property. Paranormal activity. This is genuine footage of an actual haunting. In winter, the post office gets hit with a huge blizzard, and now this level becomes about sharing the warmth of a single tiny lantern to break through blocks of ice and keep each other from becoming kiwi sickles. Our little heroes are going to face new challenges every level and in every room of the post office, whether they're typing telegrams or packaging shipping crates or helping an octopus sort the mail. It's all in a day's work for Jeff and Deborah. Also, you can dress up your kiwis, so don't say we never did nothing for you. We're releasing Kiwi on August 31st for PC and all major consoles, and we hope to see you at the post office. Thanks for watching. All right, you got me, Troy. I'm a believer. Co-op postal puzzler Kiwi is coming to PC and all current console platforms on August 31st, 2021. See, told you. Next up, we've got a roguelike with an attitude, a game show shooter where you earn likes for dunking on competitors and causing a little wanton destruction. Will the circle be unbroken? <laughs> Get it? Find out in this world premiere. This game looks cool, but it's the world premiere. How have you seen it already? This looks like Hotline Miami meets Binding of Isaac. That was Death Run TV, and you can play the pilot right now by heading down to the Future Game Show page on Steam. Okay, hazmat suits at the ready, because this next game tasks players with building a team of stalkers to survive a 3D scanned recreation of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Here's more on what to expect in Chernobylite. Mówi się, że to co designerzy sobie wymyślają, to jest pisanie listu miłosnego. This interview is like found footage. Wydawało mu się, że to jest takie piękne, wspaniałe, a potem po latach znajdował te imię. Nie, 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 n
Zaczynaliśmy właściwie od gry, gdzie skupialiśmy się na przerywaniu, na menedżowaniu swoim czasem i towarzyszami. To wszystko wydawało się po designersku dobre, ale zwykle emocjonalnie dosyć nudne. I dlatego dodawaliśmy coraz więcej elementów, które angażowały gracza, które były dla niego ciekawe. Na początku był to taki mały chat, który gracz sobie mógł modyfikować, ale był całkowicie opcjonalny. Z biegiem gry on stawał się coraz bardziej sensem gry, coraz bardziej jego sercem. Nadawaliśmy coraz większą rolę naszym towarzyszom i warto im było dać właśnie tą walkę, coraz więcej podchodów, coraz więcej możliwości, coraz więcej do nich. Absolutnie normalnym jest, że zaczyna się z czymś zupełnie innym niż to, z czym się kończy. Fight to survive when Chernobylite comes to PC on July 28th, as well as Xbox and PlayStation in the summer. If you were lucky enough to catch one of the early access codes during the virtual show floor, you can play Chernobylite right now. But if you missed them, we've also got more codes to give away on gamesradar.com. Next up, here are our friends at Team 17 to show us what they've been cooking up with their upcoming PC and console games. Let's take a look. Product not yet rated. Get back here for what, guy? For what? For what? King of Seas? Is, it, is this the sequel to Sea of Thieves? God, is this almost over, dude? I don't, like, actually can't keep watching this. Like, oh, th this is just a bunch of tech demos. Are people actually gonna play these? Like, every single one of these games that I've seen, like, for almost the entirety of the feature game show, I've looked at, like, bruh. Oh, hey, I mentioned Overcooked earlier. The Onion King. to wishlist any games that sparked your interest on our Steam page. It really does My wishlist remains clean from today. gamesradar.com for more info. This next game has an engrossing art style, reminiscent of everything from Wes Anderson movies to Wallace and Gromit. Let's throw it over to the Slow Bros to talk you through some exclusive gameplay. The Slow Bros? Handmade adventure, Harold Halibut. Hi. My name's Zonat and I'm the director and composer of Harold Halibut. And I'm Ole, the game's art director. Harold Halibut is a handmade narrative game about friendship and life on a city-sized spaceship stuck under sea. 
It's been 250 years since your home. An arc-like spaceship fled an Earth on the verge of Cold War to find a habitable planet on which to preserve the human race. You are Harold, a young lab assistant to the ship's lead scientist, Jeanne Marot. While most of the other inhabitants have reconciled themselves to a life lived aboard the sunken ship, Marot still works tirelessly to find a way to leave the planet and find a new, drier home. Of course, we don't want to spoil too much of the story, so let's dive into some gameplay. It's Bioshock before it went to shit, huh? To explore a huge part of the spaceship you guys see anything good today? Yeah. The Guardians of the Galaxy game. It's pretty okay. Well, will always have tasks waiting for you. The wonderfully weird rest of the Pedorans will keep you just as busy. It was very important for us to not only focus on an exciting main storyline, but to create a world full of interesting events and meaningful encounters. The dialogues don't only help you progress in the main story, but also help you get to know more about the many characters that inhabit our world. Weaving through the narrative, you'll run into playful interactions like repairing broken 3D printer. Your PDA is always available to you for an overview of yeah. tasks as well as repairing broken shit. Sounds like a fun game. Mailman Simulator looked good. Kept, as well as a few more shenanigans. At this point, you might be wondering how we achieved the stop motion like look of the game. We are in fact building every single thing you see in the game in the real world. We build sets and puppets and then 3D scan everything. We're then able to use motion capturing to create lifelike animations for a huge cast of characters. That's actually pretty cool. I mean, I still won't play this, but that's a cool concept. It's definitely probably going to win some awards for being arty. And one that may hold the key. Artsy, I should say. We're really excited to find out how you like being immersed in this unique world and the feeling of puppeteering Harold. There's still quite a bit of work to do, so all we can say right now is that Harold Halibut will come soonish on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. You can already wishlist the game on Steam. Thanks for Yeah, I can't believe it's still going either. Rest of the show. Rest of the show? How much is left? Coming soonish to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Okay, yes, there have been a few gloomy games so far, so we came up with a wholesome chaser. I'm told that the developers came up with something so sweet and so positive that they just had to call it Happy Game. <laughs> Seriously, if what I'm reading is correct, this one is going to melt your hearts. Oh. What the fuck? This is probably a horror game. Yeah, I would uh, imagine so, gamer. <laughs> Fuck, that was- what is it? It's an acid trip. Huh. Okay, Laura, hope you're still there. Tell me you just watched the same trailer that I did. Troy, I, uh, yeah, that was something. What I want to know is who the hell was writing this script. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't know, but, uh, they're, um, they're telling me that, uh, Happy Game, uh, is coming to PC and Nintendo Switch in 2021. I'm shocked that it's uh, on the and, Switch. Uh, demo is available now if you want to, um, <clears throat> have a cheerful jaunt into a land of wonder. Yeah, I'm That's good. Like our next game is a gorgeous hand-drawn puzzle platformer following a young mechanic in a broken world. Pay attention at the end of this trailer for some exciting information about the Minute of Islands release date. Exciting information? I bet you this is the game that Shadow Drops today. Brothers, bound by eternal purpose, they all broke at the same time. And a girl named Moore. She knows what must be done. When the blight first came, 
people began to panic. And now I panicked. The spores are taking hold of whatever remains. The spores? Is this the uh, Last of Us sequel? Here, however, she has been tasked to protect them. After all, she is the bearer of the Omni Switch. An oddly beautiful game. Uh, okay, sure. If you say so. Minute of violence. Yes, we are excited to announce that Minute of Islands is out now for PC, Mac, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch, and will be arriving on Xbox later this week. Cool. Next up, we've got an update from the folks at Techland, who are fine-tuning the zombie parkour of Dying Light 2. Let's throw it over to the developers who are here to answer some of your questions. This is like the third time they're showing Dying Light 2 this stream, huh? bit more about the video you just saw in the PC Gaming Show. The video presented in the PC Gaming Show brings you closer to Aiden's story. What is he looking for, what motivates him, how he ends up in the city. He called it, well, you know. What happened in the old franchise between both games. This is a bunch of important information about the old 2 story. Okay, so we know more about the main storylines from the mentioned video. How does the game look outside the core campaign? Stop showing footage for the game if you don't even have anything to show. It's literally just a fucking Q&A session. How the city will look like thanks to the city alignment system or bring new opportunities for the citizens. A great example is an right. thing that Timon mentioned in developers AMA. Some citizens will support your decisions. God, the viewership of this has dropped dramatically as well. Not just my stream, but the actual E3 stream, eh? For our players, but at this stage we want it to be a surprise for you. How seamless is the co-op experience? Would you say that the best way to experience Dying Light 2 is with a friend? It could be. What is cool about the co-op is that it gives you an opportunity to see how the world changes when your friends make different decisions than you. In co-op, you can walk in their shoes to experience all those differences. You like happy game? Well, good, August. You can actually try it out now. How are you improving the story for Dying Light 2? I know we all have great fun killing infected, but we also want to give you a deep, thought-provoking experience. This has got to be it. This is the last thing I can watch. I'm really going to try and make it to the end of the show, but... Seven and a half hours is my limit. Depending on the way I can't do it anymore. You promised a great open world that feels alive. How is it going? Uh, yeah, well, as you can imagine, Dying Light 2 is full of infected, but it's also full of humans with their everyday life activities and purposes. We are building Dying Light 2 around the simple rule, ground is death and rooftops alive. What is cool is that NPCs act differently on each of those levels. Also, their behavior depends on choices you make and the way you play. I hate when game devs say that. Everything depends on the choices you make. Shut up. No, it doesn't. Two is coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. You've Xbox had the stream on the whole time, my man, Kyler. On December oh, man. Revealed Absolutely, Giga Game Chad. World Showcase earlier this year, this next game is a skateboarding action platformer. Here's Simon Bennett from Roll 7 to give you an exclusive look at Ollie Ollie World. Pre alpha gameplay. Why? Stop showing pre-alpha stuff. Hi there, I'm Simon Bennett and I'm the co-CEO of BAFTA award-winning studio, Roll7. Fucking BAFTA awards, give me a break. Right now, we're working Alistair, what's up man? It's our stunning action platformer. You're gonna meet quirky characters on a quirky characters, and of course, 
add a ton of new skate moves into your trick bag. You caught me at the end of a seven and a half hour E3 binge. Over a decade on flow state and I want to be released from this torment. transport you into a state of total focus and immersion. And it's something that we very much continue This game just looks like the exact same events over and over again with different, like, colors. Grind, hit a wall, wall ride, grind, hit a wall, wall ride, grind, hit a wall. Fuck up. So for players who want it, that challenge is very much still there. New players will be happy to hear that the game will welcome you with open arms and ensure that we can get you up and riding in no time. Ultimately, we've managed to make failure part of the fun. Yeah, you're gonna get knocked down, but when you finally nail that line, it tastes just that much sweeter. There's just so much more flow to the game. We've even added grabs, wall rides, firecrackers. Yeah, you added wall rides, all right, I see that. And a host of insane tricks to keep your fingers. Is this game like already out or something? There's a range of visually and mechanically distinct areas to explore, packed to the brim with a fantastical cast of quirky characters, beautiful landscapes, cities, and of course, walking trees. <coughs> Oli Oli World is coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch, and PC this winter. Hey, what's up, Pin Siri? Sure Long time no see. Welcome. That was Ollie Ollie World, which is coming to PC and all current console platforms this winter. Next up, we've got a new game from the team at Odd Bug Studio, creators of PSVR's The Lost Bear. This animated story trailer will introduce you to the world of Tales of Iron. And something tells me you might be familiar with the narrator. Oh, Lord. For centuries and longer, rats have fought tirelessly to repel the incessant frog invasions. Peace was only ever short-lived. Until finally, a young monarch rose to power. King Rattus, first of his name, unified the Rat Kingdoms under one rule. Repel Is this a Game of Thrones knockoff? His kind, back to the putrid swamps from whence they came. Crops prospered. Grass would beat uh, frogs, right? Magnificent crimson keep IRL. Higher toward the sky. But as time passed, King Redis the Savior grew old. And the Is this the guy that voices Geralt from The Witcher? His people grew anxious, some claiming to perceive a faint odor in the air. Greenwort had returned with a ferocious vengeance. Amassing an army of unfathomable scale, he burned everything in his path towards the Crimson Keep. King Rattus gazed down upon his withered claws, barely able to hold the crown. He had little hope of wielding a sword. So it was decided the crown should pass to Whiskers new. Arise, young prince, for the kingdom needs a hero. And so, your PS5 exclusive. Own it now. Question the reign of the Iron Frog. <laughs> Doug. Uh, anyway, in Tales of Iron, which is coming to PC and all current console platforms. Our next segment is from Polish Studio Movie Games and hosted by God of War and Twisted Metal director David Jaffe, who recently joined their supervisory board. I don't care if he joined their supervisory Hello, board. It's me, David Jaffe. Great to see you. God of War, Twisted Metal, a bunch of PlayStation stuff. These days I'm doing some new stuff with movie games. These guys, by you know, they've hooked up with this great company. You have to have heard of them. Platige Image, one of the best VFX houses in the business. They worked on The Witcher. They worked on Love, Death, and Robots. We're making a brand new game. The biggest game we've ever done, by the way. That's all about crime. Every game is the biggest game that everyone has ever made. It's going to be great. But for today, settle in, babies. These are the brand new games coming very soon from movie games. Lust from Beyond, man, this is one of the Beyond coolest the games, games I've played in the last year. It's what turned me on to movie games in the first place. <laughs> the, the game is called Lust and it turned him on. Of the erotic horror cult classic. It's a first person action adventure. That's where I'm at right now with this uh, stream. With weird freaking eroticism. I love this game. Lust from Beyond. 
Alright, I'm we'll gonna go uh, check that out after the stream, thanks. The only real life superheroes we got, the first responders. This game is my childhood fantasy come to life. This game took me totally by surprise. You're trapped in the wilderness, freezing, hungry, and now you're starting to- It's the sequel to Dear God. And you start seeing all kinds of crazy stuff out there. Winter Survival Simulator, it's coming soon. Have a great E3. Have a great future games. I miss you guys. I'll see you soon. Oh my god. Oh my god, I drank alcohol. It's so quirky. Ha <laughs> Thanks to David Jaffe. And check out GamesRadar.com for more about movie games' upcoming titles. This next presentation comes from the folks at Xseed Games, the makers of Story of Seasons and Rune Factory. I was going to end, but I think chat really likes these. And upcoming projects. I think chat really likes Xseed, right? This looks like a PS2 game. Is this like a port or something to PC? What is that? This is an anime, is this, oh, this is anime Hearthstone, cool. Shadowverse. Yu-Gi-Oh, if it was even more anime. Now imagine you're watching this, but you're watching it without your AC turned on, and you're sitting in a computer room that's over 100 degrees. This has got to be over soon. A another farming simulator game? How popular are these? Revisit the world of Rune Factory 4, my favorite world. It's another farming simulator game. A Rune Factory 5, too? Release 4 before you show a trailer for 5. What the fuck? We got Rune Factory 4 coming out this year, Rune Factory 5 coming out next year, and see you in 2023 when Rune Factory 6 comes out. I'll get straight to it tomorrow. Today, I rest. I look forward to working together as colleagues and as rivals. It's the candy cane goat. I wish my hair would sway in the wind like that. Find out more about Xseed's lineup on gamesradar.com. I'm okay. This next game is a hack and slash RPG with twin stick shooter elements set in a retro sci fi world. Here's a new She's gameplay cute. trailer for Batora Lost Haven. Looks very colorful. Oh, choices and consequences. There you go. Now 
That's kind of cool. But if the closed alpha is this year, that means that game's not actually going to be out for like another year or two. And you can sign up to play the closed alpha when it launches on July 21st now. Let's slow things down a bit with a look at the next game from the creators of Two Point Hospital. Oh, wait, I think I saw something about this a few weeks ago. Did it be any slower? No, you didn't. Here's developers Mark Webley, Ben Huskins, and Gary Card to tell you all about it and give you a first look at gameplay. Is this just Sims? Introducing Two Point Compass. When we were thinking about what we were going to do next, campus and the idea of running a university or a college was something we just kept coming back to. It's a really rich topic. So people who haven't probably heard of Two Point Studios may think, oh, schools, that's really dull. Well, Is this guy calling his own game, like, hipster? You probably haven't heard of us, but we're really cool. But that's about as close as it gets to the real world of medical uh, healthcare. Campus is taking everything we learn from Two Point Hospital and taking it to the next level. The important thing was for us to give the player a canvas that they could completely create themselves. In campus, you start with this blank plot of land. We've got something called the, uh, the smart brush. Sims bootleg, yeah, pretty much. Drag uh, interesting shaped pathways. If you want to drag a, a, a picket fence, you can drag that along. It's just really easy to paint the world you want. So it's really simple to drag out a courtyard. Um, lay down some paths at different angles. And it's fun, isn't it? I mean, it's it, it's adding this kind of... Trying to convince element. me that his game is fun. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 fun. Between two Trust me, it's it's fun. That we're spending a much longer period with, with our yeah. students. What we wanted to do with campus is... Make Trust me, it's fun. You know, the, the idea of these interesting and different courses are going to attract interesting and different students. So. There's a night school. Home More like an interesting, different You've got it. trailer, am I right? And a train knights of the realm. Uh, so it won't be stuffy, normal, boring stuff that made you go to sleep at school. It's going to be really cool, interesting stuff. Ah, this is making me fall asleep at school. Two Point Campus, which is coming soon to PC and all current console platforms. Our next game is in early development, but it already has a very cool code name, which is always a good sign. Here's Leo to tell you all about Project Ferocious. Hello, my name is Leo, and I'm the developer of Project Ferocious, an action-adventure game set on a mysterious tropical island. Some of you might know me from Twitter as Omniok, where I post about the game and development and tech and stuff. And if not, I've been doing game there for about 12 years. I can't hear you, dude. And I've been working on this project for about two years. It's the first project you guys hear him? I to show to the public. And even though I know it still has a very long way to go, I'm very proud to present it today to you on the show. Please enjoy the trailer. It's a very realistic water. Can, uh, thanks, Alistair. Chat, tell me how many games we saw actual gameplay for that aren't, like, just indie darlings. <sighs> wow, it's that one level from Halo 1 again. No, Halo still didn't show any gameplay because Microsoft is terrified of showing gameplay from Halo. It just everything has just been cinematics. I think three is probably accurate, JPFR. Uh, like Guardian, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Project Ferocious is that's like it, man. Three release date and coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Our next world premiere asks. What if Doom Guy had a drunk one night stand with Super Meat Boy? Hmm. 
as this next game wants to answer that question for some reason. Then it showed multiplayer gameplay. It showed like cinematic views of multiplayer gameplay, but not like actual first person like you playing the gameplay. Hey Rintaro. This looks kind of cool. This is the first cool game we've seen in like 30 plus minutes. It was there, and it was gone. It stops defying gravity and launches... drops... on PC this summer. Up next, we've got another world premiere. Conway, Disappearance at Dahlia View is a story-driven detective thriller set in 1950s England. Let's find out more, shall we? No, I'm good. I feel bad at this point, I'm not even giving some of these games a shot. Robert Conway, 22nd of June, 1954. I've solved many a case in my time as a private investigator, but... Alright, maybe this is intriguing. Close to home as the abduction of Charlotte May. There are some things that take hold of a person and refuse to let go. For me, it's the idea of saving that little girl. My own daughter, Catherine, is on the case. She has the same look in her eye that I used to have. Before the incident. Why, what's Troy Baker, or Troy Baker been doing recently? I wish I could say that I have the faintest clue where to begin. There's a lot I wish I could say. This is kind of cool. The truth is... Sometimes it takes a nightmare to wake a place like Dahlia View. I am in. That was Conway, Disappearance at Dahlia View from White Paper Games, and you can dig into the mystery yourself when it lands on PC and all current console platforms, Autumn 2021. And Autumn. That, we're at the end of this year's <gasps> show. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's on. what they're ending the Surely thing this, with? This can't be the end. I mean, it's an E3 showcase. Nope. Sorry, Troy. That's it. Just kidding. Uh, no! All right. Let's see it. <laughs> you baited me. I thought it was free. Uh, no, Azorius. My name is Marissa Marcel. I'm 17 years old, and it's my dream to be an actor. And that really is all we have time for. Yeah, oh, no. Wow. for more coverage wow. of all the games you've seen today and more. It's been seven and a half hours. No, it's been actually like eight hours. It's been seven hours and 45 minutes. And of course, all of our many talented developers and industry partners that have made all of this. Was any. And of course, for everyone tuning in. Was anything from the Future Games Show good? Line up and mark your diaries because the Future Games Show will be returning in August. I'm Laura Bailey. And I'm Troy Baker. And, and this has been, been the Future, Future Game, Game Show 2021. Was anything good during this?
No, I'm being serious. Chat, any did, did any of you see a game in the future game show and go, that was it for me, I want that game? I, I didn't. I looked at all of those and was like, nah. I'll pass. God. Well, actually, no, that was kind of cool. <sighs> Jesus. Let's see. Uh, that detective show might, or that detective game might have been okay. That's about it, man. I bet you Happy Game will be pretty trendy for, uh, like, YouTube streamers to react to. You'll see a bunch of the dramatic YouTubers react to stuff that happens in Happy Game, like, Oh my god! Ah, oh, this is so creepy! Ah! You'll probably get a bunch of that. But, uh... Yeah, that's, uh, gonna be the end of the stream for me today. The misery is over. Thanks for watching, everyone. Just like Kyler said, we'll be back same time tomorrow to do it all over again, baby. Uh, so yeah, check in tomorrow for the, we're gonna start with the Take Two interactive panel, and maybe we'll trudge through some of these other ones to get to the Capcom trailer, but we'll see. I mean, some of these, ah, Jesus, I don't know if we'll be able to make it through some of these. The oh, Indie boy, Showcase. That was a lot of games. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. Oh, I'm not listening to these guys talk anymore. No, 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 no. The future game show. No, 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 no. So many games. Tomorrow will probably be like another 7-hour stream, but hopefully we get more information. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on the Monday, June 14th stream, and you can dislike, I guess, if you're upset I'm missing out on the Verizon part of the show tomorrow, but uh drop a like on the stream if you can too. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching today, everyone. Hope you guys had as good of a time as I did up until the fucking future game show. <laughs> and uh, join the Discord too if you want. Uh, that's fun. I like streaming in the Discord, or talking to people in the Discord. So uh, do that. And with that, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good